So this is EFAP number 100 and... Who knows what number it is, really. Oh, wow. It, it could be anywhere thanks to copyright. That's how it works these days, that's how we do it. Though... Coopy unusual to a meme fap. We're gonna open this one with a little chat. On a little game that came out, um... Who knows, years ago now. Who knows if this gets lost <laughs> to time, right? Uh, called, uh... I, I love how I'm literally just not even, like, pretensing this. Like, oh, hello! It's just like, no. So, yeah, 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 sure, but... <laughs> Jim Bryden, When we come out, come out the other side, who knows? We'll see. EFAP is not known for delays of any kind in any way. Get right mm. into it. My fucking mm. microphone arm keeps walking around on its own. Stop it! <laughs> I need a weight. Metal. <laughs> I need, I, I need one too. Mine, mine tends to just go up sometimes. Why is it designed this way? I don't know. It's really weird. Who helps? But who does this help? I need to actually like go on Amazon and buy a weight. <laughs> just to like I a just, small weight. Mine is literally just a mic stand. It's meant for like people who are actually standing up, but it's like all all the way over to my left. So all I got to do is just swivel the stand around, and it's fine. Hmm. Well. Yeah, I've got Sweet. it to stay still for a second, so that's... There you go, I've accomplished my one task for the day. Uh, nice. So, I don't know how we're going to go about talking about this. I guess we'll just go with the flow. I don't even know that you can talk about this game chronologically. <laughs> it's kind of a... Uh, yeah, a mess. Um, Amnesia Rebirth. Um, so, mm. I... I guess this was five years in the making? Allegedly. Allegedly? which is a shame fucking depressing. So I remember having to, it, it took me a lot of sittings. It probably took me like four or five, probably five ish sittings to finish amnesia, the dark descent because of how spooky and scary it was. And I, I'm not a spooky, scary game guy. Um, it took me fewer to get through Soma though. That was mostly because of real life scheduling stuff. Um, both of those games were fantastic and incredible. I still haven't finished a machine for pigs. Fuck that game. Um, <laughs> I finished Amnesia Rebirth in two sittings, and I played first. Uh, I played the f like six hours for the first time, and then wrapped it up the next time. And I just kind of wanted to get it over with. Amnesia Rebirth's not very good. In fact, I'd say it's borderline bad. Um, now, now, as somebody who has never actually played it yet, because I just haven't had the chance to. Um, would you say that the biggest amount of gripes come from it as a video game or a story or both? Both. Both. Mm. Really? Um, you don't think the story both. is good either, huh? Oh, no. Uh, definitely not. Definitely. Uh, because I've got a couple of people one. that have... Yeah, I've had a couple of people now that are telling me that the story is really good and even disturbed no. the shit out of them toward the end. I don't know And then know I've had other it's... friends who just don't think it's good at all. It's really split down the middle in terms of my circle. So... There is a, um, it, people generally say this about, um, uh, pity, but it applies to a lot of things where you have, um, the amount of pity and grief that you can feel about something isn't based on its, uh, scale, but on its intimacy. This is why if your mother dies, you feel very, very sad, but a mudslide in Zimbabwe that kills a village, you don't give a shit about. Right. Um, there. Th this is kind of the issue that Amnesia Rebirth has to a degree. Uh, one of the many, many issues that it has. Um, so it sounds to Amnesia me like they didn't characterize well. No, they didn't. Tazi is a fucking annoying cunt. Um, <laughs> and you just want her to shut the fuck up. Uh, so um, also, and her annoying cunt is a big part of the story, as a case may be. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, both narratively and mechanically, Amnesia Rebirth is a regression for Frictional. Um, whereas Soma clearly builds on pr pretty much everything from the Dark Descent. You can clearly tell that they're moving forwards and they're learning and they are... They, they, they took a game that was really, really good and they just made it made a masterpiece afterwards. Mm -hmm. I can't say that Amnesia Rebirth does anything better than the games that came before it, except maybe graphically. Yeah, like the um, animation. Even that's a bit a of a like question and mark. Even, yeah, and even that's a bit of a stretch. It's it's legitimately hard to tell. It looks like a game that belongs ten years ago, 
in the you know the gaming landscape it doesn't seem like a modern game it doesn't seem like it's pushing their abilities forward it doesn't even seem like a lateral move for them um there's a lot of questionable decisions that they make um and there's a lot of decisions that they make that are just flat out bad um i guess we're gonna do the inventory thing because fuck it this annoys me to no end so let me show you so one of the games that they made a long time ago was penumbra penumbra so let yeah penumbra show... overture and penumbra black plague and then penumbra requiem which is basically just a puzzle game that third one but i am i'm very familiar with penumbra and uh black plague i actually thought they were pretty good aside from the fact that there was some extreme jank like that was their first outing into yep. horror and so, uh, the janky combat was like a big problem with it in the in the Overture, and then Black Plague they did away with combat, and I think it was pretty pretty good for its time. It's a progenitor for sure for Doctor Sen, all of the Penumbra games. Oh yeah, absolutely. So so you take a look at these inventories from this, and and we're like, I shouldn't have to bitch about this. This is like gameplay one on one. I've never made a game, right? Never made a game, but I've played a couple. Like to think I know a few things that seem to be obvious that apparently aren't. So, uh, inventories. We got to talk about inventories in your game mm -hmm. design. So, both of these pictures, this from like Penumbra Overture and another Penumbra game. So, mm -hmm. you can notice here, I think these are, point being, these are the two inventories for two inventories from Penumbra, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm going to show you the uh, Amnesia, the Dark Descent inventory. So let me copy that and paste this here for you so you can take a look at that. All right. Are you noticing a noticing a trend? Noticing a trend? I hope you are. Your brain certainly is. You might not even it, <laughs> it you might not even think to point it out if I was to ask you. What's the common thread of these inventories? Well, because your brain accepts it so easily that you don't even think to mention it. I do kind of want to point out not the thing that you're pointing out right now, which Go is that that first shot is like very, very basic first inventory screen in terms mm. of structure. Well, you see on, a, on an indie game on yeah. Steam. Second yeah. one is like, what have they done now? It's like, well, they've actually sectioned off the difference between your shortcuts on your keyboard and the inventory in general, and they've got health and uh, torchlight, I think that is. So it's like, oh, that's an upgrade. And then you got Amnesia, that's like, it's looking like stylized to match the game now. And yeah. it's got some nice drawings of the brain and the heart, your oil uh, amount, um, tinderboxes, notes, I guess a uh, description for whatever you're hovering over in your inventory, and of course, you wouldn't need shortcuts because it's literally the lantern and then interact. They're like your two things. Meanwhile, in Penumbra, there was lots of um, lots of additional sort of interactions they had, which led to more bugs, of course. But um, yeah, it, this seems like a streamlined sort of run. I believe Soma doesn't have an inventory, right? Because Not really. Nope. You hold up mm. your um, your little. I, I forget what it's called. Your your little data pads sort of at mm -hmm. the most yeah. but that's mostly contextual you don't yeah, really you have, have an inventory yeah if there's anything you yeah, need exactly. you just carry it around most of the time and it'll have a I'll little icon in the bottom right right for what you're carrying yeah it'll just if you're carrying a key item it'll have like a little icon down there but you can't open an inventory and sort it all right yeah. then bring in the uh, new one so, Rex. so this is the amnesia afterbirth sorry this is the amnesia fucking reloaded uh, the amnesia <laughs> abortion electric boogaloo ah my eyes all right so so notice instantly how much brighter this is <laughs> right so mm -hmm. amnesia i keep i i keep legitimately wanting to say afterbirth my mind is skipping to amnesia miscarriage <laughs> so in amnesia rebirth you, like the other couple games that they've made, you are slinking around in the darkness for about 10 hours of your life. You're creeping around slowly, not a lot of light sources, very, very dark um, throughout. You're going to spend most of your game in relative darkness. There's going to be very few moments where it's bright like a normal game. So you pull up your inventory, and whoosh, you get this bright, whitish notepad that fills up your screen your monitor is now you know 80 percent full 70 percent full of this bright white light 
And I have no idea how they didn't catch this in what I assume they had testing for. Um, but this is a legitimate physical strain on your eyes. Um, I'm surprised not a lot of people are talking about this. Maybe they had, had to build up their own instinctive defense mechanisms to this like I did where my brain would know without even thinking that if I'm about to open my inventory, I close one of my eyes entirely and the other one is open just a little sliver so that as I'm playing this game about being in the darkness, I don't blind myself with suddenly pull up, pulling up my bright white inventory on my, you know, on my monitor, right? Um, shockingly stupid of the developers to make this uh, a part of their game. Don't know how this made past Q&A. Um, Not to mention, like, it may be a strain on the eyes, too, but the other thing is it's oddly, like, kind of takes you out of, like, the atmosphere of the, you know, the darkness. Here you've got this big old clean notepad with a big old bright light on it. It's oddly comforting in the sense that it can be jarring in tone. Because when you've got these other inventories back here, you've got at least the... You've got black background, you know, dark colors, uh, or you've got like a blurred background and everything like that of what you've already seen and everything. It's it kind of still keeps you in the mood of the spooky atmosphere. But then you've got this Skyrim esque notebook down here. And now it's kind of it kind of taking you out of the experience Just little by little. Every time you open this thing, you know, that's kind of what I'm you know, gathering from the differences in inventory in the past. I remember Even definitely though... uh, preparing my eyes for when I knew that it was coming up, and uh, sometimes I would accidentally hit uh, the wrong button, it would pull it up, and every time I'd be like, eh. But I didn't, wasn't commenting on it that much, because I think I'd, like, subconsciously been like, nah, I gotta, this is the inventory screen, that's just how it is. It yeah. was like, yeah. this is actually really it's, fucking stupid. I do remember, though, that the first time I opened that, I was like, huh, what the hell? Yeah, it's but something that... This, it's like, oh, yeah, inventory, whatever. I think so many, so few people are even the idea of complaining about the inventory screen is not something that you hardly ever see in games. At the worst, most games are just like, eh, the inventory could be better. It's not flat out bad or physically painful. Um, and even though they tried to go with a more narratively appropriate notebook that you carry around, uh, it, it does draw you out of the game and it does remind you that you are playing a video game even more. Um, so that's my bitching about the inventory. Yeah, um, uh, I feel like what they probably could have done is made it a little, just a little more diegetic in the sense that they would pull the maybe the character can pull the notebook up and he could have she could have like a little dim flashlight, like hanging flashlight off of her journal or something. So the inventory can be like dim. Maybe that probably could have helped. Well, the game takes place in 37. So, oh, it does. It, yeah. So it here's the thing. I, the. The previous inventories from Penumbra and Amnesia are so video gamey in the sense that they're just boxes with with your statuses on them that you don't even think of them think of it as playing a video game. They're just so you you're you're the mind of a gamer already accepts this as a, a normal thing and it doesn't take you out of it in any way. It's almost like if you play with an inventory system that is more uh I guess more natural looking like uh, Alone in the Dark or Amnesia the, uh, Rebirth here. It, it's almost like, oh, hey, look at that. And it almost even takes you out almost paradoxically. But that's its own conversation. Inventory shit in this game. No clue why they did that. And it caused me pain and discomfort. So I feel like I'm, I, I'm entitled to bitch about it. Definitely something I um, noticed. May not have brought it up without you bringing it up, but I completely agree. Because uh, it's just the kind of thing where I'm like, I almost gave it a pass when I shouldn't. Yeah. And also the um, your 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 notes, you, you take notes mm -hmm. and hints, essentially, in the form of sketches. And it comes across as they just wanted to show off that someone at Frictional could do cool sketches instead of actually doing something that's helpful, because it ended up confusing me on a part. Um, there is a part where it, it's in the fort where you have to use the bench bit on the lever and pull yourself up to the second floor. Mm -hmm. I was, I got confused as to what I was actually supposed to do and what I was supposed to gather because of the way the notes were presented to you and the way that the sketch was done. Uh, so I spent a lot of time looking for stuff that I didn't actually need. Um, 
in and i don't it, it's more it's it doesn't give you a hint or an objective it just sketches out what the puzzle looks like to you which isn't helpful in any way though you're not going to need help on any of the puzzles they're they're pretty simplistic they're it, yeah. but not in a bad way i wouldn't i wouldn't pull this against the game it's the kind of puzzle where you 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 spend a couple time you spend a few moments thinking about it and it's fairly simple and so you get it done relatively quickly and go, huh, okay, that was a little thing that I did. All right. And you satisfyingly move on with the rest of your life. I don't have any problems with those. Um, but, I mean, this ain't missed or anything, so you're all good. Um, next up, we have a, a, a very a very clear regression from the well, wait, uh, well, previous stuff. If we're on yeah, the drawings. Uh, yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. they, they amused me. Um, <laughs> because whenever it was like, a drawing has been done. I was like, why though? <laughs> why? <laughs> when I'm w the scenarios were always in. Like you're drawing fucking pictures, and I know someone could be like, "Why'd you gotta take it so literally?" And I'd be like, "Because she presented that's her, it so literally." I was like, "That's the whole thing. They've they've built a whole thing around this. She's that's like her job. She like sketches out shit, and that's why she's doing this. And the most distracting one. I'm going from memory here. I feel like this is so stupid that it couldn't have happened, but." When you're um desperately trying to get to the docks because your water's broke, and you're like almost hobbling the, your way there as things are getting worse and worse, don't you draw a picture halfway through it? Obviously, I think so. It's fucking funny. And some, <laughs> one I time when you're being like fuck. chased, it you you hear the little ch -ch -ch of of a pen of a pencil on a notebook, and you've got a new sketch, which is supposed to be like your hint or your progress or your journal, right? Um, is it? Are you trying to emulate the idea of an in-universe inventory system, or are you not? Yeah, because um, you know when Daniel has a thought, and it's like scribble sound, and it's now in his notebook, and you're just like, it's a way for them to try and tell you some stuff in case you're missing it. Like, ooh, maybe if I make something that can destroy that goo that's on the door to get through it. And you're like, oh, that's what I gotta do, in case you didn't pick it up already. It's like... How, do, how much does it break your immersion of the idea that someone making a quick note in his notebook? It's like, not very much at all. But someone sketching much, yeah. out this whole fucking picture, and you're like, really? And that's supposed to be, because it, it ties along with some kind of note, usually, like an objective. It's like, you sketched out the fort, it's like, we need to escape the fort, or some shit like that. And I'm just like, you wanted to have a flourish on there, but it, it only distracts the hell out of me. <clears throat> the... The way that your character talks to themselves as well. Um, Nightmare. It is. It mm. kind of is. I really want Tazi to shut the fuck up. I really do. Her her input that is given out loud is worthless. <laughs> a it's lot of either... time, yeah, she's, she's a really, really bad tooltip. Like a really awkward and bad tooltip. Yeah. And they try and hide it by having it so that she's talking to her kid. And she, like she'll end every sentence with "little one" until she calls it, gives it a name. Um, yeah. And the, the um, idea there is, maybe I can construct this, 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 and make this, and go up there with it. That's this, this little one. You're like um... she's constantly <laughs> talking to her baby inside of her. I I feel like that's over half of her dialogue is her talking to <laughs> yeah. her baby. Because it depends but on how many times you hold on X. In, in the beginning, she doesn't even know she has a baby, so in the beginning, she's just talking to herself. Yeah, th that's what I mean. They try and contextualize <laughs> it later to excuse all of the obvious tooltip bullshit, but at the first point in the game, she's just she's just talking out loud. And it doesn't seem like it's what people would actually say to themselves out loud. No, some of um, it's super awkward. There, there are segments of the game where you go to essentially an alien world through Spooky. the use of these portals and gates. Um... So, I don't know about you, but if this happened to me, I'm a guy who talks to himself, you know? Mm -hmm. I would have a lot, I have, I'd have a lot to say. I would say much different things than what she says. Her, her unusual acceptance of the situation and how little commentary she has on this extraordinary, phenomenal event is weird, considering how much she won't shut up about her baby. And, I don't know, maybe it's a woman thing, and... Talking to your unborn child is stranger than traveling to alien worlds through portals. I don't know. But I feel like her dialogue in the game was super misplaced. It was annoying. It told me things I already knew. It was not helpful. And I kind of wish that 
she would shut up so that I could be the insert. So that what the character's thoughts were were clearly mine. Like Daniel, right? Daniel was perfect in that amnesia. He gets his memory wiped. You start the game with him. You have to put it all together. And you're pretty much, your thoughts are Daniel's thoughts, both narratively appropriately and in, you know, in, as, a, you know, as you playing a game. Daniel isn't constantly talking to you. Um, and even in Somo, when you're talking, it's things that feel very appropriate to the situation, and it isn't too often, uh, so it doesn't take you out of it. Um, but in this, Tazi will not shut up. Uh, her input is worthless. Um, this is the same thing, but then it also leads into a different issue. So, um, did you cure yourselves? I, know, I think Metal did. Uh, Rags, did you? With, did I what? So you can like, uh, Mel, you actually did it. It's the thing that I didn't do. Um, Wait, I didn't. Uh, did you already say what we did? I, I thought I missed that as well. Then. Oh, did I'll explain we... it a different way. So, um, at one point, um, you enter into the part. It's a part of the alien world that you're in. And let me just tell you my experience, and then you guys can fill in the blanks. Uh, I, th I think, but I think what you're getting at, though. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So I'm walking around an alien world, and I'm like, "Oh man, I've got. I think I had like three directions to fully check, and there's like a door I see, and um, I check one place, and I think I had to open the door manually, like it, it gave me an option to pull the doors apart, and I was like, "Oh, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if this is like a secret, because that's unusual." And I swear we're gonna have to talk about that as well. So. Open them up, go in, the door's closed behind me, and I'm like, oh no, I can't get out, which disappoints me, because um, I've talked about this so many times on EFAB, and so many games do this to me, where I'm like, I would rather have some way to discern which way is the narrative and which way is the secrets, because sometimes it's unclear, and I would rather look everywhere instead of being forced to not be able to look other places. This happened like four different times in this game, and it drove yeah, me the insane. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh tripwires that you set off in games where it, a, 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 a point of no return that you couldn't have possibly known is and a point yeah, of no return. It is uncanny how many times I look at two directions and I'm like, right, pretty sure this one is the secret, so I'm going to go yes. here first. And then it's like, you fall down a hole and go, ah, and you're like, seriously. Yeah. Which happens a lot in this game. Yes, you're, it you're does. Narratively, like, yeah. you being stopped from uh, uh, getting to your objective is... <laughs> is, is, is so, uh, it is retarded. They love there. knocking you out and then getting you into wherever position they want you to be. Yes. Yes. Um, I, th I can think huh. of like twice or three times where you just like fall through the floor randomly, essentially. <laughs> I think it's more Which than makes that. the game like... longer. And oh, it hey, was she's really taking a dark annoying. descent. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Where it's um, like, oh, we're going to go to where we need to go. Oh, no, a cave in. And I've fallen through the floor. I guess we got to play the game more. I mean, it's very... some kind of cruel joke that you spend all this time in the fort to get a cannon shell to fire. You fire it, and yeah. then you fall through the floor, and you have to go the other way. Like, thanks. And the stu was it a metal beam or like the 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 cannon of the tank just falling onto your belly? And I was like, this baby is dead. This fucking mush. <laughs> nah, it's the it's a gloomy demon baby. There's a there's a smoothie baby in my belly, but smoothie there's no baby, baby anymore. Like Jesus. Yeah, there, there's, yeah, it's just like, oh, you've made progress. Nope, lol, fall through the floor, play the game more. I like how as and, I describe my issue, by the way, we're going to be covering loads of issues along the way. Just just know that yeah. I'm still not going to be over, and I'm probably not going to be over for every other thing we mentioned, but go ahead. Um, yes. I think I was going to say something along the lines of, okay, so whenever you were, we're, we're going to talk about the fear mechanic. Ugh. So, we have to. In, well, wait. Amnesia, the... Yeah. So what I was trying to say is, I'm trying to lead to a point, but if we hit ones along the way, that's totally fine with me. No, go, so go for the. If you're done with the it. getting knocked out and falling through the floor over and over again. Well, I, <laughs> I, I guess it sort of segues into how this this game more than any of their other games feels like a like a almost like roller coaster. A, a, a kind of, but in a bad way. Oh, of course. That's where I, that's you're usually just, derogatory for games. Uh, yeah, you're on a. Yeah. You're on rails, but mm -hmm. not in the fun sense of, ooh, I can't wait to see what thrilling thing happens next in my journey. It's more, you, you it's, it feels very linear. It feels very much like you are on rails set there by the developer. 
and it's just like a set piece after a set piece. Um, they just want you to see the things that they've done. Uh, narratively, it makes it confusing. You don't get a sense of progress that's being made. Um, you often forget why you're doing things at all. You, you forget what the whole point is. Um, you don't feel like a mode like they're like from the beginning of Amnesia: The Dark Descent. Essentially, this is your task: get to the inner sanctum, kill, kill Alexander. Yeah. And you're like, okay. And then along the way, you figure out the context for all of this. Mm -hmm. um, in Soma, you have a goal. You are working toward a goal with someone else, and things happen along the way. And again, you learn more and more and more. But yeah, I mean, in this often. game, the goal seems a lot less defined. Your motivations seem a lot less defined instead mm. of just go forward and don't die. It was it was that uh, tied with just from the get-go, the doctor is acting weird on the fucking phone, so I don't believe yes. the plot line that's being presented to me and I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm like, what's the reveal? I'm I'm am I dead? Am I uh, a demon thing? I think in my playthrough when you talk to him after the fort and he says don't get uh, upset or he, he ends up with like don't get angry. Which he um he actually says early on in the game as well, but I guess I missed it because when he says it to me directly on the phone like that, I was like, I'm a fucking demon thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, I had the same thought when he said Which is, that. <laughs> we'll have to come back to that. There's so many more questions to ask, but I yeah. I'm I'm kind of curious if yeah I I the game sets up stuff that it doesn't ever really justify or explain um in terms of narrative. So, for starters, I know exactly why Amnesia the Dark Descent is called Amnesia the Dark Descent. Both figuratively and metaphorically, you are descending darkly. Um, mm -hmm. It is very, very clear, very obvious, very, very fitting. And again, it's both literal and metaphorical. Uh, Soma is a extremely, probably, someone said it was the best named video game. Don't think I could really disagree much on that one soma's greek for body uh mm -hmm. extremely narratively appropriate for what the game is about um nice and simple so amnesia rebirth i don't know why it's called amnesia rebirth because she's prego but it's not a rebirth. It's smart <laughs> that's just a birth yeah. she was reborn but, in monster form so here's the thing i don't know why you start where you do the get nobody in, knows. So nobody knows. Yeah, that's so. Uh, Amnesia Rebirth starts with you surviving a plane crash, and everyone's gone, and it's like they've left without you, and they've gone forwards, and you have to retrace steps that you were apparently a part of. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're back at the plane crash, um, and you see the aftermath of all this stuff, which. It, it, but then as you go through the journey, you end up contacting the people or, or at least someone that you knew and you see the events of what happened that you were apparently part of, but they never explain it. Um, I don't know how they explain like why you even get, why you even crashed. Um, mm. it, it creates even more narrative problems. So it, fuck it with spoilers. I don't want y'all to play this game. It's a waste of your time. <laughs> so. Amnesia Rebirth is essentially the story of how you, you play Tazi Trianon, who's an anthropologist who's going to Algeria or something like that, someplace in Africa. And as you're flying through the desert in this plane... For some reason... Um, for flashes, some reason, like, you get these weird flashes of you flying through this alien landscape. Yeah, it's there's this big tower and a scary spooky cityscape beneath you and it's a totally alien world and you don't know what's going on and there are these weird flashes and then one of the engines stops working and you crash right and you come to learn that apparently your involvement in this game is based off of a a a god queen creature from another planet has decided that you have a you have a baby you're you're unknowingly pregnant at the time this god queen this alien god queen from another planet whose connection with earth is based on their technology with portals and gateways mm -hmm. she wants your baby she wants your your baby specifically and she goes through a lot of effort 
in a lot of risk in a lot of blood, sweat and tears and curses and roundabout nonsense to get your baby specifically to the point where she will crash the fucking plane with you in it to get your baby, I guess. Lucky you didn't perish. Uh, I don't, do we? Is, is that a thing? Do we know that? I don't even know. Well, I assume. I mean, is it is it total? Because we see the flashes of the alien world in the plane, so I assume it's connected with the plane going down. That's the funny thing, man. I, I don't remember being given any exposition for any of this. I just, I feel like we just I, got left in the dirt for this. All and, I know is that there's a jet engine. They're propellers. Oh, really? Then I that's think, I think the propeller. This is 37, so I assume they'd be uh, propellers if this is a commercial flight. It's some kind of plane engine. Uh, yeah, the, the engines break. The, the engines break on the plane. No, 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 I, mean, I mean, later in the game, you see an engine before you leave the alien world. I think after the first time. Let's see, did I write that down? Um, probably, because I know during during all of the, the gateways, there's little tears. Their world gets into ours, ours gets into theirs. So mm. I think you're, yeah, yeah, you have to, the first time you get back, you're walking through the big yeah. open space, which, by know. the way, the little frozen people, I don't know what those were about. Nope. True. Can you, they never give an ex, I think they forget. I kind of forgot w b until I re uh, until I went back through my memories and it was like, well, what's up with all those frozen people? What's that about? What's that for? Where did that come from? I don't know. I don't think they ever explained it. And I think we just stopped seeing that. Um. I guess it was just for spooky imagery, so that as yeah. you're crawling through the shadows, you get frozen people. Um, but okay, that's the thing. But yeah, the, this this god queen wants your baby because her baby had a sickness and it died, and she has the sads, so she wants your baby. And um, in exchange for it, she will save you and your crew, right? Mm. Yeah. So you exactly. crash in the you crash in the desert, and obviously that's a survival scenario. Um, she appears to you and your group and says hi what's up i'm a magictism follow me i'm huh she says follow me i think and then yeah she 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 comes to him and she says i will i will lead you safely through the desert i will deliver you from this perilous situation if that chick over there if that tazzy lady if she gives me her baby then all of you will survive and so tazzy is understandably a fucking asshole and says no I, I won't change exchange the life of my baby for the life of our entire crew which is like 10 people by the way which by she the way as no. pointed out i think by the doctor it's like how is the baby like the idea that you keep the baby and we all die here why is this better yeah the i'm totally on the doctor's side because like the baby's gonna die by the way the baby dies uh, either way so <laughs> yeah so oh well but, but apparently half of the fucking story is you moping over your dead kid Right? So this works in real life if you have an actual dead kid. In games, if you're going to convince a random person about a fictional character's fictional dead child from their past who died tragically, you're going to have to work really hard to get me emotionally invested in that. And, and if I don't get emotionally invested in that, your story falls flat because I don't really care. Um, they try really hard to make you care about uh, Alice, who is your your... A, a child that you've had before who died of some mysterious illness um she dies mm -hmm. this is all presented to us through flashbacks and random hideo kojima-esque dream sequences of giant floating babies <laughs> very very strange <laughs> very very odd imagery that they're using here um however it doesn't work because it is difficult to make random players feel genuine sympathy and sadness for a character's tragic backstory that happens through quite an um, interesting feeling it was like I, I legit like the, the scene where the baby is struggling to breathe when she's like trying to sing it a song i think uh, uh, when it finished i was like that was sad but like yeah there were a few little sad points but these are all in basically these well, are but, sketch yeah they're, they're like screens. isolated in the same way that you go this is you know timmy this is timmy's mother and then you shoot her in the head and timmy starts crying i'd be like damn don't you feel bad for Timmy? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I do, but I just don't have any context for any of it. Like, you had a kid, you really liked the kid, the kid died. And I, I, I know, as we all do, the purpose of those is to justify her choice to keep the child, but it's confused, because doesn't the child die anyway if you do this? Yeah, um, they chose yeah. an odd way to get me to 
to to feel sympathy for this character I think that I want to shut up. It's a lose lose because your choices are refuse and we all die in the desert. And the baby. I might be wrong about this because it feels so stupid to be this way. Or give the baby up to be taken care of by a hyper advanced alien queen. You're like, I guess. And we get we all get to live. It's like I feel like there's there's an obvious choice here, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, if yeah. you would I mean, I guess the the whole thing and, and what's weird too is that you only get like in the flashbacks, you only hear the input of like two of your crew. The doctor who says the doctor who's correct, who says, We're all gonna die here if you don't do this. I mean, by the by the way, um all of this happens after one of your uh like like one of your guys has a very bad injury your husband is like missing um Dying. and you don't know where he is and we'll get to salim in a moment but like mm -hmm. yeah you're in a dire situation and one person is severely injured it, bad bad stuff is really really bad situation um one of your the doctor says yeah give up the baby so that we can all live there's like 10 of us and someone else i forget if it's malik or hank is like you know it's your baby you make the decision you know it's up to you because i don't know if you I'd, if i was there i'd be like yeah like i i sympathize with your situation however your situation and mine are in you know inextricably intertwined um i would like for the 10 of us to not die also if you don't give up the baby you'll die too um but yeah. that part is just sort of glossed over uh which kind of makes me hate tazi um, the, they're trying like... to make you feel sympathetic with her, but it makes me hate her. Yeah, and yeah this is all before the events of the game, by the way. This is all like yeah, this is all yeah. through like mostly audio flashbacks. Um, you just hear it when it sounds uh, like the like main memories. drama. It's balked, but it sounds way more interesting than "Will you blow up the queen?" <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess I and... will. And so we have, um, so you, your, your character has a husband, uh, Salim. And... Sorry, uh, Daspol, did you have a question about what we just mentioned, or? Uh, it's slightly off topic. Um, if you had, have you guys played uh, Outlast 2? No. I no, I heard you. it's bad. It's extremely horrible. Um, <laughs> and I, it was probably one of the worst games I've ever played. But, um, okay, well, the, my question was going to be which one you thought was worse, but since you haven't played it, which I don't recommend you do, uh, I was going to be forced to play it next Halloween by everybody wanting me to suffer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and suffer you shall. So, I don't know. I was just curious about that, but, uh, do continue. It was just, it was just, it was just a thought. Uh, so, in, in the vein of the, the plot is care, half of this game's plot is the personal story of you having the sads. And if the character does not also feel aforementioned sads, then you, your narrative really doesn't work. It's a big gamble to rest a lot on you feeling sympathetic for the character. Mm. Um, so you have a husband, Salim, and while you're out in the desert, and th this is all before the game starts, you've crash landed. He goes to find help, essentially. You take shelter in a cave um, in one of video gaming's most boring and dull intros ever and he goes he's in the cave and he goes to find help and you're worried about salim and is he gonna die is he gonna come back that's that's da. pretty darn early in the game you find salim Wait. and he's dead um what i feel like so if you would ask me to recant it i would have told you he got injured in the crash and then he mm -hmm. was given medical attention at the cave, and then you guys decided to carry on, and he stayed behind to heal. And uh, then there's dialogue as you progress with people saying, like, you know, if we do this, we can we can help him, and stuff like that. I and then... I I the I guess either way, um, I thought he went ahead to look for help. No, uh, I, I don't know if, if you guys picked up on that, but uh, there's two other dead people in the cave. One yeah. buried, and uh, the other one killed herself because the, there was a husband, and she didn't want to live anymore. So these three were originally staying back, mm -hmm. and so he was like, "Oh, that's fucked. I'm not gonna stay here on my own. I'm gonna probably die or something." So he went further ahead on his own after that, even though the other ones went ahead, and they were supposed to stay there waiting for help. So that's I, why I, he went ahead. All right, I, I I guess that was the other way. Um. But or maybe I missed a piece of paper that explained. Well, all I was going to say it doesn't really change what your criticism. Yeah, be. it doesn't change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The point is, he separated. 
and he he dies and you yeah. come across a dead Salim pretty early in the game. He uh, hour and, and a half, maybe. Yeah, yeah, like really soon into the game, right before the fortress. So yeah. it's it's really weird that they would introduce the husband being dead so early in the game. Um, yeah. He essentially, I mean, I did get a nifty flashlight from him. That's where you get the lantern is from him. Mechanically, that's how that purpose is served. But narratively, it's a very interesting decision that you don't, not that he's dead, but that your character discovers that he is dead in the way that you do so soon. Thought they would have kept him alive longer, but yeah, interesting decision. Yeah, um, I feel like almost, dare I say, all players would have been like, oh, oh. Yeah, because when you come across the body, I was like, oh, it's a, a dead guy. And then Tazi's like, oh, Salim. Uh, and I'm like, oh, this is it. Oh, oh, wow. I, we're doing <laughs> this now. I think All right. Here. Wow. Okay. Look, yeah. almost the genuine like storyteller reaction I'm having in my head when I see that stuff. I'm like, why did you waste this? This could have been a payoff. Yeah, yeah they did waste it <laughs> like, uh, as, as in terms of payoff. You could like, have him do the thing where you, you talk to him on a radio. And when you finally get to him, something tragic happens. That's the that's when, the bog standard way of doing it. Yeah. So in Bioshock, when you get betrayed by Atla, uh, Atlas, at um, <laughs> uh, fuck, like uh, the guy on the radio you talk to the whole game, fuck Atlas, it, um, Atlas, yeah. oh, that's weird. Um, yeah, like when he betrays you at the end, you're like, oh fuck, like you get more of a a shock from that than you do from that, like. It, you could list a hundred games with more shocking revelations, but very weird. Does feel wasted. Feels odd. Um, and you hardly... It's, eh. Well, uh, of course, I assume the defense of that would be, like, that was the f a focus of Bioshock's narrative, while Salim's death... I mean, it's barely a footnote, <laughs> like, if you yeah. think about yeah, the grand the narrative. Thing. But why would it be a footnote? That's the weird part. Yeah, your husband dying kind of a big deal? You'd yeah, think narratively, yeah. but because it's all across the memories you get uh, during the the uh, in between the levels or sections or whatever you want to call them, yeah. like oh look we love our kid it's all good family and you're just like oh, yeah but he's dead already so oh yeah, uh, yeah uh, well <laughs> yeah they 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 do most of the work trying to make you feel sad about his death you know posthumously yeah. um, it's a bit awkward which yeah it doesn't again it's like the last of us two thing like there is. You're really setting yourself up with this challenge here, and you don't get any special points for pulling it off this way. Um, and there's a reason most people don't do that, uh, because it's not generally how brains sort of process all this information. Um, I will say that, and, and feel free to interject at any point, uh, the game is shockingly uninteresting, uh, but there is the, the only interesting parts to me or the alien world that you go to. Small interjection. I just I was curious to find yeah. it. Uh, I discovered he was dead at one hour seventeen. Oh. So that's quite it. quite early. Yeah. I Very took, soon. I probably took longer because I I looked at every nook and cranny. Because I, I I played this game like I was looking blind manner, and it was not worth my time. <laughs> I. I gave this time. I gave this game more time than it deserved as well. Oh. I went around looking for all the things uh, whenever I could. And um, can I just? Well, actually, carry on. I'm gonna get some sets of what was funny. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, we were getting it. Oh yeah. The the only interesting part of the game for me was the alien world. Um, it doesn't have a name. It will be referred to as probably Alien Planet or Alien World. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The only interesting thing about the game, about the game to me, and when I was playing through the game the first time, the highlight of my gameplay experience was when you was what, the first and the second time you sort of go there. Uh, the first time is um, a very dull, but at the time it's fairly early in the game, so it's interesting. It's very new to you, but in retrospect, it was dull. They didn't do anything with it. Um, mm -hmm where you, you, you go to this alien world and you have to find these random portals um, that you use this amulet you have. How did you get the amulet? The, 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 the spirit devil the lady spirit gives it to you. It to you? Yeah, for, okay. Whatever it's called, yeah. Um, that's like, that, that's in, the, in that uh, cutscene after you get to the oasis. She leads you to 
somewhere and gives it to you. I don't remember where exactly, but she gives it to you basically. Sounds like a lot uh, of yeah, mystical you... bullshit that goes on in this game. There is a lot of mystical charring. bullshit yeah, in this is. game. Um, and it is used to explain, I guess, a lot of things. But um, what was kind of about Amnesia the Dark Descent is it took place in like 1870, 1880, something like that. Mm -hmm. It had this really cool mix of the 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 mystical supernatural orb and the shadow. Yeah, and the and orb it mixed that almost acted as like this this alien energy source. It was like this you can you can try and harness the orb, but you need a lot of like steampunk crazy level shit to be yeah, able to do it, anything with it. It had both a fantasy aspect to it, but it also had a very grounded science aspect. He would mm -hmm. do experiments. You would brew concoctions. Uh, uh, Alexander von Brennenberg was like a Renaissance man. He he dabbled in alchemy and all the sciences. And they they talked about engineering in it with the castle. Um, and there was ways of harnessing the energy of the orb that were that seemed really grounded. And it had this, this cool mix of fantasy and his 1880s style science that was really kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so and much has like stuff, hard science that was super interesting. I, I love that shit. And then, but, but now it sounds like they've completely gone in the other direction with this one. It's with just a bunch like, of, like magic amulet and from shit. magic amulet from alien planet, magic alien technology that they don't really get into much. Um, the shadow is here, but but the the idea is that you go to the alien world the first time. You use your magic amulet to open the portals that are just around. Um, there mm. there are these weird rifts that connect the two do you remember, worlds. Do you remember the rift you find? I don't know if you guys went up to it, but I did. There's a rift at one point, or it looks like one. She walks up to it and she says, like, it doesn't open. And she's, she says something like, um, oh, this one's been deactivated. And I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I wrote that because I wrote down, I can't like, remember so which can, one that is. Maybe, I, you can probably... only use portals once, but I was never... Yeah, I, I, I just remember being like, how did you oh, conclude yeah. this, woman? Like, I don't think, how do you yeah, know this? Very odd. Yeah, because we have... What's weird is that you have those little ones that are scattered around that open up whenever you bring the amulet amulet close enough. Um, but you also have the portal machine, um, which, for starters, doesn't get treated by Tazzy with as much wonderment as, you, as you'd expect. She She's, just she sort of accepts fairly... She shuts the fuck up when she shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, like, this is the part where I'd be like, holy shit, this is a portal device that connects, essentially, different planets and universes together. Um, but I, all of her voice lines got, I guess she, it's, she got, they paid for her voice lines to be talking to her baby. Well, I, she, she like a little green check when you, when you, fin when she finishes a thing on the drawing. <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> um, it's like, I want to, I want to bolster what Rags just said, because like, it is bizarre looking back that she, she gets wowed by these, these much smaller things. You come across this machine that literally looks as though it's like a scene chooser of worlds once you've got it activated. And it's this big sphere, and there is, there's several like stations to be able to line up the light for it. And I'm pretty sure the first time you see it, she's like, this is a portal, right? We've got to get it working. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> woman, like, your 1937-era brain I, is trying to... You just came across an alien... A series of vast alien ruins where a, a, a hugely complex, inconceivably complex piece of technology, a portal device that allows you to traverse across God knows what vast distances instantly to alien planets and worlds that are nothing like Earth in any way. And she's just like, yeah, well, you, know, it's, you know, it's a portal, you know, as you oh, do. I grabbed the thing I was asked, by the way. So what I did was I was looking at when I found him and I was like, I wonder if I take a screenshot of chat, how many of these things I can highlight. So... You want to just read out the boxes? All right. Oh no, I was so invested in that character. Um, an hour in, and he's already dead. What the fuck is this passing? Pacing, uh, I guess, is what they're after. Pacing, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, pacing is with a C, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, too early. Don't really care for him yet. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care, Pog. <laughs> <laughs> so, not to say that. A chat's reaction will tell you what's happening. I just find it curious that everyone is pretty much like, "Why so early? I don't care. Why? Why did you do this? Why? I'm not invested. Why did you do this?" Um, it, it, so the um, 
Yeah, th this is a little disjointed because the game is disjointed. Yeah, I was gonna. I'm sure anyone listening, the, we're gonna jump yeah, around. The, yeah, the Alien World sets up a lot of interesting aspects, and a lot of them are callbacks. So, the Alien World has a portal system. Like they've created these portals that that allow them to go to alien worlds, like Earth, uh, to them. This sort of ties into the whole Alexander making using the orb to create a portal because that's how they're fueled in this world. The big portals are fueled by the orb. You have to have an orb, of which there are like seven, I think, in existence, yes. uh, to as an like energy source or power source or navigation, whatever. They're essential to using these portals. That's why Alexander needed the orb to create a portal home. We don't know. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot of things that are appropriately ambiguous. Like, is Alexander's world the one that you're in? Is he a native creature of the, this alien world you go to? Or are there other alien worlds connected by other portals? Are there other civilizations who have their own orbs and they eventually discover that these create portals? You don't quite know. Now that's sort of left up in the air. Um, but they talk about how this whole, this alien civilization is powered by Vitae, right? which has horrific implications if you've played Amnesia the Dark Descent because you know what it takes to create Vitae. Uh, it is a horrifying process to create this power source, and this civilization runs on it, except for the torches that you light with matches. Um, <laughs> oh, those God. aren't powered by Vitae, I guess. Put a, put a, put a note on that one. That's a whole topic, note. too. Put a yeah. note on that one. We'll, we'll get back to it. Uh, but with the, um, I was super invested in learning more about this alien world. Who was this god queen? The people here. I like the way that they would record things on tablets and the way they kind of talk to each other and their little names for days and cycles and rises and things like that. Um, I was interested in kind of how their technology sort of worked a little bit. I was, I was super interested with where does the shadow come from? Like, what is this shadow? Do they leave it? Uh, I mean, do, do they give any answers as to the shadow? Uh, I think um, uh, Kita or Kima, uh, he talks about it as the red flesh. Like, ooh, very, very spooky. Um, but you don't, we, we don't, but, and, and it's implied that this thing came through the portals that they had. So, um, I haven't got pieces of information. Maybe Mel can fill in holes, whatever. But, like, we're supposed to assume that in order to try and sabotage and destroy the system of keeping the Empress alive and freeing all the people who are suffering, they created the red flesh that was uh -huh. designed to be injected into her systems and destroy it all because it'll spread like a virus. Now, on the hand of this game alone, I thought it was really fucking weird that the corpse of the dude who tried to do it is right there. His, his ejector is right there, and his description of how to do it is right there in the room where you need to do it. Like, was, did this strike anyone else as odd? It would be... Think it would, it, but it's, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, pretty convenient, it, I'd say. Yeah, the because you come across a guy... You come across two... He's the, You come across a guy who's dead. He got he got hit by rubble like your character does five times. Uh, but he's not as lucky as you are. He <laughs> dies, and he's got a note by him that says, I'm going to die. You've got to finish what I started. Uh, inject the red <laughs> flesh into the big Vitae channels that essentially go through the city and lead up to the God Queen Tower. By the way, um, uh, when you you know how you inject that one in that point in the plot, and then there's three at the end. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. When I saw that we could do one at the end, I was like, "Oh man, I guess I probably like missed the other two because there's no way like all three are here, and then there's one random." Yeah, that's one. what confused yeah, me as well. And then it was like, yeah, "No, there's three here." And I was like, "Oh, okay." The other one here, and it's like, "Wait, didn't didn't say there's like four main lines, and then someone in chat brought, oh no, one is destroyed already." It's like. Well, when, what I'm, what I'm you saying is... Because destroy one you have... down below in its own chamber out so far away from yeah, the tower, it, so you assume the others are similar? Different, yeah, in different areas. It's so odd to me that you have the chamber of the queen and three lines are attached to it. Also, a fourth one is attached, but from a place you have to destroy from a different area. You're like, that's weird. Yeah, why, why don't have more ghouls there to protect those things anyways? Oh god, the fucking it's... ghouls, man. <laughs> um, we haven't gotten to the monster spookytism designs um, yet, but because we're still talking about this weird narrative stuff that they're doing. I don't know about you guys. Basically, but as we've I was been going... super disappointed by basically everything that they either don't tell me or the, that they decide to tell me. Yeah. Um, 
the the none of the ideas really pan out in any interesting way. I thought they were going for some strange cosmic horror sort of angle, um, but it doesn't really pan out in any interesting fashion. Uh, I felt extremely disappointed as the game went on, and I was not getting answers or explanations as to things. Um, that doesn't mean th everything has to be explained. There's a lot of horror and spookytisms that come from not explaining stuff, but they toy with the idea a lot, and this is the second game in the series, so mm -hmm. I, I was hoping to get something there. Um, but I, 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 by the end of the game, certainly I was very disappointed, both by the structure of how you choose the endings um, and what they actually sort of were, and I mean, it didn't it didn't really hit me the first time i went through the game i got one ending but it was not the ending that i wanted to get but it, i was just confused by the order that you're allowed to do them in like when is when is the point of no return yeah when can you not go through this thing when can you it it's a little confusing as to when you're allowed to choose the actual endings um um yeah, I guess we could, we could talk about that now if you want. There's no real yeah. reason yeah, um, not it. to. So my experience with the ending was, like, I decided early on, if I have a chance to blow up this bitch and destroy the whole place, I'm doing it. Like Absolutely. The, that is... When you have imagery of, like, thousands of people screaming in pain to keep this one person going, I was like, uh, yeah, I feel like this is pretty obvious. I don't know. And then the game is like, but I can take care of your kid. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, why would yeah, I? Are it's, you kidding it's, me? They... The game tries to legitimately sort of convince you that, yeah, but your baby gets to live here on this dead planet <laughs> filled full with of people monsters where pain. I'm the only conscious person. Everyone else is stuck in pods suffering for eternity, essentially, to keep me alive with their Vitae. Like, what happened? This, by the way, we'll do this as much as we can, but every fucking floor, it's like they did it better every time in the other games. Yeah. Soma was like, hey... You can shut down every form of life on this this planet as is, and you're like, do you want to? And most people would, I think, knee jerk be like, yes. But there are creatures in the world of Soma and Pathos too that are not only content, but some of them are like, please leave me alone. I'm like, I want to just exist this way. And mm -hmm. and the WoW is like constantly evolving and changing. And it's like, do you think maybe that some life in the world of Soma is worth it if it can eventually? sort of work itself out instead of creating creatures that seem to scream and could be in pain is a complicated question because the whole point of it i would assume is like if you decide no i've seen too many scary things and and pain and suffering it has to go and it's like so what is the line then how much suffering versus uh, contentment would you have to wipe out the human race i wonder like, what do you think right, and, how much suffering and, is with and who are you exactly it's like yeah. who are you to judge whether or not they're happy and because the or wow not the wow in that game isn't evil it's just trying to work it doesn't like it just wants to create life and it keeps you know creating all kinds of things and some of them will lash out and attack you because they don't even understand their surroundings and some of them think they're pleasantly like with their friends and having fun while they're actually in a box with little tweezer arms just floating around <laughs> And I think that is so much more fucking interesting than, look at these millions of people who are screaming. Would you like to continue this? <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. And it's funny, because when I made my choice, which I thought was to, to end the suffering, and the game played the cutscene, and it showed the machine turning off, and the guy stopped screaming, I was like, oh, I guess I did it. And then um, I got told by someone that, like, oh, you got the noble ending. I was like, okay. <laughs> good i guess i didn't even yeah, realize I mean, it like seemed obvious like the obvious like there wasn't this thing because they try to leverage it right they try to say you could stop all of the suffering on this planet you could free all of these people from their living hell and you could kill this fucking bitch who did so many terrible horror let's think uh so this this god queen lady uh she's a horrible terrible piece of shit awful person she did terrible things to you, terrible things to the people that your character cared about, uh, terrible things to this planet. She's a shit person. And so you having any sympathy for her, yeah, like that's fucking not, not even close to even happening. Um, and it also leverages your kid. So you you give birth to your uh, to Amari, Amari at this point as your baby daughter. Uh, she She grows really, really fast for magic alien well, reasons can i just on that point like, that and 
Am I not a demon person? Is this something? Is the baby okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is like, because they they oh they do the things like oh you go into the spooky world, go back out, boom, three months of baby in yeah. my belly. It's like why? That's if actually it... why I, why I opened up the game just now, because I remember a, a note that said something about time, but it doesn't say anything about why this happened. It's just as time in the note. I thought it might explain something. I think it was Herbert's final note or something. But yeah, I, I don't know why our baby just grows three months every time we go through Spooky World. Well, this is what I mean. I don't know. In terms of, is this a normal, healthy human baby? It's like facts. It grows at random bursts of speed. You're like, okay. Yeah. It was, um, you know, in the safety of the womb of a creature that doesn't drink water or eat food, will randomly cannibalize, like, human beings in a frenzy of rage, has, like, these flashes of veins of blood and, like, purpley red skin that just flashes all over and, and, and often loses track of time from being knocked out over and over and over again. I'm just like, I feel like this is a great combination for a baby that might not even exist and you're just crazy. Yeah. Um, but again, the the whole the what's supposed the the good ending is it is the good ending. It's the obvious good ending. It's not even. I mean, this let's is just like, call it the ending. <laughs> this is the ending, right? This is the one that I only didn't get because I was confused about the execution of it based on how they present the ending. It's very weird with where the invisible trip wires are. Mm. Obvious ending. It's the one that you want because it's so clearly the correct one. Um. They try to make you not do that obvious ending because you and your daughter will die. Your newborn daughter will die. It's like, listen, friend, baby, I feel sorry, baby. I do, but still a clear cut choice. You're still one life. Just going to be honest here. Um, also, you're doomed anyway. Um, you're doomed. Mm -hmm. The baby is doomed if you if you don't stay here. Um, it, it very, very obvious. They did a really shit job at trying yeah. to do the balancing act of what ending do you choose. Because one ending is taking... Because right before you get to the Queen's Chamber, there's just another portal there that has Paris on it. Yeah. <laughs> where you live, where your house is. And <sighs> when I got to this point, I'm like, oh, this is the end. This is the choice I can make to just fuck off. Okay, <laughs> well... That's obvious. Also, there's just another portal here with an aura. Well, of course, okay, okay, it's fine. the queen's personal portal, right? She uses it to get around. Come on. Yeah, uh -huh. hey, you know, as as one does. Um, it's like a little car. Because sudden portal right before you think. So the 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 option when you have you could you could leave here, you could fuck right off, you could go back to Paris, or you could even take your baby with you to Paris. However, you know your baby will die of this disease. Uh, it requires Vite in order to just stall its demise, its death. Um, and you are like a gonna turn into a weird, crazy monster thingy, because <laughs> uh, that's part of this God Queen's plan, I guess. It's you, fucking brilliant. Just with how you're explaining it, you're like, could you have made the choice more weird? Like, why? Why did you do all of this? Yeah. Shit? So you're gonna die. Yeah. Uh, even worse, you're gonna live as some hunger fueled husk of a monster. Yeah, I think harvester is what they. Can, what yeah, she calls harvester. It. Yeah. Can I just remind you? Um, one of the choices in Soma is. The last human being on Earth wants to be euthanized. Will you do yeah. it? Yes. Oh. <laughs> that is one of the easiest like scenarios ever. It's so meaningful when 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 you just think about what it what it is as a scene. And then you got this game that's just struggling to piece together all this crazy shit. That's like, don't you think this is like crazy though? Like in terms of, can you really make the choice? And I'm like, yeah. Not only not only is the choice in Soma to to euthanize the last humans alive there's the secondary option afterwards to she asked you to stay there with her so she doesn't die alone and in your your human fucking brain that's like this is a this is just a game these are just pixels on a screen you are sitting your ass in that chair and you are not leaving until she dies i remember right because of how well it's so presented um because the two let's plays i use for my series uh christopher odd i remember him saying yes i will in like a very sort of grounded like this is important and i'm pretty sure markiplier was like yes and just 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 it's it's yeah, it's a serious like, moment okay. even though it's absolutely nothing it's 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 nothing it's it, it you know it's just ones and zeros it's just it's it's you can leave she's she's an animation but when you're that invested in the game but the narrative you just feel like a sense of respect you're like i'm going to stay here for a little bit 
What was your favorite choice? Um, my favorite choice was whether or not you um, kill. I think uh, I agree with that. Old yeah. Simon, your other Simon. Yeah. I think yeah. that was the. I think that was the most interesting choice. That choice. Yeah, big same. Watching people rationalize either way is super interesting. Yeah, big same. Big same. Can I just mention? I know we haven't done it already. Soma's really good. Just wanted to mention. Soma's a fucking really masterpiece. Yeah. It's I, the best horror game I've ever played in my life. Also, I chose not to. Um, you chose not to. Yeah, I, I chose, chose not. I, I wait. Actually... Stop. We're gonna tangent and then never stop talking about Soma because it's really good. We're gonna get stuck. To get stuck talking about their last game. Their other. Their last game that was good. No. Now we're talking about the shitty one. Um. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, basically the ending is you're going to turn into an evil, horrible monster and live an undeath that is worse than death. Your baby is going to die if you take her home, but one of the options is to go home or you're going to turn into a monster and your baby's going to die horribly. Uh, okay, great. Uh, the <laughs> second ending is that you let the God Queen have your baby and the baby gets to grow up on this dead fucking nightmare alien world there's not even a civilization there's just random ghouls everywhere yeah it, it <laughs> used to be a civilization now it's a dead city and the only people who are alive are this crazy evil god queen these horrific monsters and countless untold thousands of people stuck in pods suffering for what will essentially be eternity so that their vitae can be harvested to keep her alive and you're like oh yeah let me raise your daughter here so she could grow up and have a life you're like, okay, no, uh, it's dumb. It's not even like it. She's not presented as this angelic being in some space garden of Eden with her own civilization of people where you can give up your daughter to, to have an actual life. Like, no, it presents it as like living, growing up in a hellscape. And then, of course, the yes. third ending is you sacrifice yourself to inject the red flesh into the vitae of this world, which kills everybody off, releases them of their eternal suffering, and kills the villain of the game as well. You can put an end to all the suffering, which is the obvious choice of what you do. It's the obvious choice. So, yeah. Oh, well, by the way, the writer for this game, not the same writer as the last two games, oh my by God. the way. I mean, the, you can see it in my playthrough. Uh, I don't even, like, have a moment of figuring it out, quote-unquote. I'm just like, ooh, an option to kill her, cool. Yes. <laughs> like, it's not uh, even, don't even, and if someone said, like, did you even know you had a choice? I'd be like, I don't, I didn't care if I had a choice. That's not, yeah, like... Um, I, I knew what the three choices were. The, it's just how they presented the choices and the order you have to do them. And then you're like, oh yeah, I, absolutely, iconoclast. Boop, 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 button press extremely quickly. We're doing this. This is the ending we're going for. This is the correct ending. It's not even close. Um, so the yeah, I super upset because the the design of the alien world I thought was very cool. Aesthetically, it was very interesting. Um, the 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 backstory of what happened here could have been really cool. I, um, I, I like the idea of a civilization that is powered by Vitae and knowing how it's harvested. And how they deal with that, how they rationalize it. Um, I think that's a very interesting concept, but ultimately I kind of feel like the whole thing was borked. I still think um, it's a problem, and we brought this up beforehand, and uh, before we played the game, sorry, and we knew it would be a problem, and it was. Uh, Daniel described the flashes of like the city as uh, having impossible geometry, from what I remember. I could be wrong about this, maybe he was referencing something else, but um, the world itself, I felt like it wasn't alien enough. Um, it was really, and I think this is both a pro and a con. The fact that you can vaguely understand how things work there in a in a um, uh, an intuitive sense, like things can be in a different language and be different shapes and forms and stuff, but you can still be like, oh, I can kind of see how this works. I don't know if I consider that a, a, a it's a plus for like in terms of uh... you, you getting to work things, but I consider it a con in terms of like I feel like it should be more alien, and of course I, I could. It, it, uh, you know where I could go to make this more poignant in re regards to the light sources. Uh, yeah, um, on on that note, though, I felt like the environment was appropriately alien. I feel like the the actual creatures who live there were not appropriately alien enough. Um, so I guess it's a little difference of ours. Um, yeah. 
Well, like if, I said, I can see the pros. Uh, I just, I guess, this could this could totally be a subjective point, I think. Um, I wanted something more otherworldly, even more so than what we got, I think. And I don't know that I wanted I, to understand yeah. it as well as we did. Uh, I can I can see I, I I see exactly what you're saying. I thought it was good, um, but if it was like super duper alien and you had to like actually like take a moment to try and process they just this navigating buildings because it's so different from ours, I would have been okay with that as well. Um, I think that the big issue for me was oh these are humans basically. Yeah, well, two yeah, because in a nose and a mouth, and you know, if we're hey, designing like alien stuff, and and the first thought we have is like, well, they'll be humanoid. I'm already like, oh, uh, okay, all right, mm -hmm. I guess. You know, they're they're gonna have a head, arms, legs, and I'm like, okay, I already feel like we're we're too close to home already, <laughs> but that's fine, I guess. Yeah, if one thing for all the shit that Dead Space Three gets, um, the aliens in that they were fucking aliens. They were terrifying, right? They were their world and their biology was alien, um, but but essentially I think that the well I guess we can go into it too. So Mahler mentions like the, briefly the puzzles and how you piece them together intuitively, um, maybe a little bit too easily put together intuitively. Um, yeah, but it it was dressed up in an alien enough like dressing well, that i was okay with it but let's um let's be a little specific i don't know if it was a security protocol or some shit but you know the paddles that have like uh let's say a, a seven by seven board of of symbols and you have to move a like piece to represent mm -hmm. three symbols and then you can activate a machine to do a thing i'm trying to picture like why would it work that way yeah. yeah, it is clearly designed as a puzzle first. Exactly. And it, and, and it doesn't seem to have any actual... Um, and there's another part of this that I'll get to as well. Um, but the puzzles seem like puzzles first, not actually trying to figure out a piece of technology. Well, let us let us do what I, I'm hoping we can do as much as we can to try and explain why this is not as good as the previous games. A puzzle I remember in Soma, a place is down in terms of electricity. You open up a panel, you can see that um, there's like little fuse switches... And there's, on the left side, there's a power source, and then on the right side, there's where you need to get the power to. And the way that it was going is broken and busted, and you've got to work a way around it. Just a standard yes. little electrical puzzle to power the unit that you're trying to get powered. And, and yes. it's it's a puzzle, but it is also, in narrative, a perfectly reasonable way to translate a, an engineering issue to a human player. And that's the kind yes. of shit that someone was like that puzzle was easy i'd be like that's not the point i'm making okay it's, yeah <laughs> the figuring it out part wasn't the difficult part but this game's weird like uh, i described it as a portal puzzle to rags and i'm assuming uh, you both just be like yeah, yeah. But is it the the first portal puzzle that you find where you move the blocks over it's see the fact that you just described it that way bugs me <laughs> in a way that that's what it is it's yeah it's this so very so... obviously test room thing it's like you've got a teleporter you've got a bunch of blocks You've got um, a source that needs some kind of circular thing, and then you've got this oh, board of symbols that you have to match the symbols. It's, it's such a, like, is this made for people to solve? Like, what is this? Yeah, is this made for people to just, ha just yeah, it's it, it, it comes across as a puzzle first and an actual lab experiment second. Which um, makes sense in And portal. I like the idea that, <laughs> that this gate technology is like this super hyper advanced shit that this alien race is sort of discovering, and it creates issues for them. Because I, so did the shadow come out of the portals or did they create the shadow? I thought, that's what I mean. I thought the shadow was created as a sabotage thing. I thought they were going to use the shadow the as the sabotage thing. Maybe? Because <laughs> cause here, because I, because I guess I can't quite recall exactly. And unfortunately, the thing is that if you miss the right tablet of backstory, you won't no well, no true and um By the way, the oh. tablets T tablets oh yeah you is can there, read are there weird tablets uh. that don't work but you can pick them up so I, I don't know if there'll be oh, in the universe thing it detects you and translates to i, I can't make sense of that you, yeah. you pick up glowing tablets and you can read them in English. They they, they flash they in a couple different languages and then it stops on English. It's so fucking lame. She she picks it up, it does it, and she's like, "Whoa!" And it's like yeah. that's not good enough, game. <laughs> that's not good enough. Um, I, I, I mean, yeah, just to clarify quick about the um, the previous point, 
Wait, quick, remind me, what was the previous point? Uh, we were talking about portals and puzzles. And gates and the red flesh. Right. So, it, either way, it prevents a problem, right? So, let's say, first scenario, they created it. In which case, what the hell is it doing in Amnesia the Dark Descent? Like, what, who's, did someone yeah. send it through a fucking portal and it chases Daniel? Like, I don't understand. Yeah, However, why does the orb chase... Why, why always, does the shadow chase the orb? If it always existed, does that mean you could, like like, chop it up and put it in a syringe and inject it into people and then it goes nuts when it hits VT. Because they have... Because you find Keita's lab, his little laboratory where he's got the, the little red flesh bits and the boxes and the glass and the glass things and hmm. where they're experimenting with it. Which, in and of itself, makes sense if... But you don't know if it was made there or if it came through the portals because either way, I think it causes issues. Yeah, I just... I thought that... When they were using, as a result of them using this this portal technology, they this is where I think I thought the cosmic horror aspect of it. They went to somewhere they shouldn't have gone, or through this portal to some because we don't know how far apart this alien world are is from yeah. ours. It's mm -hmm. other side of the universe for all we know. That's what's just kind of spooky about it. They let in this interdimensional horrific thing that was just drawn to the power of the orbs for whatever reason and killed everything in its way to get there. Uh, um, um, but, so to sort of piggyback on that, what I was kind of liking was that we do not understand it and it just heads toward the orbs or the people yes. who've interacted with them. Um, it, is beyond, it is beyond humans on Earth. It's beyond the hominids of whatever alien planet. Yeah. Is. It's beyond all of that. It destroys everything that it, you've tampered with technology, you've gone to a place that you're not supposed to go, and where this really horrific nice thing forever... Being that it's just, it's just big pieces of flesh that just that just strewn about everywhere and grows, and, it, and like it pulsates as well. It's just, it's just like, oh, what the fuck is all of this? Um, which is why, when you find an orb, and you click it, and you just pick it up in your hand, you're like, this will be useful. I was like, no! No, that's not how this works. Remember last game? Orbs are supposed to be majorly like big time. A big kisms. deal. Oh, but this one's just part. lying around. The first oh. one you find is just lying around. Like, like to clarify, in the Dark Descent, you do like you you find the six pieces of the orb because he said like the orbs, P shards, Alexander, that they like they mm -hmm. emanate a, an an experience that just like amplifies the torture thing. And once you piece them all together, you put them in the ma the machine, and it like draws the electrical power out of it and it, it allows you to get into the next place, and so it would have been in your inventory. But the problem with that, to me, not being a problem, I mean, is that the shadow's already after you, and the whole game you're trying to run away from the shadow. It keeps catching up with you every time yeah, you complete areas. Like you, you fucked with the orb, you yeah. messed with it, you took it from where it was, and the, the shadow was perfectly content, hiding out wherever it was with that orb or whatever, but, it, but now it's it's been... It almost had like this curse kind of element to it. Maybe yeah. it's a curse of some kind where you've removed the orb from its rightful place, so you are now cursed, and the people you touch are cursed because oh. you took something that wasn't yours. It really classic horror kind of stuff, really mummy vibes. Yeah, you know that we got from Amnesia: The Dark Descent. Oh, and, and then this one is just an energy source. Well, you just—it's in a room, and you're just like, "Ooh, yeah. an orb!" It's like, "No, no, 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 no!" no. Yeah, it's just like I, sitting I, around. I like remember this. That. I don't. That, so I was just like, "Oh, look, it's an energy source." Okay, but it was like, "Oh, that's from the first game." I was like, "Oh." I they make a big deal out of the game. orb in the first game. Let's put I, it that I way. Guess there was energy sources in there as well. I don't know. So no one even in chat noticed it. At least I didn't notice anyone notice. Let me put it that way. So, yeah. Yeah, that's but stupid. <laughs> remember, there are only eight orbs. For all this civilization knows, they don't know that one of them's fucking broken. So there are now seven. We don't, and, and the fact is, I don't think that these are replaceable because there's <laughs> only eight. Like, I, it makes me wonder, is there a backstory where they found the orbs and this is all that they have and they use these? Did someone come... There's so much interesting stuff that could be explored here. Is this oh, just man. a chain of civilizations being built and destroyed? Who knows? Dude, but imagine the fact we that had there's only like there's a story. only eight in existence, and you just find one on a table. Yeah, and and imagine we had a story where all of this is super alien, 
we finally, toward the end of the game, like, understand most of it, and we get context that this civilization was rampaged and destroyed because they reached too far into something that they consider completely alien, being the orbs and the shadow. And, like, how cool it would be that we're looking up at these crazy godlike, you know, impossible to understand civilization, and it was destroyed because they too, you know, reached too far, sort of yeah. shit. Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, and the and the uh, we're next. You could even have a really bleak ending where it's just like this is Earth's fate. It's coming towards Earth, or you have to destroy the portal so that it doesn't get to Earth. It's your only way home, but you have to destroy it because you can't let this thing go to earth because and, and you could present an option where you're like you could fight it we we learn about a way to try and repel it but it's not permanent or something and it's like you could try that you know give, yeah, give but... yourself a bit of a I, we, we could work harder on this what i'm trying to suggest is <laughs> yeah, they, something better they toy around with the idea of an interesting space cosmic horror story here that is just really not given well, a lot of meaningful attention. Let's just like three things off the top of my head. Four things off the top of my head that that really hurt this alien civilization. Number one, they have random oil canisters that just exist in this world. Yes. You can pick up and use uh, your lantern. Yeah. So, you're uh, for those of you who don't know, mechanically, in order to create light, you can carry matches and you can carry a um, a a flashlight, a lantern, essentially electric lantern that uses oil as fuel. Um. Quick tangents on those. The game says you can only carry 10 matches. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> because uh, the reason is because they want to create artificial scarcity and make you feel like matches are valuable when they're all over the place. It they're just for arbitrarily cool. limits you at being able to carry 10, even though matchboxes have way more than 10 matches. But eh, it annoys me. It was one of those, it was one of my, the first points in this game where I rolled my eyes and said, but in Amnesia, The Dark Descent, I could carry as many tinder boxes as I found. Because, of course I would, because this shit's important. Yeah. Um, it makes the resource management much same, more valuable. Same well. for oil, by the way. They didn't cap same your for oil. oil. Yes. Because I actually, you... had to, I actually had a problem throughout the game that I was stacked on matches, and I found, like, yes. another one, another oh. one, another one. I'm assuming, you... at... so we can all agree on that, we were all tripping over resources. Yeah, um, yes. I, only um, yeah. at the end, where for some reason there was no matches to be found anywhere, and I had only one, but I didn't even need them, so... <laughs> I, I started, I mean... even up to the end, I was just lighting shit because I had too many matches. Um, oh, but yeah, in, in addition I mean, to I, finding... I, I use the matches only so I don't have those fucking stupid flashes all the oh, time. Oh, we'll get there. We're not, yeah, I want to save <laughs> we'll that. Get there. We're going to get there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, on this alien, this otherworldly alien planet, that's as far as you know, on the other end of the fucking cosmos, right? You find matches. You find matchboxes full of matches just lying around. Yeah, they didn't have the not fucking... Like, not like they in didn't a specific give a sh place where a portal might be, just in a, in a room. Of They're a just around. Alien. Person they, just lying there. they couldn't even have been fucked to retexture them to be alien matches for whatever reason. No, <laughs> it's just it just Jonathan and Company Everlast matchsticks, and they're the just in these little paper cardboard packs that you just find around lying in the alien world. Rags, you fool! You don't understand. Why would they have alien branded matches? It's not like they have any use in their world, right? Right. Uh, so the reason that there's <laughs> matches in the aliens world is because there are alien torches on the wall that give off blue flame. I hate those fucking things. They ruin so, everything for me. <laughs> like, remember, so remember, so remember, remember how narratively you had the horrific realization that this is an alien world powered by Vitae, right? And all the, the terrible implications that come along with that. You would expect to see Vitae lamps, Vitae lights, everywhere that you go. The idea that you wouldn't power something with Vitae seems ridiculous to me for, if you've gone all this way already. For but no, they, they have, have like, I guess, a bazillion... gas-powered like this, lamps. This, this, what, I just want people to understand, like, the amount that's being produced is incredibly absurd. There's a huge yeah. amount of Vitae in this world. It is a power grid of Vitae. A huge portion of this world is creating the Vitae that powers the civilization and keeps their god alive. <laughs> um, yeah. But you come across bo you know, little bottles of oil and boxes of matches so that you can 
power your flashlight and you can light blue torches on the wall. Um, okay, I guess. And they have it. Okay, what? Okay, sure. Whatever. That's dumb. Okay. Um, very stupid. But as a uh, as metal alluded to a moment ago, and I'm in the same boat as he is. Um, I was I found that I was lighting most of the light sources I could come across was not actually because I was spookied and I wanted light. It was because this game introduces a new fear mechanic. I, 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 um, don't, I want that to be the, the, the end of this conversation. <laughs> like that's OK. The, all right. All right. We can we, do that. I'll just do that at the end. we've I've, I've got so many other things I want to say before that. that that's like it. my that might actually be my main criticism. And I want to I want to talk about how disappointed I am that it exists. <laughs> so before we, I suppose, get there, I just want to I just want to make sure we've made it clear, like going into an alien. So is, you're in a uh, d d like a dusty cave like stuff and you just find some torches here and there to light up like you do in Amnesia. Side note. You cannot pick up the torch that you first find in the game that looks like you could pick yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah. It looks so obviously like you could pick it up, but you yeah, can't. Yeah, it's just a wooden torch that burns forever, and you're it's... you're literally in a dark cave. But to clarify, it's where not you find it. like like amnesia ones that are on the walls, and they like they look as if they're just attached. This one, I'm gonna try and find a visual for it because it looks uh... in, in a gamey way like ah, this is something I pick up. A stick. That's just Probably on a rock, my... essentially. No, uh, I'm I, suggesting I, I not just the way it looks. I'm, I'm suggesting that, like, it's presented to you unlike many of the other torches in the game which are attached to the walls. This one is, like, on the floor and standing up. I've nearly... Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got it. Okay. Oh, my God, I clicked right at it. Oh, here, <laughs> let me give you a picture. Yeah, no, give, me, give, it, give us a sec, people listening. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember saying, like, oh, man, that would be helpful to be, you know, to be picked up. Yeah, there it oh, is. Oh yeah, you got it. Um, so okay, I just got there as well. This torch, it's like it just to me as and this isn't some kind of like definitive. You just got fucked up criticism by me, the 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 big brain gamer. I'm just like the way it looks, looks as if you'd light it and then you get a hand symbol and you could pick it up. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you might be saying like, well, you can't. So what's the big deal? And I'm like, why the fuck can't you? <laughs> yeah, why, why wouldn't why wouldn't you pick this you, one up? Like you're you in a have, cave, everything is dark as shit. Yeah, <laughs> you have both an extremely good in-universe and out-of-universe reason to take this torch with you, with you, and to cherish it wherever you go. Yeah, and to give it a name and to raise it as your own son. <laughs> but <laughs> it does not allow you to take this torch with you because artificial restrictions are spooky. Um, so yeah, that would be obviously the same throughout the whole game. I guess we should quickly mention the way matches work. And I need to listen to my playthrough again, because I've forgotten the specific criticism I had, but I'm pretty sure it is that the way they've made these matches work makes me, whenever I'm in a location and I light a match, to quickly dart around and look for any other possible light-ups, almost. Yes. Which um, doesn't help the scare factor. It makes it, it it's a little gamey, bit silly. too gamey at yeah. that point. Um, so you press R, you light a match, you strike the match, and you light a match. The light, the, the match lasts for 8, 10 seconds, something like that. And uh, in that period of 8 to 10 seconds, you can't sprint because it'll go out, but you could light as many lightable light sources that are around you. Lamps, lanterns, candles, the whole nine yards. Why can't you take the candle with you? Good question. Don't ask. Um, but it, it does not allow you uh, to uh, use the match. After that, it burns off. But what this does is, as Mahler said, you light it and you light one thing and then you still got a lit match and you still got eight or so seconds. You, so you start looking around for all the things that you could possibly light because that's only a gameplay advantage before your match runs out because you might as well, which instantly gives it puts you in this video game mindset. Especially yeah. when you're lighting things like candles in little carry handles that you could take with you, but you don't or just lanterns hanging around that you could take with you even though these lights last indefinitely very much a video gamey thing that they don't explain in game and they i know when they made this they were like hey so before you'd have one tinderbox per one light and that's your exchange and that's your resource but now we made it kind of cool 
one match equals as many things as you are able to light as a player. It's almost like a mini game. And on on the service, you kind of like oh, this. That sounds kind of yeah, neat. That's actually, how a match works, I guess. Yeah. And and but but like I found in mechanics, it's just it came across as almost silly. And and like rather than me focusing on my area and my light sources, I was just like, ooh, what else can I do? This 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 sweet sweet. I did. I got three that time, which as long as if I get if I get like, like if I get a four, I'm like, oh, I'm doing great. If I get a two, I'm like, eh, it's all right. Three is like, yeah, three's a safe number. I did three. Uh, I made use of my my match. And then it's like. Wait, aren't I supposed to be lighting things up, like, because I need it to stay safe, or I desperately need this as a safe uh, spot, and I should be concerned about resources, rather than this? It distracted me, this mini-game of getting as many hits as I could with each yeah. match. And um, the game has a... It's very, very liberal with its dispensation of elimination. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's... Like, I, I turned that fort into a fucking Christmas tree, man. Yeah. I had so <laughs> many matches. Because I was just like running, I was just, I just find a box and like, well, I guess I'll just use the ones I have and I'd light that's, everything yeah, around. That's how I played it. The, Dude, the amount of times I would pick up a match book and I'd only get one because I was like, I'm full and I don't necessarily need to actually light more stuff up. I'm doing fine. Yeah. So these. Uh, these things. The, 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 While well, we had the whole video, video gamey thing lighting. So you have these little altars, shrines. Shrines. Yeah. And. There's like candle on it and a little oil lamp thingy. And my first race like, oh I'm gonna light it. This checkpoint? I don't know. Like, click click and nothing happened. It's like, huh. I'm so I'm glad just, you brought it up. I yeah. guess I just wasted a match for no so, reason. This creates the issue of a, a portable light source that you can carry with you wherever you go. Oh, but yeah, you just don't. That. Um but also <laughs> Look at that thing. Yeah, you just it's like a thick candle that you could carry with you and a lantern that you could carry with you. But for me, I thought I was overthinking. This was before I realized this game was shit. So <laughs> you early on, you hear legends of this goddess that protects travelers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if this goddess, this god queen from the alien world has come here before or if the portals to Earth are just here. So she makes just trips throughout time that allow many different le like kind of like legends of her being around. I don't know. It's dumb. Uh, but you see these shrines. And so I was thinking, well, oh, all of these shrines, I have the option to light candles and lamps. Mm -hmm. If, if what if I light them all, do I get like a secret ending or does it affect the ending or the narrative? If I like honor this goddess if I, I like, yeah, yeah, like, is this an optional little thing that the game is like, you know, if you show this goddess that you want to keep her shrines holy, she might, you know, she might look with favor at you. No, is apparently the answer is no. <laughs> yeah, um, just, I just thought it was something that you well, could do that would be kind of nifty narratively. So it sounds like we were pretty much on the way, same wavelength. If you go to the first altar, or oh, I think it's the second one I found in the game, I said something along the lines of, hmm. Maybe this is like, if you light all of them, you get some kind of reward, or if maybe you light enough, you get benefits, or not enough, you don't. And then I like looked at my resources. Dialogue. Well, I see you've kept my shrines yeah. holy, person. Yeah. And I, I was the like... The first one you see is like the weird alien figure head behind it in the cave, if I remember correctly. Yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. I looked at my resources, and... When I play resource management games, I get very down to, like, I want to put myself in the absolute best position at all times in case Grass something goes packs. very bad. If, if ever I can spare light, I will, and it's because I know that at some point something could go really bad and I'll need light desperately and I don't want to be left with none. Um, and so, like, I looked at it and I was like, you know what? I don't have enough incentive to believe this will do anything, so I'm going to choose not to. And, like... Uh, you know, I felt kind of bad. I was like, I wish there was something they could, you know, signal to me that this would have any kind of purpose. But I'm going to go ahead and guess it doesn't. And I'm pretty sure it didn't. <laughs> like, it could be yeah. wrong. Yeah, I don't think it did at all. Um, I, but I, I lit all the ones av eventually, I, fairly early Ach on. Because they get. Achievements. Is there an achievement? I'm, I'm checking. That's the only thing I can... There's a good chance that would be it, yeah. Yeah, but I thought there would be, like, a narrative sort of thing. Oh, um, I think it would be great if she, like, gave you sympathy to a significant degree, if you were, like, honoring her altars or some shit. Yeah, like, after you light the fifth one or whatever, like, you see a vision of her or a whisper 
or like something happens maybe as even if it was only visual and purely narrative that would be good and interesting if there was no mechanical benefit whatsoever um like maybe a scar that was always on your hand just isn't there anymore she healed a scar on your hand or something like that but it turns out this isn't actually some supernatural well, i she basically is supernatural but turns mm -hmm. out she's this alien visitor from another planet who just elopes here on occasion throughout time i will say cause... there is a chance that this stuff we don't know uh that would make us feel a little better about any of the things we've been talking about. This is obviously, we all played the game once and we're going from memory. Yeah. Um, in case, of course, that there's some actual thing to these things that we have no idea about and we're talking out of our ass, but like, just going from what I experienced, and I, I don't plan to look very far into this game because I'm so fucking disappointed with it. Yeah, maybe there's a, maybe there's a, a, a ripped up half a page of someone's diary that's hidden underneath a camel somewhere that I didn't find <laughs> that explains that there's actually an elegant solution to all of this. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I wish they would have kept uh, that. Yeah. Cause that's the thing with stories like these. I'm some of the notes were legitimately interesting to read and they were almost exclusively in the alien world, but there is like, hmm. I was worried about missing one. You know, I was, I was exploring, I found almost not for exploration's sake, for the thrill of discovery, but I didn't want to miss any of the like the lore or the backstory. And I was like, the next note that I read might be really useful. And yeah. and because I'd find the memory jars, and most of those were fucking worthless. <laughs> but some of the random scraps of notes could have some really interesting info on it or important stuff to the story. I was like, man, like uh apparently mm. I can't find any achievement for the shrines so i don't know so yeah well hmm. <laughs> like i said i'm willing to believe there may be something that we've missed about them but i mean jesus christ just saying yeah yeah um i guess if we want to because we're kind of on the mechanics of the game um oh well funnily enough we actually tangented away from what i was the reason i wanted to talk about the torches was not to talk about what we talked about but it was to highlight the obvious thing that happened when making this game which is embarrassing and that is you make half of your game in silly desert land you can easily just put torches on the wall and have the player light those up because yeah when people were excavating these caves they put torches on the wall there you go all right fine yeah so when you get to the alien world wait we've got all these mechanics that apply for like a world with torches on the wall what do we do this is alien world it's like the aliens have torches too what yeah. Yeah, they have torches, yeah, torches too. and matches from Earth and, and lamp and, and oil. Obviously, to just roll it back to where we mentioned the oil and matches, you find this shit in the world of the aliens. You literally find pots, you open them, and there are matchbooks inside it. It is like I don't know. With the same how textures anyone... as the Earth matches, just just so that we're very clear, the exact same texture, the exact same matchboxes as you find on Earth. And to be super absurd, if I were, like, playing this and Thomas Grip was sitting next to me and he'd approve of the entire game, and, like, when I opened that pot lid and pick it up, I would look at him and be like, who are you? Like, what have you done with him? This is not something any rational game developer would do. You, you threw... The oil cans are exactly the same as human ones. And if you want to, like, the only argument you have is, like, oh, uh... The alien people, people just threw a bunch of human shit all over the alien world when they got there for some reason. Also, well, that doesn't really make sense, does it? Because you need matches to activate the fucking alien torches. I don't, like, why is that the lighting system? It infuriates so, me that they did this. Let's, let's go back, uh, back a while in video game history to a game called Halo. Whoa. So, Halo, right? You are on an alien world. How do you constantly? He's like, okay. How do you? How are you gonna explain how you could constantly refill your human ammunition on an alien world? It's like, well, uh, you arrive on this alien world on this big spaceship, and it's got all these Marines on it, and the Marines are on the, uh, yeah, they're they're on the Halo Ring World too, and they're scattered around all the place. And so, you know, when you come across dead Marines and things like that, you can refill your ammo there from their stashes. It's like, okay. Um, and all throughout the Halo games, whenever you're on an alien world and you need to refill your human ammo, it is done when you come across, essentially, the dead mar dead Marines. Uh, dead humans who have been there before you and have died, and their weapons are there by their corpses. And this is used as a tried and true method that is often how you refill your human ammo on alien worlds. Um, 
it just goes it just goes to show how years and years ago we solved this issue. We came up with narrative explanations as to how you can get resources, uh, human resources on alien worlds. Um, they didn't do something where there's like a like little V type energy packs that you could pour into the lantern and that works somehow dude if they did a thing where you you your lantern is like when you use v tie um like refills on the alien world but the lamp light becomes blue or whatever like that would have been interesting how v tie is almost like a like a a, a one size fits all magical energy source that gives great energy and great potential, but at a horrific cost, right? And so now you got a blue lantern powered by Vitae. Like, huh, that would have been kind of interesting to use, but no, it's just the same. It's just well, the same. This is the thing. They they let the cat out of the bag. They made it very clear that energy cells are created out of the Vitae, and it's, it's, it's like the power source for fucking every machine on this fucking world. Every time, yeah, you and they don't really do anything this, this, with it other than saying this is what powers this planet essentially, which is, is Vitae. I find that so funny the the idea of Vitae energy packs, like little energizer batteries. Kind of like it would it would give <laughs> Vitae this mystical quality. It would first off, it would show how good Vitae is as an energy source because a part of you wonders, surely, with the cost that it takes to yeah. create Vitae. In terms of the logistics, logistics it takes, and some of the there are interesting notes in this game about that go into how do they harvest Vitae the best. And there's there's a couple, just like maybe literally a couple of notes that were legitimately interesting that I wish they explored more. But um, you with with all the cost and horrific moral issues and the the all the work that's clearly put into a Vitae energy grid, show me how useful it is. You know, how, how, show me that Vitae is so incredibly okay. efficient and useful and safe and appropriate to use as an energy source that it's worth all the trouble, you know? Can you imagine speaking to really a contractor that. in this world where you're like, we've got all these different things going on. It's like, oh, you know the hallways in Sector A, 3, 7, 8, and 6, they're all kind of dark. We need, we need some light up there. Um, what, do you, what do you suggest? And he's like, well, we could build these like sort of stone triangular-ish things oh, that yes, house... Oh, yes, thank you for bringing those up. Um, oh, I'm not even sure if, if we're, you can We make, haven't talked about if, them yet. If, oh, if, we're not, if I'm not making the point you're going to make, you can go right ahead after it. Um, all I was going to say is we'll have that, and then, and then it, 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 what I'm getting at is the concept of trying to explain to one of these fucking aliens, like, you're going to light uh, pieces of tree with other pieces of tree that have red uh, stuff on the ends of them that allow you to strike and light uh, fire, which is probably some of the oldest technology they even are aware of. Yeah, fire. It, be yeah, like, it's, it's blue fire here because it's alien fire. It's very, I mean, very different. You know, I don't even need yeah. to like make this analogy, but it's just kind of funny to think about. If you were building a house... Like, think of how primitive a match yeah, really like, is. Like, think the how primitive is, using you're fire like, as a light source is. Are we getting bulbs? Are we getting like, blah, blah, blah? Are we getting this, 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 that? And then your contract is like, fire, wood. Yeah, You're like what? Um, <laughs> we don't use fire as a light source. Did you even today. see a tree? <laughs> like it's like it the like fire is quaintly primitive to us today to use as a light source. You know, it's efficient yeah. for cooking relatively. It is, but it's mostly we use it as like we don't use like my grandparents' house. Right, they have a fireplace. It, it's gas powered because you know modern world. But, you know, it's 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 one of those things you'd light up, not because you want to stay warm or light up the room. It's because it's just for flavor. Yeah, well, people you know? you, like, use candles for mood rather than for light these days. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, it, it doubles up as light, sure. But, it, like, the main point is, like, candles are neat. They provide a mood. I mean, when, when I think it was Thomas Edison who said, like, this this light bulb will be so cheap and easy to use that only the rich will be able to afford to burn candles anymore. Mm -hmm. Like the the idea that an alien world, for non ceremonious reasons or cultural mm -hmm. reasons, lights their stone palaces up with torches on the wall. Fucking hell! Me. It's like Quake. <laughs> like what the hell? Especially hell's happening? because they have glowing Vitae lamps. Yes, that seem to be quite efficient. 
but no torches. Lazy as fuck. So, um, but when I mentioned stone, you said that you clued into something. So, so, when it comes to the the applicable technology that you're figuring out for yourself in this alien world, some of the puzzles, quote unquote puzzles, are that you have these little pyramid things that you carry around, these little tiny pyramids. And these essentially work as like energy hubs. So you oh, have an energy God, source yeah. center. This is very puzzly. It makes no sense how this would be why their technology. Why the works. fuck would Eddie would have puzzly. this? <laughs> yeah. So weird. So you you have this tiny little pyramid and a room or a zone that will have an energy source. And you use these little portable, you literally carry them around, these little pyramids, power pyramids. And they link with these power sources over short distances and they go through walls and stuff. And this is what you use to get energy to other things. So if you have an unpowered door, you put this pyramid conductor close enough to the door and close enough to the power source and it links them. But yeah, you carry to... these around and you set them on the ground and they, they make no sense at all. It Think makes it as, no um, fucking sense in any universe that this is how they would power their doors and stuff. There you go. So think of it like, oh yeah, I could probably, uh, I'll put it on screen and then I'll, um, I'll explain how it kind of, how you would picture it working in, in IRL. Yeah, so, it, yeah, um, you, you have a power point on your wall and then you plug in a extension cable and extension cable. And then you plug in another thing into that end of the extension cable that leads to your PC, let's say. What this acts as is that system, but no cables. And so you move those major points. So the point on the wall, the point in the middle, and the, then the PC, they can all move around. And as long as you're in range, I'm pretty sure they can go through walls. Um, but as long as you're in range of the thing, it will transfer energy. I do not know exactly how the fuck this works and it is bizarre that this is how it works in the alien world also why aren't these things in conjunction with everything else like why why are the, 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 this just creates more problems in terms of like why matches when you have this this like and why this when you could have anything else uh, yeah and of course like the, i can't believe like our systems make more sense than this you you would you would expect. Oh, but it's so alien though. Look at it. It's so alien and it's spooky. It's like, so how does it weird. Work? But then they present the aliens as people who think, and they have the like <laughs> they've built a civilization, you know. They present but you're like, you're, the aliens as people who think. Across, it's like, like generous rags. Huh? It's generous to say they present the aliens as people who think. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's like. They, they've built this civilization, they have all these rooms, and they have a power no, source, but how it all works is clearly supposed to be a puzzle for the player, and not Absolutely. actually something that exists. Yeah, I mean, I posted it just uh, in the Discord, because yeah. I was in that section of my stream anyways. It's like, why is this practical? Like, what's the point? Like, imagine going to alien engineering school, and then you graduate so that you could use this Fisher-Price toy to power and the yeah, city don't give me this because i know someone will make the smart ass comment it's like uh guys you do realize when you look at like an engineering panel in like a nuclear power plant it will look like this to an alien no no it won't <laughs> no just there no is a, there is a complex proceed like an alien can't walk into a nuclear power plant and start producing energy in 20 minutes Fisher Price is like the perfect way to describe this, honestly. This is like this is Fisher Price's alien technology. Fisher where, Price's nuclear power plant. <laughs> basically, yeah. Where all you gotta do is just, oh look, three glowing symbols match up the like imagine the actual aliens, the adult aliens at their job at this panel. Like well, yeah, because doing stuff with this. If the symbols, let's say, represent um I'm trying to I'm trying to be kind to the game here. Let's say they represent like Core power, core power, side power, um, you know, uh, strenuous power, LXX power, and it's like you got to select the right ones in order to power the particular thing. I would just be like, why is it this? Like, what? Yeah, why is it not just the options that each have their own button for the outcome? Not you have to figure out a puzzle every time you want to change something. Yeah, this is fucking bizarre. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> so yeah, the the puzzles in 
the puzzles in Soma and the Dark Descent, they made sense in the world. They were puzzles not because they were created as puzzles, but they were in-universe just problems to solve. Yeah, just, as simple as you you press a thing and a and a thing starts like to chain it's on chains, a platform is on chains, it's coming down, but it gets kind of jammed. And so you you intuitively see some rocks, and you're like, if I throw the rocks on top of the, the platform, maybe it'll weigh it down so it can come down. And it does. And you're like, that was satisfying. Because that's just a physics puzzle that's, that's you know, calling it a puzzle is, is awkward, but you, you understand, like, it's yeah a thing that's in your way. The, the other one that's uh, just a classic little frictional games one, where it's like, oh, you need to... Um, roll this this winch in order to open a, a, a thing, but there's a this wood that's jammed into the winch. You can uh, pull up a box, stand on it, and pull the thing out. You can throw a box at it to break it. Um, like, like, these are all... It's, it's, it's just real-life shit. It's like, how would you do this in real life? I don't know. And then I said, Somas are a lot more um, in terms of their world, like, just, just, just more suitable. Uh, they're all, like, electrical-related or power-related, because the whole sy system's falling apart. But I can't, like, I can't tell you what the hell they were doing in, uh, in Rebirth. They're just fucking around. They're like, I don't know, we need to have puzzles. It's amnesia. His symbols on a panel that you spin around, like, again, like a Fisher-Price toy. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, sorry. Let me, let me show that one. one. Yeah, the second one, the, the, the second one is probably a better picture. Because this is, like, the premium version of the Fisher-Price toy, because this one spins. Yeah, this is for the, this is for the, the six-year-olds when they get yeah. really smart. Yeah, so, just to, for anybody who didn't play this game and is interested in this conversation and doesn't know what the fuck we're talking about, normally they're, they're static little squares, and you have to find the right selection of three. And then, as many players probably did, you figured out at one point, wait, I can't seem to make the selection, it's not working. And then you realize you can spin the board. So it'll change how the symbols are connect, uh, connected to each other. And you, you just take a step back, like, what the fuck is this? What is happening? It's... Imagine nuclear power plant controls, where you just spin the console <laughs> until it matches. Because remember, like, what? this portal, th this panel here, it's not like a little... Th this is like how you power up an interdimensional portal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, this is, this is some serious shit. This yeah. is argu like On remember this technology is argu if we could do this it would be the most important technological invention in the history of human civilization. And so on one hand this is supposed to be accessible to anyone who needs to use it and therefore it should just be one fucking button and it's on and off. On the other hand it's supposed to be secure to prevent anyone who's not authorized to use it in which case why is it a Fisher Price puzzle? Yeah. Maybe to maybe to complete the retardation of this one specifically, because in oh. order to calibrate it, you have to move this huge pillars with symbols on them. Like imagine, so like you, you know how you know how oh. in the real world we have control rooms. Yes, <laughs> this is it's a big it's it's an important place where you have all, a panel with all of the buttons that you need to do your job because you it makes sense to have them all next to each other with little bitty levers and knobs and things that you could... But what the fuck is this? Yeah, well, like, the guy who invented this, you just want to sit down and be like, what the fuck's up with these obelisks made <sighs> out of stone with the glowing symbols on them? Like, can you just make some buttons so that I could just do this from my office? Or... Yeah. Like, no, no, you yeah, gotta use the thing to turn these big fucking obelisks that light up these certain symbols, and then the symbols have to match. The... Like, what are you doing? Can I have a list of places I can go and just click the buttons? Like, no. No, you just, no, if you... Yeah. The more you think about what this is designed for, the more it baffles you. You're like, yeah. what the fuck are you guys doing? And also, you need to power it up from a floor above somewhere. Was it above or below? I think it was above. Where you put the orb that you this, conveniently this is, found in the alien world. I think this is the top and it goes down to the portal below. Right. Yeah. I think yeah, this so. is the, I think this is the middle. You put the orb on top somewhere, and the portal. The orb goes the in. The orb goes inside the portal, so like the orb goes with you. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, right, right. It's below. You do the. the but you need to. Yeah, the lenses. But it's you need it's to move the lenses below. It's baffling. Yeah, it's tism as fuck. Know. Regardless. Uh, I didn't even notice what I was playing. This is fucking retarded. <laughs> 
So there, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a mess. Um, um, the only if you're going to create an alien world, yeah. then it needs to be alien. There, there can be familiar aspects, like like the buildings. You know, it makes sense that aliens would have buildings that could be similar to ours, with you know yeah. walls for shelter, doors which act through you know the engineering equivalent of a transversal through a wall. You could close very just universally useful things, right? Um, but stuff like this, I was like, man, like it's it's like this was made for children. So, um, yeah. just one additional thing I wanted to say about the matches. Um, so I'm just gonna <clears throat> shove it in before we find another topic because there's just so many left. Even the um, <laughs> the fact Maybe that you're one. limited on ten is a almost so again it'd be like, ooh, does that remind you of the Dark Descent, Soma, or something else? It's like, well, Dark Descent, as we mentioned earlier, you could pick up infinite, so can't be that. Soma, um, your light source was a light on your suit. It was infinite, and it would uh, fuck up or flicker according to when enemies were close by, or when like power, different things could go down. Light management in Soma wasn't as much of a thing, because, again, Soma's not the same as Dark Descent, and that's part of why people didn't like it. They were, they were like, you check out reviews, loads of people like, it's not Dark Descent, it's not as scary as Dark Descent, it's not the same, boo. Um, so it's like, so, so what can you compare it to? It's like, well, back in the day when I did, you know, Dark Descent and Soma, and people were like, why why no talk about Outlast? Outlast is great. I was like, oh, fine, I'll talk about Outlast. I completed the game a few times, and I remember thinking, I don't need to complete it on the hardest difficulty. But then my brain was like, eh, but what if you find more stuff? Like, oftentimes you play a game on its hardest difficulty, you can really, like, it, it pushes it to its limits in terms of how everything works because they mm -hmm. want to make it really hard for you and you'll be able to find just how broken everything can be. And the first thing you realize is, I think on the easiest difficulty you get ten batteries in total possible, and then on the hardest one I believe it's three. I'd have to check it again. And you'd be like, why are they doing that? And it's like, well, to hamper you, and that is it. Like, it's just, it, it's yeah, fucking annoying. Um, it's, it's the shooter equivalent of, oh, you have, you, you're at the next difficulty, enemies have more health. Yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. It's, just, it's, just tweak a number, and then boom. The game is now more difficult, because you just tweaked a number that has no makes no sense in-universe for why it would be more difficult. It's just, enemies just, they take more bullets to kill now. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's more difficult. incredibly fucking disappointing. The frictional games went from a superior system to Outlast, and then they copied Outlast. What the hell are you doing? Like... Oh, if the if the matches were infinite, you could carry as many as you can carry. I actually think this game only improves. I yeah, you just don't give people as many matches. Like, yeah, here's yeah. the thing: you can have something be valuable because it's scarce, without hampering how many you could carry at once. Because again, they're fucking matches. They did they it are with tiny. tinder boxes. And if ever they concluded, you know, that was a mistake, I'd be like, why? Well, you Why? know, a lot of Tell people me. had a lot of tinder boxes by the end. It's like, okay, so reduce the amount in the game. That's all you have to do. Yeah, yeah. You still want to? Because here's the thing: when you ha when you can only carry so much, and you're constantly dropping, you you're, you can't pick up stuff that you find. You are disincentivizing people exploring for more resources because you are limiting the amount that they have. Right. Well, I'll tell you what: there were certain sections where I ended up using like three matches in a row while I was moving through a place. And once I'd done that, like, one time, I was like, I don't want to spend my matches, because I feel like there may be portions where I have to use a lot of them. And so it just, like, put me in a position where I was just like, if I cap out of 10, I guess I cap out of 10. I just, I'll try not to use them still. Because 10 is just not actually that high when you have a couple of sections in a row where you have to use matches and you can't find any to pick up. Mm. And compare that to, I'm holding 23 matches, and uh, I've been finding them pretty regularly. Yeah, I think I'm going to start using them a little bit more liberally now. And this also creates another issue. Um, so the first thing that happens when you start up the game, actually start up playing the game, is you get a message. And the message says, <sighs> this, was the, this is a bigger red flag than I thought it was when I first started playing it. It made me raise a brow at the time, though. Um, it says, don't play this game to win. Yeah. And I was like, I remember that. Oh, huh, that's interesting. And as the game progressed and as I went through the game, the game basically doesn't have a fail state. Um, you can't really lose. Which, by um, the way, is the same as, um, well. So, Dark Descent, when you were hit 
you can you can take one hit and then you hit again and you die and that's dependent on the enemy type as well if you fight the big the the second type of enemy he he can one hit you but uh yeah once you die in dark descent you go back to the previous checkpoint but they'll often uh activate a couple of torches or remove the monster that hit, killed you from roaming it's their way of just being like okay you had some trouble there uh here's some here's some bonuses now go again soma was um one hit, you get knocked to the ground, and then you wake up, and you've got half health. And then if you get hit again, you go back to a checkpoint. Um, and it'll say game over. This game, it, like, rewinds you mm. uh, to the nearest checkpoint. It feels weird. But they try to... But, like, the game still goes on. Like, there's no... Look, there's no game over. Like, there's no... It, you. There's never an incontinuity of character. You're... If you get grabbed by... Oh, by enemies don't hit you anymore. You just get grabbed by them. Oh. And you have to do a quick time event to kick them away. Oh, no, no, or, no, no. But they don't, like, hit you and damage you and you have to run away. Um, but whenever you get grabbed or you go insane or whatever, um, you, you, you have these flashes of spooky images and loud noises no, and no, your no. character's, like, running... What? <laughs> I, I just... I want to avoid that... I want to do all of that in well, one, I think. The running away back to the checkpoints? Um, well, you just said the spooky flashes while you're running? Yeah, I just mentioned it briefly. You, are, you, are you trying to say like it's just a combo of bad? No, I, 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 all, that was, that was the, the beginning and the end of all I was going to mention of them for now. No. Um, because, I was, because we were talking about like <clears throat> game fail states and... The game says don't play to oh, win. Oh, you're talking we about talking the fucking about... I I completely misunderstood. You're talking about the cutscene that plays where it like Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, there's a cutscene yeah. that plays when you when 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 you I... get too afraid or when a monster gets you. I completely forgot you, about and, that. Yeah, you have these little flashes of you running through the area and yeah. then yeah. you just wake um, up somewhere different. I think the way it works algorithm wise. Well, not really algorithm, but um presets or whatever. Let's say there are 50 areas in the game. They seem to have like recorded you like a, like a like a bass player running through an area of each of these fifty, and depending on where you are in the game, they will play the latest three. Um, uh, as if to imply kinda. something about your you've, memory, or I guess they're just like you've you've gone crazy for a moment and you're just blindly running around now, I just, um, which doesn't you... make sense in the world because if you have monsters that are trying to kill you, then they would kill you they well, wouldn't just like spook you and then let you go yeah. so that you could run away and try again that's the thing i'm not even i'm not even clear on what that is trying to tell you i think what they're uh what they're implying or trying to say is you turn into this ghoul state for i don't know x amount of time run around and then go back to that checkpoint i guess yeah, because like your arms get a little bit tizmy for a moment, but yeah. ultimately, I don't think there's a fail state in this game. Yeah. One thing I did notice, though, uh, at the end, you can look in, <clears throat> you can look into like a, a well or something or a fountain, and you can see uh, your your image in there. And I noticed that uh, Maul's face of Tazi was much more fucked up than mine, so I guess he got caught one more time than I did or something. I don't know. Something I got, like that, I, maybe. I got caught but... a few times, yeah. Okay, I'm, yeah. Hold up a second. I just popped in, just curiously. Are you telling me you can't die in this game? I don't I, think. I, I don't I think caught. there's a fail state in this game. Let me yeah. actually Google that. Yeah, because oh, I, got, well, I got caught like a couple of times, but I never died. Um, at one point, actually, the the monster that chased me was gone, and I could just explore freely. Yeah, that right happened there. to me at one point. Well, this is what I want to be cautious about the way I sort of phrase this, right? So. There is no fail state is a criticism that was given to Dark Descent and Soma as well. Um, because But there were fail states. Well, I would argue that there is as much a fail state in the new game as there is in the old ones. Um, it's just, contextually, it's weird. In, um, well, I would... Well, in... In the old games, like, there would be a point where it would be... Like, you would lose. In this game, you, you can't die you just have a little cutscene that has your character running back there's no you know you died you lost it's over yeah. um you failed you have to try again 
it, um, it, it makes it to where you, your character is always alive no well, matter what. Enough, it's just an inconvenience. I'm in relatively the sure that Somers was the one that had the biggest uh, fail state, actually, when most people refer to Soma as like, not having one. So, from memory again, Doctor Sent uh, prison area, let's just say, if you're in the process of grabbing the acid to take it to the door, and you get killed by a gatherer, or brute, I forget specific names, um, it'll probably respawn you in that area, and the portion that you get respawned in will have a couple of torches lit, and they may have despawned the roaming monster that killed you, and you'll probably have the acid, and you can probably go to the door now. Um, and it's... because Frictional was, have, have been on record saying they don't want their players to literally die ever, because they believe that um, dying in horror games will start to affect your um, your ability to be scared. Um, which so, is true, which considering does. that, yeah. that like Outlast and Outlast 2 like suffers horribly for the high amount of deaths that you have. The thing the about, because um, I think Soma nails it, right? It's, it's like you, you get knocked over and your screen's all fucky because you're a robot that's just been abused and like cracked screen or, or whatever else and things are glitching. Yeah, you got a limp. And you yep. need to put your hand in the, in the shloompy gloompy to get the wow to like heal the pieces that have, you know, broken. But if you get hit twice then you go back to the last save. like, And it's a game over screen, from what I remember. It's like a legit, mm -hmm. like, you fucked up, you're going back. Um, this game, so the, the one I remember vividly was, you're in, like, a hallway, and you realize you need to power a cell. You go forward, and you see someone is in, like, a weird torture chambery sort of situation, and there's a monster in there. So, there's other criticisms for this. I'm going to have to go through this so part. many. Yeah, so I, I go in, and... Um, I don't realize what I'm supposed to do fast enough, and um, I, I I can't remember exactly how I died, but I got hit enough that I died uh, by the creature, and so I fall over. Weird shit happens on my screen. Do they play the um the jump scare sounds when you when you? Yeah, get they do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought they did. Um, fuck that shit, man. So anyway, Which, they, yeah, they play that, and and I I remember being like in a state of I, I'm pretty sure I was disillusioned by that point. And like it shows me running and then it spawns me back in that hallway just before I saw him for the first time and I was like, so really, you just annoyed me. <laughs> like you just <laughs> moved me a couple meters. Like, yeah. okay. So this is what I mean. I would need to play the game more to be able to finalize exactly what is seriously wrong with their punishment system. But that, what I just described should probably give you an idea. Like that, that is, what is that? That's just bullshit. So it's not explicitly saying game over, but it sort of is. It's just a little more well, veiled, kind of like a fake they, loading screen in an elevator. They veil it in a way that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like they, there's not a specific screen where you have to say continue, well, yes or no. Sure. It, they they want to try and keep it like you didn't fail in a narrative in a way that doesn't make sense narratively. Yeah, I still don't okay. really get what what is happening in that. I don't really understand what they're trying to say is happening. You. You fell over, you, you, you monged out, or you went feral, and then you ran back and forward, I don't know. And then you were normal again, where you kind of were at the beginning of the section. I was like, I just, I don't know exactly what they're trying to say with that one. Yeah. It's weird. It's really weird. And unnecessary. It, yeah, it's, and, yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um... The uh, can we talk about uh, the maze? Yeah, yes, yeah, we can maze. talk. We, I'd love to talk about the maze more. So, I kind of, I, I did talk about this on our on our latest EFAP in relation to when we're recording this. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go first on this because I want to do the comparison again. So, in my head, the maze, I'm gonna, we're just gonna call it that for the fuck of it, reminds me of the server room. I don't know if it's called that in Soma and the choir in uh, in Amnesia now. The Choir and Amnesia, since that is chronologically the first one you would have played if you played all of these on release. Um, it's a really big room. You've got to get to, I believe, three different doors in this really big room. There's loads of fog, and um, there's, a, there's an enemy in here. And it's really fucking spooky. And I remember it's when I was looking spooky. into sort of analyzing it, that they said they were very much inspired by, I believe it's a Silent Hill 2 opening. It's a world that's filled with fog and... Uh, yeah, that makes sense. It adds to the creep factor. And I'm pretty sure the fog in that game wasn't because that was necessarily what they wanted to do. It was to do with draw distance or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> but it ended up 
being something of quite the fucking scare, because you're just like in this... As you move through in Amnesia, you can hear the noises from the monster, and you're not... Um, it's, it's not easy to understand exactly where it is. And you know that you need to get to three doors in this big place, and you start turning around to avoid it, and you see a pillar, you see a pillar behind you, and you're like, fuck, where am I? Where even was the entrance? Like, this is getting kind of... Yeah, you know, it was a good, good segment. Really, really good. The cool <laughs> thing about it was that in narrative, uh, the, the torture rooms have little, like, uh, you know, like, gramophone opening things that people are screaming in those rooms, and it travels through the little pipes into the holding cells where other prisoners are, and, and there's a little note you can find from Alexander where I'm pretty sure he's like, this just adds to the insane levels of fear that prison they can hear the other people screaming ahead of time for them getting tortured the same way. Like, oh, this is just a really good system. However, as a result of that, you know that if you follow the pipes above you, you'll it'll lead you into the torture rooms. So it's like a really clever little like way to try and find a way out of this fog-ridden room and this monster that's chasing you around. It's a really big mm -hmm. highlight of the game as far as I'm concerned. It was really well put together. Then you have Soma with the server room, and it's a very simple setup. You've got a room filled with little server blocks. They act almost as like uh, obstacles that are all... Like, think of a graveyard and all of the gravestones are things you can't move into. You have to move around them. And they're in a nice... Uh, as they would be in a server room, a, a blocked sort of uh, something by something thing. There's a creature in there. Now your objective is to get to the other side of the room from where you entered, press a button that activates like a reset, and once it's uh, resetting over 30 seconds, you press it again, and then you leave. Now, the problem is... You can carefully avoid the monster. When you press that button, it makes enough noise that the monster will be like, what the fuck is that? And he'll come toward it. You know you've got to press that button again in 30 seconds, but you also know the monster's coming. It creates a really stressful moment, because now yeah. you've got to fish him around, maybe throw some things at the right time. Because if you, if you take longer than like 30 seconds after it's done, it'll reset again. So you've got to do it right. It's really scary, nice and dark. You do it, you run the fuck out of there, and you're safe. The maze... In this one, and I can just describe my, my experience, then you guys can go, I guess. So you enter this place with these walls that sort of open and close. At first it seems like there's no real system to it. You're like, huh, what is this? Is it kind of open yeah. and closing? And eventually you sort of realize there are platforms. If you stand on them or if you place things on them, it'll either or open or close pressure the wall. Plates yeah. On the, yeah, yeah it's, it's like a big grid and um, there's pillars everywhere. And the pillars are, the, the way that it's a maze, is that you could see through all the pillars, but they're, they've all got, like, metal walls connecting them sometimes. That's the maze portion of it. <laughs> and so I was like, this is, like, visually kind of pretty interesting. I, I don't know, I'm not entirely I, sure what's yeah. going on here. I was, I, was, I was interested in trying to kind of figure it out. I was looking around. And then it was like, boom, there's a creature in here. I remember it, it gave a tool tip of stay crouched and you can avoid the thing. And I was like, oh gosh, there's, a, there's an enemy in here Thanks, with me. I haven't figured out that yet by this point well, in the game. Yeah, kind of awkward. Because... Um, I don't know if you... Because I, I did praise um, both Soma and Amnesia for that in terms of super early this game. Direction. Like, early game, they're like, oh, by the way, crouch to avoid enemies. You haven't met one yet? And you're like, fuck. The... Yeah, like, why are you telling me this now? Is yeah. this relevant? Meanwhile, oh this... How many encounters is this when you get to the maze? It's like more well, than halfway through, I right? I mean, there's not... Yeah, there's... And there's not really that... Yeah. Many encount actual encounters here. Um, yeah, that's actually something we should probably bring up. <laughs> it's yeah. like there's like five or something. It's really dull, by the way. Uh, yeah, it's really dull. Um, so he spawns, and 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 you're like, oh shit, and like I, um, kind of accidentally sort of walked up to him, and then he grabbed me, and he was like, oh my god, you're Tarsi, and he drops you, and he's like, ah, and sort of runs off. I remember saying mm -hmm. on stream, I'm like, I don't know what's really happening right now. He's like afraid of me. Am I the monster? And then I was like, but but he's like clearly antagonistic, and now he's telling me to run again. Like, what? And when he put his face up into the screen, I suppose this is a whole other topic, we'll try and get to it. Let's just say I wasn't scared, I was more like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. it, yeah, it was not, so after we played this game a bit, we, we exchanged a lot of the concept art and screenshots from Soma. Um, the, Soma the, the spook, the spook design in Amnesia Rebirth is really dull and uninspired. Yes. They they look silly. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, graphically, you can't handle what you're trying to do, I'm afraid. Um, in terms of really making them look scary, so you need to keep them in the dark. And for some reason, they do the Outlast thing. They grab you and fill your fucking screen with their face. 
Why are you doing Outlast things? Stop doing Outlast things. <laughs> um, and so anyway, he does that, and and I was like, okay, I, I fuck, I gotta, I guess I gotta figure out how to operate this maze, and I kept like getting the sense that he was getting closer and closer, so I just started running rather than trying to figure out what I was doing. Same. If you watch my playthrough, it's fucking awkward. I run past him many times. I get stuck inside him for a moment where I'm looking around. He can like he keeps missing me. I don't, I don't know why because he's clearly like swiping for me, and I think I take damage twice or something. But I'm just like, what the fuck's happening? And then it's like, oh, maybe go to the to where he like came out. And I was like, that probably makes sense. I like run toward it, and then it's like locked off, and so I just go in a circle, bump into him again. And I'm like, oh, sorry, just trying to find yeah, and then it's turn around. It's fine find another thing keep running and like oh I, I i did it and i jump through and it's then he's like damn you i'll get you Blarg, you uh yeah come and, back here i'll get you and like i think that was the moment where i was like who made this game because it wasn't frictional like this is something's wrong something's very very wrong because the first two uh, encounters i just described from amnesia and soma they really impressed me this maze one left me, like, deflated. I was like, what the hell did I just even do? I was just running around. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So go nuts, both of you. That's my input. <laughs> I The maze yeah. part was tedious and dull, and there didn't seem to be much rhyme or reason to it. It was just wander around. I It, it was a very unappealing part of the game. It wasn't... It just wasn't... It, it felt, I think the way that he put it was pretty good. It's like, this didn't seem like frictional at all. It feel it felt like it could be a nifty concept, especially with how they explain it in universe and sort of what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, it was so dull and unfun to go through. Um, there was, I know in that section for me, I just ran. I just ran around eventually, and I found the exit it doesn't seem like an actual maze really i i think if you actually charted the path of where you could go it was like a vein channel that you would follow um i feel like you didn't actually you wouldn't actually go through like 80 percent of the actual maze mm. um i i i i it was a, it annoyed me that the pressure plates would activate these like wall things that would pop up that were that would prevent you from moving through, even though there's clearly enough room for you to pass through them. Um, I, 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 I guess I don't know what else I can add to it other than it's just a worse version of all the stuff that came before it. Uninspired. Um, yeah, and and there's like that that weird cut scene in there was just like, ugh. Like I said, it threw me off that he was like afraid of me, and then he was also my my enemy to run away from. I was just thrown by that. I was like, I, 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 oh. I, I think like it was that he wasn't afraid of you. I think surprised. it was that the little just last piece surprised. of humanity left in him yeah. was like, oh wait, I know you. Uh, and then he drops it, but he can't <laughs> resist any longer after that. It, like, yeah, yeah like go, it can make sense. Up. It just threw me completely. I was I was so confused in terms of just yeah, what I was supposed to be absorbing. Yeah, because he keeps saying like. He keeps saying, no, get away from me, get away from me, don't don't come close, that sort of thing, over yeah. and over when you hear him. But, um... Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not gonna uh, put all the blame on the game for that one, I just, it just, it was bad timing, because, like, that, that threw me for a loop, and I couldn't take any of it the way that it probably was meant to be, but on top mm -hmm. of that, I still think mechanically it is fucking lame compared to the previous two iterations. Yeah, I was, just, yeah. I was just going through it, it's like, oh, I'm going this way, this way. It's like, oh, there's a monster! Then, yeah, as I already mentioned with the whole cutscene thingy, uh, it's like, oh, it's you. And it's like, okay. Oh, he's also, maybe it's guess, frustrating. Like, I guess he's not my enemy anymore. And then I walk in his generator, like, no, go away. Blah. Were there and two? He's, and he's saying, what? Were there two critter creatures in there? No, was he one? No. Was there another one? Was he the no, only no, one? No, it was only him. Was only okay, him. I just got disoriented because it's you, a maze, and mazes are really fun, guys. You, you go <laughs> kind of towards him. I was like, oh, I was looking actually at my stream. Well, I'm looking, it's like, I got like a little flash there. I was like, fuck off, flash. Like, I didn't even get scared. <laughs> well, well, yeah, so, yeah. We're we'll getting, uh, we're getting so closer and closer to that. I'm running out of notes, so we're, we're, we're yeah. getting there. Yeah, um, I yeah, guess her. I was walking for, uh, through it, and then after the whole cutscene appeared, I was like, okay, I guess I have to get out of this maze. And I'm walking, and I'm walking, it's like, and at some point I realized I have no fucking idea where I need to go. 
Um, by the way, yeah, I think you... I found the exit by accident because Same. there wasn't really much of an indication as to where you're supposed to go. Just yeah. progress through I the maze. Going, and I was like, oh, uh, there's like. I, I don't know if you've changed something, but you sound like you're clipping your microphone a lot more now than you were. Oh yeah, you really? do sound a whole lot louder and worse. Like, uh, yeah, you're on. capping it out a little. I actually Just... had to turn you down earlier, and you're, oh, now you're even louder. <laughs> is this is this better? Keep talking. I think yeah, so. I think so. Is this better? I yes, it is. I might have moved the knob while I was moving my headphones. Sorry. Yeah, that sounds better. Um, yeah, and I, at some point I was like, "Where the fuck am I going? Like, I don't, I mean, know where I'm going." It's like the doors are closing. That's and sort was, of the whole game, though. Yeah. That, <laughs> well, so it's very like I use this word, and then I feel like I'm going to have to really explain myself. It feels super linear. And, yes. and you might be like, what do you mean? There's like portals everywhere, there's all kinds of different worlds, there's all kinds of different puzzles at the same time, there's like hub worlds that have different branching patterns. I was like, yeah, but I so never that's really... that's the dressing. Yeah, I never really felt like I was free. It just felt like, like, what's next, game? I'll press the buttons, I guess. Yeah, um, so there's also, um, there's more reliance on, there's certainly way more reliance on cutscenes in this game. They even have a little bit of animation for some stuff that you do. Oh, one small um, note about that. Uh, yeah. Matches are infinite if you have a cutscene happening. Uh, like, like yes. I, if you light a match and then a memory plays or whatever, your match doesn't move in terms of its, um, like, it doesn't burn anything at all, but it stays as light and you can still move. I found that really fucking weird. Yeah, funny so. enough, on the opposite side, if you don't have a match on and you're reading something in the dark, your meter goes up. So I had, one, I had one time where I was reading a note without a match in my hand, and it was in the dark, and I put away the note, and I go insane and walk around. Oh, that's fucked and get, up. And, and got reset. I, I brought this up, I, like, I, I can't remember if it was on the previous stream or not, or if it was interested in a call, but... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, other games, but, like, they dropped notes in places that were safe to read them, rather than in dark places, so you automatically are like, oh, I picked up a note, I read, and it's like, ah, you should have had a match lit so that you don't go insane. It's like, wait, why are you doing this this way? Why can't you just put notes in safe places, like static yeah. light sources? Of course players want to read the note when they pick it up. You know, they don't think, I'm going to pick this up, walk to somewhere safe, and then read yeah, it. Yeah, go to my inventory, it's fucking go to where the in go where this note is cataloged yeah. in my inventory. Why Why did you just do it the same but worse? They keep doing it. Yeah, and, and the other funny part about that same scene, Tassi walked around in her crazed ghoul maniac cutscene, I guess, and... <laughs> I, I I probably you probably go to like three four places and then I I woke I, I woke up again in the next room where I just came from, so I don't know where the fuck <laughs> she was walking to, but I was like in the oh. next room where I just came from. So in case anybody doesn't quite follow what we're talking about, right? So you can get hit by the enemies and it'll trigger that thing we were talking about in terms of an, a, a fail state, quote unquote. Um, also, if you get too much fear, it'll do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you picture your fear as a 100% thing and it chips down for how long you're in darkness, if it hits zero, it, you get that same fail state that all it does is move you to a different room. <laughs> and you're like, okay, thank you. Yeah, you would think that the consequences of failure for what the in-game scenario is would be more dire than an annoyance, but you'd be mistaken. And yeah, you might be thinking to yourselves, wait a minute, Fear can kill you now? You're like, yeah, in the Dark Descent, the worst fear can do is cripple you for a moment. You, f you, in a way that almost seems like it's trying to replicate real life, you get so afraid that you curl up and fall over and you're just terrified. You're stunned with fear until if you're able to get closer to a light source or you're able to roll it out, you finally get back up. And the reason why that mechanic works so well is because if it triggers while you're in a hallway because you just haven't been keeping things lit up, you'll probably be alright. But if it got triggered because you were in a dark place, you were looking at the monster that's looking for you, which is something they want to discourage because the monsters don't look particularly amazing in 2010's Amnesia, um, so it's a double win, then you might fall over while it's already noticed you. You cannot run away now, and you're going to die. Like That's like the logic, is that you can get killed if you're not careful about managing your fear. It is a resource. Um, meanwhile, in this game, they're just like, ah, fuck it, it'll just reset you. You're like, okay... And the reset's annoying, so why even bother? Yeah, the consequences of failure are annoyance, not death. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, so, and I'm, I guess I'm trying to think of because we want to end this on with with the big annoyance. But well, I, I've I'm still got a bit more. <laughs> oh, um, go for it! Go for it! Go for it! So, do you remember earlier when I was saying about that door I opened, and then it turned out I had gone onto the narrative and I'd lost my chance to look at the other doors? Yeah, um, you had like a really extreme version of that that I didn't even well, know was possible. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's leading into some other stuff, and again, if we find some tangents, I'm willing to go on them, it's fine, because this is, this is going to be one of the things where I was almost blown away that Frictional had made this. Um, so, at that point, I was like, damn, I'm going to try and search those other two pathways or whatever that I, that I spotted earlier, I hope, anyway. Um, but anyway, I'll just continue on. And so, I'm gathering up the notes, I'm looking around, and then I discover that, like, ooh, this thing needs a power source, and um, I... <laughs> I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt because this is not where I'm trying to highlight the problem, but I remember Tassi being like, oh, that looks like a transport. Like, we need to power that up. And I just remember oh, being like, cage, it, yeah. it does? I, I remember looking at it and being like, that's a, okay. <laughs> like, I just... Yeah, I, I assumed it was some transportation system cage thingy, maybe? But, like, <clears throat> she... Because once you... You don't have time to really think about what it is because once you walk into that room, she tells you what it is. It's like, yeah. oh... How the fuck do you, you, you said you, you're saying more about this than the fucking interdimensional portals. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and so you figure out pretty quickly. Oh, and I think before you get even to that, you find the room where it's like you need to get into the chair and you need to it needs to in, inject some V tie to do to do something. But in order to do that, you need a power cell. And I remember looking at the system and thinking, well, wait, this the only way to do that is to make like to torture someone. I, I played Dr. Sen. I was like, I don't even know that I necessarily want to do that. But then I thought, in conjunction with my disappointment in the game, I wonder if I'll even have a choice. And uh, I remember someone um, w w in chat was, because I think I responded to them, they were like, uh, do you need to torture this person in order to progress? Uh, you know, like Soma with uh, Carl Semkin. We'll go, I'm going to bring that up a little bit later, actually, because we're going to get there, but there's another tangent that's coming, and I already know what it's going to be, and you guys are probably going to want to jump on it, too. So, yeah, so I was like, I need a power source to power up that transport then, but I also at some point need to find a, f a fuel cell for that system. I'm assuming I need to do both of these things. I was a little bit unsure of exactly what was going on. So you move into the room, you look around, you eventually find the power source. It's sitting on a table. Do you remember it's like a dining table or some shit? It's just... uh, yes, it's like behind, behind some cloths. Uh, yeah, like yeah you, a... there's a cloth separate yeah. in the two rooms, and it's just the power... Dare I, I call it the extension cable? About, I don't know. Yeah. Like a chill area for like it's, people. Yeah, I don't know. It's really odd. It was like pl uh, light plant. Uh, there was. A it was definitely the safe place that everything. you could hang out in. Yeah. Yeah. And the alien extension cable was in there, and I was just like, "This is weird." Whatever. Picked it up, and I was like, "I need to take it back to that room." And then, um, boom, a spooky Dementor spawns. And I remember the moment it did, I was kind of like jazzed. I was like, "Ooh, this is like a new thing," and and, and it looks like it's an alien. First question that popped in my head though was like, what's he? Is he like? Is he like a robot or is he? He's like a because the civilization's yeah, dead. Yeah, what is he? Not what's necessarily he like I'm not looking to find out in terms of law what he is. I just mean like what is his? Is he? <laughs> just picture. It, let's just pretend for a second he's just an alien security guard. I'd be like, dude, there are bigger problems going on right now than looking at whether or not I'm in here. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> the, things yeah. are falling the fuck apart. So it was like, is he a drone? I guess. But then that's. I don't know. Let's just say though that, that like I got spooked. I was like, "Ooh, I, I don't want to die." So I, I like dropped the power cell and tried to move around the room. And I thought naturally, whichever room he just came out of is probably my goal. Like that, that, that that's typically how they do it. And then I was like, "Um, I, I'm gonna have to go back because I need that power cell." And I, th I think Mel, you were watching me at that point, right? Like, because I remember uh, uh, spotting you in chat. Yes, um, yes, it. Does. It was shortly after I finished it, probably. No, wait, you 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 played the next day, I think, right? Um, well, I, I'm pretty sure I did that sequence in one. Either way, uh, I was like, I gotta go back, and like, I remember it, it grabbed me, and it was like QTEs to escape, and I was like, ugh, all right. Um, and I think we've referenced it already, but before you hit maximum fear, you can use QTEs to escape. It's it's really yeah. shit. Wiggle the mouse and hit WASD. Wiggle. <laughs> What can, like, I don't know, like, what the hell? <laughs> Just, what are we doing, Frictional? What the fuck are we doing? QTEs to escape being captured by a monster from your own fuck-up. It's just weird. But of course, um, 
you have a limit on how many times you can do it, I guess. And 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 I think the second time I was caught, I tried it, and he, he grabbed me, and it was over. And I was like, oh. And then it just pushed me back to the room before it, and I was like, okay. And uh, I went in, and I was like, right, I'm pretty sure I got the hang of this. I know to just stay... Like, I'm almost interested on less a spook level and more of a mechanical level. Finally, yeah. a challenge. There's a creature running around in here. There's an object in this room. I need to grab that object and get out of this room without getting captured by the alien who has a cone spotlight. It's like, that is engagement to me. <laughs> like, at least there's something to do. Yeah, there's to, something happening. Ooh, boy. To my shock horror, he was despawned. And so I was like, oh. Like, I, and, and I think I said oh, on my damn, stream... Oh, damn, really? Yeah. You and, get and, grabbed uh, once and he's despawned? And, and, I, and I said on my stream, I was like, okay, yeah, like, I mean... I, I wouldn't have minded having a second chance. <laughs> like, you yeah. don't have to baby me. Uh, uh, sad face. Um, oh well. You know, and picked up the power thing and, and started up the transport. And so before I carry on with what I'm getting to with that little story, those enemies suck. Yeah, they suck. They do suck. <laughs> I found them to be very inconsistent with how they spotted you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oof. Can I highlight... That they can't capture, you, they can't catch you hiding in the transport because for some reason there are panels on the transport. Yeah. What the fuck's that about? They like they are very clearly searching the transport in case there's anyone in there, but they have the power to teleport like through little balls of light. It's like just go inside yeah. it and check once. Even two, two of them at that point. Yeah, just, but yeah. they they like invalids. They're just watching this move past. They're like, oh my god. Hopefully nobody's hiding behind these paddles that we installed on the transport for no reason. <laughs> what an absurd fucking moment. I was just like, why Yeah, is I didn't know if that was something you were so... I, I just went along with it and hid from them, and I was like, oh, I guess that was good enough. All right, I guess they didn't see me. And, yeah. and again, like, if they're robot droid things... Like, I, I can... I can I, I'm just even more confused, but... The idea that these are, like, flesh and blood alien creatures that are just, like... Running well, the they, normal yeah. daily routine where their entire civilization is over, except for well, all of the fuel cells. With they, <laughs> they said that like the shadow would transform them into these wraith-like creatures, and I'm like, I guess this is them. But, but like, how? They, they, what? They seem to be a part of the system, you know? Like, yeah, not... like I, I thought originally at first they might be like scanning technology to see if it was working or something, like they were maintenance. I don't. I thought that their whole purpose was security guards. Yeah, me too. I think that those were like the denizens of this world. Some of them got like corrupted by the shadow because they got turned in. One of the notes refers to I watched my kinsmen, like the smartest of us, get turned into these like the, these these living nightmares. And so I assume that was what they were supposed to be. I assumed. I mean, we the three of us played it pooling our knowledge here. Yeah. What are they? <laughs> I just I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh either way mechanically they are adept. And yes. uh, it's just another yeah. it's another hitch in the in 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 the in the story that is the shitty aliens and the retarded backward ass pieces of technology and operations. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I was I just, I just randomly saw that on my stream where I was clicking through. Why Why is that one person just sitting there with the so, stick in his mouth? I don't remember this is if that made sense or not. I'm glad you brought this up because I almost forgot about it because this was a, a really disappointing thing. So this is, I think, on your second foray into the alien world. Yes. This yes, is yes. really the part where you're in the civilization part of the alien civilization because mm -hmm. the first time you're in the quote-unquote wilderness. Um. So here... Apparently, this guy is really important in the backstory. This isn't just some alien guy. This is, this is, I think this is Kita, uh, Tamuka's uh, assistant. And um, he um, is like essentially like a traitor. Like he's trying to, this guy here is apparently, he's trying to kill the God Queen with the red flesh. He's because he's, he's next to a laboratory. And, mm -hmm. um, that that has all the little the the red flesh in it and the shadow stuff and these boxes and bins and things and there's clearly it's like a la an alien laboratory, and he said, the Vitae will will keep you alive, 
So he took a little for himself to keep him on life support. And this is a section where you need to get two energy cells that are powered by Vitae in order to open a door, essentially, to get to, to progress. And one of them you find just lying around. Um, and the other one is what's keeping him on life support here. And you don't really know much about him other than a little note that's close to him. Don't really know too much about him. You don't know a lot of the context. So you can't really make a judgment as to whether he should live or die. Um, I spent a lot, because this is a frictional game and this happens relatively early in the game, I went looking around for a way to, to get a different cell because the easy one, the, the easy solution is you take the cell from his life support, he dies, but you get your cell, you can progress through the game. That's easy. However, I was thinking, this is frictional. I bet there's another cell around here somewhere that's difficult to acquire or take some ingenuity to get that mm -hmm. I can use instead of killing this guy because you don't know the context a lot of a lot of the stuff on this alien world yet. And I spent a lot of time looking around for an alternative method that this, so that this guy could live so I wouldn't have to take the cell. But I, it, you're supposed to, I guess. And what's interesting is that even because he's got this tube that's blue where the Vitae is going from the machine to the cell to like his mask. Mm. You could take the cell out of the life support and the blue disappears from the tube. And when it disappears up to his mask, he starts to choke and die. You could put the cell back into the life support system and it will, as long as he doesn't finally die from choking long enough, it will repower him and he'll be alive. I'm like, oh, OK, that's a nice, nifty little touch. But no, you're supposed to kill him here. There's no real. Like, which you would know, be disappointing for anybody who played so much. <laughs> Yeah, which really, really disappointed me because uh, it lacks the punch that the other parts of Soma did because this is just some alien dude on some other world that you don't know anything about, really. Um, and I was like, oh, that's disappointing. It's like, okay, so you just so he, he's got to die. Um, also, your character doesn't really have anything to say about it. No, like, you just killed I, this alien. You I just killed this so, alien. So and she basically says nothing about it. Knowing all of what Rags just said, right, keep that in mind when, when I describe. So my experience was I misunderstood. <laughs> I was like, yeah. when I was playing it, I thought that it was, like, I, I literally read it backwards. I thought that this was one of the Vitae torture systems in which it was making him get tortured and the connector was, was basically drawing it out of him and into the cell. And so I was like, hmm, if I take the cell, it'll stop the torture. So this is a win-win, and I did, and then he just like went and, and stopped moving, and I was like, um, <laughs> I, was like I, I'm not, I, I don't know if, hmm, and then I turned around and I was like, there's another cell, I, I guess I'll take, that's my two cells, alright then, I, I was unsure of what just happened. Now in, in the perfect world, it would, it, you know, Rags would be telling me like, yeah, you should have paid more attention and you would have understood there was a really important choice to make because there were three cells in total. But, but that's I couldn't not... find a third cell. Yeah, I don't well, think there was a third cell. That's what I'm getting at. Is like I didn't read the situation the way I was obviously supposed to. But if I had, I would have been really disappointed. Well, yeah, because like the only difference is you have to kill him and you feel bad and you have to kill him and it's okay. But there's but it, not in like a deep moral sense. Yeah, you're just like, like oh. I, I was. I spent a lot of time looking around every nook and cranny and backtracking and trying to fidget with the cells and even try to find a way if there was a way to power one of the cells in some way through one of the machines because i was like okay this game is going to reward me if i take the hard more difficult longer route but spare this guy's life all, all tasi has to say is fuck that's that's it is it? Is that all she says? Yeah, I just checked. She kills oh. an alien and all she has to say, oh, but she'll talk to her fucking unborn baby. 80% of her dialogue is going, shush, little one, it'll be okay. <laughs> or some stupid bullshit that you already know. Yeah, but because... really impactful stuff, like her murdering somebody. They're like, ah, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Because, no, uh, no comment. I was standing here waiting for something to happen. It's like, like, like a little monologue or something. And so I was just like, fuck. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, this, um, um, it's really disappointing. Um, yeah, so, to, to, because that, that sort of, like, is about just power cell choices and stuff, so I was bringing that, um, extension cable back, knowing that 
duple dingus has been despawned, so I was just like, yeah, just bringing it back. And it powered up um, the transport, quote unquote, and I was like, all right. And I realized that by doing that, it powered the door that closed behind me. And I was like, woohoo! That's, um, I can go back and check those other places now, because that door is open. Yay. And as I was moving toward where I wanted to go, um, Tarsi said, should I leave without having found some sort of cure? And I was like, wait. Oh, I'm I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this backwards, apparently. Oh, like, that's what happened with you. Okay. And, and I was like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to find the fuel cell, and there's a, there's a choice I can make. And my stupid monkey brain was like, <laughs> Hey, the transport's powered up now. Maybe there's a fuel cell in it that I can use to power that machine. And and just I was just curious about what the sort of what what the lay of the land is here. Where are my options and where are the doors and what what are all the power blah blah blah. blah. And so I was just curious. I was like what is in this transport? Closed automatically and sent me to the next area. And I was like, "Oh, yeah. fuck." And then uh, it was like you. I think I got an achievement, the like the the you know the altruist or something. And I was like, mm -hmm. fuck. And then I was figuring it out in the stream. I was like, so had I been able to explore everything other than the place I fucking started with out of curiosity, I would have discovered the option. And I and people were saying to load an old save, and I was like, I probably would have decided to spare the dude. Like if I if I had a blatant choice to make because of, uh, I'm not even. I'll be honest with you guys. If they said, like, what do you prefer, torture a random person or um, or have yourself not be cured? I'd be like, I really don't care about me. <laughs> like, just... Yeah, that's the thing. I just kind of, I did the torture, but mostly just because I wanted something interesting to do. Like, I was really at that point. I just wanted something interesting to happen and to do. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted just something to happen mechanically. Um so yeah, I I went through the whole process and it was a little interesting. You had to you know, lick, put a few things together and put put a couple things like that and yeah, I I almost like, managed okay, to skip an entire <laughs> section without even having realized that's what was happening yeah. outside of a random piece of commentary from the character that didn't I, match my experience whatsoever. <laughs> so did I, you not I, get I, the blue lady appearing to you, pointing to the to the bed and said, you know, like, oh no, uh, so know, I, I knew that was a part of my goal. Like I said, I was oh, looking okay. for the fuel cell as well as the power thing, but I was looking to go and check the rooms that I had missed because I went through a quest room, you know, and I, I yeah, don't even know the what they were anymore. Just closes automatically. Well, yeah, so to get to those things I wanted to look at, I had to walk past the transport, and that's when she said that. And I was like, uh, I guess the transport will take me to a new area. I didn't realize that walking into it activated. I thought I had to like press a button or some shit. Well, yeah, it, that was the na I it, once I walked in, I started looking for a button. Then it paused and automatically closed and everything. I was like, wait, how do I do this? No, I gotta press a button, right? That's and that, and like that just to me it just seems like a bad move because like I, like I said, I was expecting to find like a little enginey thing with a panel. Maybe I open it up and there's a little fuel cell in there, and I'd be like, ah, mm -hmm. I can take this one out and use it on the person. And of course, that's wrong. That's not exactly. That's, that's not at all what they were doing. But like, it's perfectly reasonable for me to curiously check, and they yeah. they have it set so that I can skip the entire section by accident. And it's like, guys. For me, it was. I thought I had to do it. I, I thought. I just thought I had to do it. I didn't even. I think a part of me thought like... that too, because it was the blue chick who was telling you to do it. So I thought it was an essential part of the story because the yeah. apparition was saying you need to do this. I love how. It just, it didn't work for us. <laughs> like, what they were trying to do just seemed to not work for any of us. But something else is confusing, because I, I was going to the dude multiple times uh, just to see if, if he, he says anything, or Tassi has anything to say. Then she, at one point she just says, uh, I don't know how to help you, I need to get out of here. And I need to get out of here. So I was like, oh, I guess that's, I just have to do it. Yeah. It's like, it's Let nothing... us compare <laughs> to Soma, where you find a robot, and this is, is a guy speaking to you, and he's thoroughly convinced he's human, he's just trapped under something, and he needs you to find help for him. And then you pull a lever, and he starts screaming in pain, and he's like, please don't do that again. Mm -hmm. But you understand that you need to do that in order to progress. And so if you look around, you'll find an alternative that says, do not do this one, and you're like, hmm. So, there's an appeal to, like, your your sense of, of, of don't cause this creature pain, 
versus this other this other lever, and you're like, a lot of, a lot of people I I think can even miss this choice. It can happen. I think you, a lot of people struggle to understand what the hell's even happening to the guy when they pull the lever. They're like, I, I, is is he real? Is he suffering? And, and that's why I'm kind of like happy with it in terms of just it's one of the earlier choices and it's introducing a lot of stuff to you. But a lot of people tend to feel guilty when they pull the lever and they get what they want done and they come back to him and you can't unpull it. He's just permanently screaming. And it just makes you feel like, oh god, what have I done? Um, but if you understand the situation really well, you cause yourself a lot more trouble, but you don't put him in a perpetual state of torment. And that's a really cool decision to have to make. This game, like, I skipped the moral quandary by accident. I don't even know <laughs> how you can fuck that up. Yeah, it was... Yeah, for me, I, I, I just kind of wanted... The, the part of me that was like, oh, I want to have something interesting happen in this game at this point basically overrid any sense of oh do i even need to do this i was just i needed stimulation i don't care if it makes me a horrible person i i was totally out of the game like with soma oh, yeah, i, I was I mean. engaged 100 percent. with this i was like these these are just pixels on a screen it doesn't matter i hate me i hate everybody i want to finish this game i want to move on yeah i put like all the little spiky things and all the attachments that are in there it's like oh yeah i've got to fucking poke the shit out of it i don't care do something gro cruel <laughs> also they cheap out like, they don't even show it super into yeah the thing just goes down and you hear it's like, <laughs> like yeah cool yeah he just whines behind a door and you're like oh well okay that's fucking lame i want right. to see some torture so i, I got bad by the way i got one more note outside of the main one so mm -hmm. and, it, and it is when i First encountered the big spookers, the 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 flinkle flanks, the longmans who 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 look look just weird. Um, I I remember like thinking like, here we are then, you know, we're finally doing the thing. And it's like you're in a room that seems to be like maybe sort of like the shape of an eight, and he's on the other end, you're on the beginning end, and so there's room to be able to run around places, and you got to get to the opposite end. It's like all right, standard stuff. You move through, and you you can avoid him pretty easily. But the next room. There's a bit of a trick to it in that I think they they set it up so that you think you can escape through like a little hole, but the hole like caves in, and then it gets activated. And I saw your part of this playthrough, Mel. Um, mm -hmm. Tassi says something like, "It can smell me." Oh yeah, which which yeah. destroys the whole game. <laughs> like... I'm glad you brought that up because oh. it's also not true mechanically, not even a little. Are bit. you talking about the cistern area? Um, it's, it's, a, I think it's just before you get to that area, but it's just, it's, it's one of the first major encounters, I, I believe, in the game for the, um, the Longoids, whatever they are. Yeah, and the, uh, the ghoul? Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, not, so is it in so, the fort? Sorry, yeah, it's after the <sighs> fort, but before the cistern, I believe. It's like the connecting portion of that. Okay, I, I think I know what you're talking about, yeah, where, um, um and yeah. yeah, all right, after you fall down the tank, yeah. So, she says that, and it's funny because I don't even know that I registered that on my playthrough. It was only when I watched Metal that I was like, they can smell you? What do you mean? Yeah. What? No, they can't smell, because that means that they would always find you. Like, you can't say that. Yeah, and mechanically you throw something somewhere and they go there, so the smell does not matter was, at all. Yeah, this part really annoyed me because I was trying to figure out how it fucking found me after I ran so far away and crouched behind a, in a dark corner that was far away from it. Yeah, um, so, like, Mel, you try to grab something and throw it, meanwhile I, and this was something that I, it can happen in Dark Descent, and I was hoping that a decade later they may have figured out just better ways to run horror games at this point, but, you know, he was coming around, I was, I was crouched in the corner and I was like, I think he's gonna spot me, I think it's gonna happen, he turned and looked at me and, like, the things are happening, and I was like, well, I've got no choice, I'm just gonna try and run past him, tank the hit, and just, you know, go through the hole, and then he picked me up, I was like, oh shit, is it like an insta-kill? And then it's like, press the buttons, and I did, and then you, you kick him. And I was just like, what? I, I, this feels so weird, look, what, what, what am I doing? And then it's like, all right, you, but you can run again, and he's a little bit disabled. I was like, I guess I run past him, because he's still kind of in my way, and then and I kept running. And then I enter a new area, and I think it's, there's another roaming creature, and I was like, I, I guess I just keep running. I'm just gonna just find a place to go. And like, it ends with a, a little hole, and that's the entrance to the first like sort of portion of the cistern. And, and I was running and running, and I crouched and went in there, and the music was still kind of playing, but then, you know, the, the, the cries of the enemy start to, like, get quieter. 
And because I'm such a cynical fuck, I was like, I turned around and I was like, can you even chase me in here? Like, you should be able to, because these are the literal fucking holes they use to move around the world. And mm -hmm. I was like, you should be able to chase me in here and it should be scary. And he was gone. I was like, where'd you go, buddy? And I actually got out, and you can you can see this in my stream. I'm like, where'd he go? What's going on? He was right on my tail, now he's just gone. And then the whole room that acts as a sort of like fun little encounter system where there are things to find but of course you're risking your um your time in the area and your light to find these things so do you really want to i was like i guess this whole area is free now because he's despawned and i'm safe because if ever he pops up i can just run to that little hole that he can't get into for no reason and that was true but luckily i didn't have wow. to use that because he was gone forever he never respawned i could search the whole place free and i was like this is this is some this is some earlier than 2010 shit, man. This is some mediocre fucking design. Yeah. And I like that they tried to tout this as like, oh, we're going to be reinventing the horror genre again. It's like, oh yeah, fuck that. This is a total regression for this company. Again, if this released in 2010 and Amnesia the Dark Descent released in 2020, I'd have been like, yeah, they definitely upgraded. <laughs> like, mechanically. It's weird, this game seems super dated. Yep. So that shit pulls me right out in any horror game when I can manipulate it that easily after one test. I'm just like, does this work this way? Oh, it does. Cool. And like I said, this one gets even worse, like, sort of uh, points against it because these creatures, their whole scare factor is you find little holes in the walls and it's like, these are what they're using to get around. They could get to you at any moment. Nope. They're nope. just Not there to false spook you, I guess. Yeah, it's, just, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. The enemy encounters suck in the game. Hmm. And so, unless you Hold guys up, have anything else... Hold up, let me else. use the blue real quick. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Let me get into it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Such a shame. I like the idea that, like, Tassi purposefully went back to the plane herself, I guess, in yeah. her seat, and dropped her book in the thing in front of her for some reason. And she took a memory erasing potion for some reason. Do we, do we know why that happened? Why she went to the airplane? No, no idea. No, why she took the memory erasing potion. Wait, did she? Is that a thing? Well, yeah, she's got amnesia. That's the whole thing. I mean, yeah, but we don't know why. <laughs> Is, are um, we settled on that? I thought I thought we were going to be kind and say that she took the amnesia potion rather than she simply oh, has amnesia. Oh, are we talking about why she how she has amnesia? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> She's just, I don't know how why she doesn't remember things. I don't remember how she well, got she started off on the plane. And can I, I bring don't know. up? You have to attach the handle of the door, which means when she came back in, she closed it and then broke it off. Apparently. And then she gave herself forget me everything potion and then sat in her seat and dropped her notebook in front of herself in a little pouch. Like, why any of this? I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't know why the game is called Rebirth. <laughs> I don't know how you have amnesia. <laughs> Just come on. Like, I'm legit, I have no so, idea why this game is named what it is. This notebook, it's the same one we've had, it has to be the same one since we first got our first run through, right? So why aren't there like a shit ton of pictures in there from your I, initial I adventure? Who fucking knows? She would have been drawing shit, right? She draws shit all fucking time. <laughs> she draws shit, she kind of remembers she draws shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's dumb. That's really dumb. Um, well, there is something we haven't really talked about. So, there's a mechanic in this game that relating to your pregnancy. Oh, right. One, I, just, I'm just, surprised we haven't talked about that just yet. Just one last thing before, because it, it's kind of related to that whole narrative thing. Assuming it was her choice to go to the airplane, if you remember, she's like possibly minutes from finding um, Salim alive. Yeah. Yeah. So... If she really cared about him, <laughs> she just she just didn't go to the airplane. Instead, went even to the cave. She might have gotten to him in time. 
Why did... You know what I mean? There's just so many... This is the kind of stuff where I know there's probably someone out there listening who's like, oh my god, they didn't pick up the blah 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 blah, and if it explains yeah, I, it all, just, fine. Yeah. But like... Literally. We have no idea why she has amnesia. I have no idea why. Well, no we just, why. How. I feel like we just raised like nine amnesia. different questions that just... It's all so fucking bullshit. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so I think this will be... We're going to address fear. And uh, if you want to go first, Rags, with that, that, that point about um, the thing. Um, okay, so this game, narratively, is heavily centered around the idea that you're pregnant and you're going to have a baby and an alien god queen from another planet wants your baby. Mm -hmm. um, it is as dumb as it sounds. <laughs> so, <laughs> in other games, your fear was diminished by... Uh, I'll use fear and insanity interchangeably here. Uh, they are they are mechanically the same, uh, for the most part. Mm -hmm. So, to make yourself less afraid in other games, you would stand in the light, like in in the Dark Descent. You'd stand in the light. Being in the light would restore your sanity, it would lessen your fear. You would be returned to normal. And you know, in this game, it's the same way. I was going to say, what's neat uh, about that, just just as a quick aside, is yeah, that um, it. the it's a pretty common fear to be in complete darkness, and so. Not only is it mechanically beneficial, but when you're playing a game in a dark room that's very dark and you light up a torch or you hold up your lantern, you feel safer because you can see things. So not only is it like an in-game mechanic that you have to keep track of, usually, I'm not saying this is for everybody, but usually the player will actually feel safer and less afraid when they have more light and they can see more things. So it's a really great standard little balance. I wonder why you, I'm bringing this up, do you think? Huh. So, yeah, uh, in that sense, as you stand in the light, your sanity increases, your fear decreases. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, however, this game, it uses the narrative of you being pregnant. <clears throat> the, the primary function of this, other than being a fucking constant annoyance that you have to press X and check on your baby, is that whenever you're in darkness and you're getting too scared, you can hold down X and you'll kneel and you'll rub your pregnant belly and it will essentially be a safety button that you can use to prevent yourself from succumbing to your fear at any point. No, not at any point. It's uh, only mean... when there's like a blue outline on your screen. Yes, yeah, when the baby kicks or something, right? Yeah, no, you, something you, could hold, you could hold down X and uh, your fear will subside. Um, I, I found that it didn't always work, and, and it does seem to be really? after it... Um... A little blue line does like pop up on the bottom of the screen. Because I noticed those, but whenever I used it, it would, like, I I've never failed to have it not save me. Um, it would always diminish my fear whenever I like the sounds and everything would go away. Hmm. It's not very good that we're all not even one hundred percent on exactly yeah, that way. Because I actually, <laughs> I actually had, had that mechanic multiple times when I was completely safe. Anyways, it's like, oh, uh, guess I get more dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you could have full, you know, fear <clears throat> levels, or, or rather, zero fear amounts in you, and it would be like you can now use your baby to avoid fear. You're like, uh, I'm good, really. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to. Um, and it, I, I guess it's just, it does the same thing for us, just to different degrees, but it essentially acts as a safety mechanism to yes. prevent you from going insane. Uh, that you can use at any time. Um. <laughs> It functions in the same way as like anti anti insanity potion, and it refills over time. Yeah. Um, so what this also does is that your pregnancy is something that your baby's gonna kick all the time, and you gotta press X, and you you say useless dialogue to it. Oh, little one. And it's really oh. really annoying. Oh, little one, we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be okay, little one. That's basically all you say is like, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna get through this. I'm doing this for you, little one. And that's that. Really, re really repetitious. And it creates really annoying scenarios in which you're like, oh boy, I'm I'm getting the message that I'm feared right now, which we're we're, we're on the cusp of addressing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm in light, and it's not quite going mm -hmm. away very fast. Better press X to baby. It is a bizarre experience, and every time I kept doing it, I I just felt weird. And um, there was even a point where I like stopped doing it and was dying from fear or whatever. And my chat were like, "You're not rubbing your baby enough." And I was like, "Ugh." 
<laughs> it is a, a really <laughs> tedious mechanic. It is dull. It is boring. It's just it unsuitable. Is just, I'm sorry. It's, it's just... very unsuitable. Oh, did we talk about um, the laudanum? I never used mine. Me neither. Neither did I. I didn't know what it's for. Uh, but uh, if I recall correctly, in the beginning of the game, you chuck a whole bottle of that of that shit right after you wake up, right? Do I remember I think, that correctly? I'm pretty sure. I think so. Yeah. And later in the Just fortress, when you when you're in the uh, uh, that room where that one soldier trapped himself with a grenade. Yeah. Oh, uh, Rags has got a story that, about that one. That's, oh. That's, that's where the uh, that's where you find the bottle of laudanum, laudanum, whatever. Laudanum. Yeah, that one, and the note that says, uh, "Oh, this is the 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 medicine. Uh, don't drink it when you're pregnant." And my first thought was like, "We down the whole bottle of that in the beginning of the game. That baby is toast." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you just chug that bottle of it, and I'm like, "Oh shit, fuck yeah. no!" Oh uh, yeah, poisons in the dosage, I guess, but whatever. Um, uh, funnily enough, I uh, when I was going through the endings of the game, and uh, when I teleported, I was like, "I mean, the baby's out. Might as well chuck the bottle of laudanum now. It didn't do anything, as far as I can tell. Maybe it's like a thing that helps you against fear. Maybe. But, uh, Why is there and... only one? Yeah, yeah you only get the I'm one thinking. you start out with. Um... <laughs> Because I was thinking maybe I can give it to someone at some point, like when I'm in this in the city with the other ones and something. But it's the same with the with the ring you can take from Salim and the bear. You just carry them around, I guess, until you give the bear to the baby at the end. Yeah, I have, I have no idea what it does. Um, the okay, so in rebirth, laudanum decreases Tazi's level of fear and is even more scarce than in previous games with only three bottles that can be found throughout the game. Oh, so yeah, I never found okay. them. Um, found the one. I never found them either, only the one. Yeah, I never found them. Apparently, it decreases your fear. I never needed to use it, yeah, why so I just kept it with me. The mechanics I think do not I even... support this. Yeah, I. I forgot that I had it, and a part of me, I think if at one point I asked myself if it was a story, a quest item, yeah. that I would use in a cutscene or something later. So, yeah. Um, um, do you hmm. want to tell... Well, I'll, I'll do mine first, right, of the grenade room, because I'm pretty sure the way I did it was the way it was supposed to work. Um, I think so. So, I saw the grenade room, and I was confused for a little bit because I was trying to figure it out, and I was like, oh, I gotta go outside and get in. And then, um, since it's a locked door, I'll have to disengage the grenade thing, and I can probably unlock it with this guy's key. And then I, get, I look around the whole area, don't find a key. I'm getting a little confused, you can see it on my stream, like, hmm, I'm not sure how this door's gonna open then. I had trouble I was, if they could do. <laughs> I was looking around, and I was just like, um, well, and then I look outside, and I'm like, the platform's destroyed that I got here on, and I was like, so it's, that's, the, that's a clear signal to me that I'm not supposed to use that then. It's like, it's gotta be this door. And I... I honestly can't even remember now, because I'm starting to question my own history, but I was like, either I decided I would set off the grenade, or I set it off by accident, and while, like, the moment I did, I was like, oh, maybe this will blow the door open, better run away, I hope I don't die. And it did. And I was like, well, that's the puzzle, I guess. <laughs> it's like, I didn't even feel like I had activated the grenade, but yeah, whatever. I was just like, this was a weird experience, but I guess I completed it. Wait, you, I, blew, I, up, you blew up the door? Yeah. I yeah. What used, did you do, Metal? I, I got a key. Wait, where the fuck did you get the key? Where the fuck did you get a key? <laughs> there, <laughs> I, it took me a while, but uh, there's another soldier on the side. Yeah, I, I searched the fuck out of him. It's in his left hand. He's holding No it. way! <laughs> I didn't it was yeah. not. I'll, 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 I'll grab <laughs> I mean, I believe you, but... Like, I searched the fuck out of that room. I looked at the soldier. I scanned... He did... I could not find the key because that was my first instinct was like, oh, these guys have got the key. One of these guys has the key on it. So I studied them meticulously. Yeah. I think the second time I only saw it, uh, I need to find the clip. But uh, yeah, I had trouble finding it, but I was like, there's no other way. I can't find any other way. There must be a key here somewhere, I guess. Uh, yeah, I was sure it would be a key too, but I was like, oh, I guess the idea is I actually do set off the grenade. It blew the door open. I was like, cool. 
Didn't and nothing happened to feel... you? Well, I ran to the other side of the room and I, I think I got damaged a little bit and that was about it. Um, oh yeah, when I mentioned, you can actually get damaged in this game when you fall off things, but it doesn't actually do anything. Yeah, so, I, so. I assumed that it wasn't even actually damaging your health, it was just like a indicator, indicator that, yeah. yeah, that you'd been damaged but not in any mechanically relevant way. Um, because it's either basically pass or fail. There's no real middle ground, uh, essentially. Which is why the laudanum confused me. Because I knew what it was in the other game, but I didn't know what its purpose was here. Mm -hmm. And indeed, the purpose is indeed different. Laudanum used to restore your health. Now it, I guess, decreases your fear. But there's only three of them in the entire game. But standing in the light decreases your fear. So you're like, I, why would I use laudanum? Why? Uh. <laughs> so um, oh, yeah, so no. all of our cage... Yeah, go ahead. Also, I got uh, <laughs> I got stuck completely in the fortress, like in a wall once. Oh, and, you did? Uh, oh, I yeah. noticed an in yeah. I I noticed uh, once an enemy got stuck, like spinning around in the <laughs> air, and once an enemy was just like frozen in place, like in a weird animation glitch. Think, so I yeah, the game is a little well. buggy. No buggy. And <laughs> I didn't know if it did saves in between. So it was a bit scary. It's like, I just played for three hours. It's all lost. And then I think Emi wasn't just like, just try to save and reload. It's like, oh yeah, it's probably a checkpoint system. That makes sense. And I reloaded. <laughs> We're right back. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. And then I went to the loadings and it did like check the quick saves by itself. I was like, thank fuck. So mm -hmm. I only lost like 20 minutes, but man. I got I got scared. Did I do the fucking that was the scariest thing, thing in the game? Thinking that your progress was lost and you have to do it again. Yeah. So to be fair, this game, when if you play it through a second time, you'll fucking breeze through it. You can just run past everything. No yeah, thinking. yeah, I would say so too. It's um it's shockingly easy to just run past uh, some of these encounters and just breeze through the game. Wait, did I do um, this? How so, are we, we, we've been talking about this cage room. Well, wait, one last thing about it, my experience yeah. with it. I just watched my playthrough because I was curious about me doing it. I seem to take like a decent amount of damage, but as you guys know, it just sort of it just recovers. So I was like, yeah, okay. it doesn't really mean anything. Um, but take a note. So I activate the grenade. I run across the other side of the room. Blows up. Whoa! Screen's all funky. I take some damage. Look at the comment from Tassie. Uh, oh. That's like, so. That's not what I'd be saying. That's some <laughs> fucking. That's some fourth wall breaking shit, man. <laughs> God, come on! You've got to be more careful than this. It's like, motherfucker! Uh, do you know? Do you not know what you just did? <laughs> I guess she's referring to herself. She's like, "Gosh, I've just got to be more careful than this." Like, so why did you say it like that? She's judging me, you see, for pulling the grenade. <laughs> when I felt like I'd tried everything. I didn't I honestly didn't give that guy that Mel got the key from it good enough search, apparently. I, I, I sort of looked over I him. swear he was I searched the fuck out of both of those bodies. Even afterwards, I looked at him through the other side of the bars when I escaped. And I was I don't know, I I don't know if it was a glitch, but I searched I was even telling Mahler about this when we first talked about the cage before we had beaten the game. But I was like, I looked everywhere all of those guards because i assumed that they'd have it and i could not find it i love how we um, we we all completed a different way yeah. oh yeah so so what i did was um yeah i i didn't open the front door uh because clearly it's rigged i got in the normal way through the side window Ooh, sorry. and um so what i did was i thought the game was glitched getting out of that room I had spent ages looking for a key, looking for a clue, looking for a crevice, a lever, um, a cracked wall, a, a beam or a bar or a hook or something that I could use to get out of that room. The idea that the grenade would blow, off, blow the door off its hinges didn't even occur to me because that's not how grenades work. <laughs> so it didn't even occur to me to fuck around with a grenade because oh. that makes no logical sense i was i was looking at me doing it i'm pretty sure that wasn't my intention i'm holding the trigger mechanism if you will and i'm holding it in such a way that i don't think it was reasonable for me to assume that it would have triggered the grenade i was holding it like a little bit above the dude and i remember i think i was just holding it like thinking about what this room is trying to tell me and then it like made a click sound and then my character's like oh no and i was like oh shit <laughs> 
So, like, what I guess I'm saying is, if you had asked me in the moment, do you think activating that grenade would blow the door open? I would probably have been like, I guess only from a game mechanic standpoint, maybe. Yeah, because all um, I would have imagined it do, because because it would have just like thrown shrapnel everywhere. It wouldn't have blown the 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 locked metal door off of its hinges, especially because it's 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 their iron bar, so the energy would just pass through the door. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it didn't even occur to me. Think about that when the thing blew up. I was probably like, oh yeah, that makes sense, gamey wise. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but what I had to do is I I went outside. I think I got a little. I I, I got a uh, achievement for it, but not how you're supposed to. So the way that you get in is there's this platform outside yeah. that you jump through. That's how I got out too. Um, if you <laughs> open the the wooden shutter all the way and you sort of like I knew I was not doing the game's intended way. I thought it was bugged. In fact, I save save quit and I reloaded. And then I learned that it puts you exactly back where you save, no checkpoint. Because mm -hmm. um, I thought it was, I thought the game was glitched. I thought there was supposed to be a key, and it just wasn't popping up for some reason, or something had bugged it, or it had a collision error and flew off into the game geometry someplace. Um, but I, I, I kind of squeezed myself. I got myself on a little bitty wooden beam. That's the very tip where, you're, where I knew you were not supposed to really stand, and I was able to jump around the the door and get in the way I came. Um, but yeah, that room was three different experiences with that room. And two of them were basically <laughs> like one was semi an accident. One was me thinking the room was glitched, not seeing the key in his hand, which I swear to God it was not there. Cause I searched <laughs> those bodies so carefully. And um, yeah, it's yeah, I, I was getting frustrated. I was like legitimately getting frustrated. So just just to see if I understood that right, you basically opened this door to the left. I stood on the beam on the right there, on the right. <laughs> and I opened that right. door up as wide as it could go, and I and I jumped <laughs> and I, I like turned myself in the air and went through the door. Yeah, that's just, how I escaped. That's a gaming see, moment like, right there. What that we're was describing. Unlike many of the cool puzzles in Amnesia, where you highlight all the different cool, interesting, and physically, physically accurate ways to defeat the puzzle, rather, we're like, how did you exploit the puzzle? <laughs> like, but yeah, I think, the, I think the key is actually pretty hard to spot. Like, it's really dark. Well, I was desperate with looking, uh, searching, especially the guy in the chair. Oh yeah, me too. I was I, looking I, I, everywhere, checking all of his little pockets, looking at the textures that were covering him. I was breaking all the pots in the room. I was looking behind that. Yeah, med I was medical first aid thing uh, on top of the shelf uh, or the cupboard. Oh, they never explained the uh, why there's um, uh, canopic jars, Egyptian canopic jars, mm. all over the place. Um, they never, they never get into that. They never explain that. They're just Egyptian imagery Ain't and cool. Egyptian gut jars that just. They're just around because mm. you find uh, in, I think in that room, uh, the cage room is where you find the first one behind the altar. And. Um, yeah. Oh, also, um, cube thingies uh, in that cage room, which are apparently oh, from yeah. the alien world, because you see yes. them everywhere on the alien world. I don't know. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, I don't know how the swap happened because this is a fort and everything, but. I don't know how they got there, um, but uh, I guess this reminds me. I didn't even know how that one ghoul wrecked everything in there because those ghouls are not invincible. You get uh, yeah. He, uh, what's what's her face? Uh, Yasmin. She just get fucking shot by. by yeah, she gets shot yeah. by a pistol and she's fucking dead. All these soldiers with guns and training, they're just so here. I was I you you bring this up. I was just what I was about to ask. Is yeah. the ghoul someone who got changed, or is that an own separate monster? That's a good question. Um, I'm I'm not sure how what actually really happened for it because they're, they're like all fucking. Well, they're, spo they're supposed to be jinn, right? That's like they're. Um... Yeah, that's how they're explained in like the Earth lore of what they could be, and I'm and so I'm. My question is: Is that actually an Earth monster, like a, a like a real like a a ghoul a jinn? 
that you just was... happen to stumble across that's totally irrelevant to the rest of the story. I thought they were going to go the direction of actually having uh, Wendigos, as, as, as they're called, the things that you turn into it when you cannibalize someone else. Like, there's mm. a horrible like folklore tale thing, like when you when you eat your fellow companions, you'll eventually go yeah, the, feral um... and turn into Yeah, because in real life you have Kuru, because the... Yeah, if you the uh, the prions and stuff in human flesh, they don't mix well with your brain. It's called it's the laughing sickness. In fact, it's very creepy. And, um, and the way they look, I was like, oh, they kind of remind me of the look of a lot of Wendigos in, in, in whatever. Well, they reminded me of the feeders from Dead Space Three, who hmm. who turned that way because they ate human flesh that was infected by the. By yeah, the I remember those. So, by the way, like the only somewhat creepy point of that entire game. Um, uh, but like I I don't because I don't think that it's a real person who got because the reason that you are turning and other people are turning is because the God Queen alien like cursed you and is doing this to you infected you with something somehow. Um, so I guess it was I guess it was in the fountain water is what they said it was. Um, I don't know how she did it no. or if it's actual magic or something. Um, like how she's able to appear to you from across dimensions in a vision. I don't know if that's also supposed to be magic, but I legit don't know if the whole first monster of the game essentially is just totally a coincidental actual monster that you just happen to run into. Yeah, I don't know. I'll because if it, was, if it was one of your guys turning, then how did all the people, how did all the soldiers die? Yeah. If I'll it was the soldiers... If you go by the memories, you you get that that monster is already there when you appear in this uh, when you get to the fortress the first time. Yeah, and and the soldiers are like drawing straws to kill themselves and stuff mm -hmm. because they don't want the because it's going to be a horrific death. Um, the um, uh, like I I assumed that it was just a monster who happened to have attacked the fort because if it was someone <laughs> turning, there would have been notes about it and they would have noticed someone changing over time. Well, yeah. They would have locked yeah. them up. It's, yeah. it's a weird one. Um, and, and again, like we're highlighting so many gaps in the game and I know that someone out there is like, ah, you didn't read enough. And I'll just be like, could it? but like this many gaps for three players, by the way, who are invested in reading every note. Yeah. It's, uh, um, it's a little bit worrying. So I guess if I go to the wiki, um, so... Oh, yeah, they might uh, know the answer. <laughs> um, oh, there's just a funny thing that happened to me while I was playing. I'd never realized I already picked up the saltpeter. So I went all the way back. Because I was, oh, there's this whole drawer that says saltpeter on it. It's like, it's oh, obviously <laughs> there. I was searching and searching, like, where the fuck is it? And I was like looking at my inventory, I was like, oh, I guess I picked it up. Oops. <laughs> I am. Um, uh, it uh, shows funny. It just first off, it says ghouls or harvesters. So I guess they're the same thing. Um, yeah, are okay. the first enemies encountered in Amnesia Rebirth attacking Tazi Trianon at any chance they get? Like no, not quite. No, that's not true not really. at all. They just let you walk, like because there are scripted events in the fort where you're running from them and stuff. Where and, and plus when they're teasing the entrance of it. Where it could clearly attack you and it just doesn't. It's fucking around. Um, it's trolling. It, you. it is fucking around with you. It is because they're very quick and nimble, um, and they're trying to hunt you down, and they know you're there. They just don't like, um, like they just don't attack you because they're trying to spook you. Um, whereas the monsters and the other ones are, you know, behave like monsters. And also, it says the job of the harvester is to extract pain and suffering from humans, which they then deposit into devices that ultimately procure Vitae. How? Yeah, I thought they had those extra machines. They eat but... people. Because, like, like they, 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 they're, they're flesh eaters. They eat people. If they're supposed to extract fear and suffering, then, like, how come they kill you? What, what are they extracting? Because Vitae is a thing. It's not a concept. It's a thing. It's a physical thing that the brain creates. Yeah, it seems to me that in Amnesia the Dark Descent, it dribbles into, like, it's from the blood that it can be processed from. It's like a liquid of some kind, and it's secreted. So like, we've, got a, we've got a state there that you have to deal with. You can't just be like, um, it's whatever. <laughs> um, also, did we... Did we... 
I don't know if we passed over this or whatever. I just want to make sure we covered it. Um, sure. The sequence where you... Yeah, so there's actually... I'm going to have to roll back a little bit. So when we were talking about we found that guy who was getting tortured, and I remember when I was describing that sequence, I said it was it was around the first time we were talking about the uh, the fail states. So I was trying to understand the room, and, and you walk in, and you're like, oh, Richard, shut up. I'm going to save you. And you start spinning the wheel... And then, like, it makes enough noise that the little protector security ghoul is like, Hey, you stop that. And then you're like, oh my god. And, um, it was on my second sort of, uh, run around. I think w after I'd been sent back to the other room, I was like, oh, I gotta trap him in the, um, in the room. Okay, I, I understand. Now, for those who haven't played Penumbra, that's one of the, like, the sequences that I remember pretty well, because I thought it was really neat. There's a room you need to get into, um, but there's a creature inside it. You unlock the door... And he starts chasing you. And you're like, oh, oh my god. And you start running around. But there's a room. It's like a freezer or server room or something. You chase him in there. Or you, you let him chase you in there. You run him around in a circle. And then you close the door and lock it. He's like, oh, you, you piece of shit. And then you can go in the room that he came out of. And you know, that's how you're solving it. And crazy enough, they repeat that exact puzzle slash scary thing in this game. But they don't do anything different. It's like, it's almost one to one the exact same thing. And so... I have flashbacks to thinking about how like they're trying to innovate, and it's like you just lifted this, like you've done nothing. And um, if I remember right, did you say you like almost not necessarily completed it by accident, but you just sort of completed it? The which, the part with specifically when you have to trap a, a ghoul in the room to get to Richard. Um. Oh yeah. It, so that part was weird for me. Um. So I got to that. Richard part um I again I don't really know what they were doing with them um uh, I guess they were trying to extract Vitae but yes. there wasn't like a machine no he was just anything? it looked like he was just screaming a on prisoner. a thing yeah, yeah. so that's the thing oh, I was, for reason. after the dark descent there's a huge scientific mechanical process especially with uh, yeah. like the, the machines in the other world that well, extracts Vitae and so these gatherer guys you act like what's the mechanism that they so I just thought he, they were fucking around with him because he was a prisoner or something. Well, like, so, keeping you know alive. those pods that you find toward the latter parts of the game where it's like there's clearly a person in it, they're screaming, and they're, they've got this weird pod around them. I have assumed the pod acts as like a, a harvester, and it goes down a tube, yep. and then that tube goes to like a yeah, main refinery. Yeah, they're all connected to a network, yeah. and, it, and it's a life support system this that dude was just, and gives this dude was just chilling. He was just screaming and chilling in the thing, and it's like, I guess, I guess something's happening. I don't know. But, um... I got more to say on that. I was just wanted to clarify, like, you kind of, you just, like, completed the puzzle, not by accident, but kind of. Yeah, I don't know if there was supposed to be a puzzle involved, even. Um, so I opened the door with that room that Richard was in, in the ghoul boy, he was in the back, just in that one little room doing something. And when I opened the door, I think the ghoul made a noise that was different, so I assumed he was supposed to hear the door opening, even though I was very careful to be quiet with it. So good job, Amnesia. Um, so I guess it was scripted. Once you open the door or cross the invisible line, he turns around. So I went to a, a nearby little hidey hole and just hung out there for a moment. And then when I looked back around the corner, the door had been swung completely open. So I assumed he'd come through and he was somewhere else. So I was like, okay, here's my moment to free Richard. Um, but the ghoul was right back where he was, um, as if he'd never moved inside of that room. So I'm like, oh, um, okay then. And so I just closed the door and locked him, and that was that. Oh, yeah, it, that's the, it was the same for me. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. that's he, solved. He, yeah, he, he saw me. I, I hit once, I hit twice because I didn't realize there was a door to close. And then the third was like, oh, I just need to close the door. Yeah, it was just, you just closed the door. Because um, it just goes in there to I don't know, have a wank or something, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing, well, but... It also is, um, so that whole part with Richard is, like, confusing. Yes. So you, you free him, well, wait, and then he goes... Before, yeah. I'm assuming you want to move on to the, the Vitae portion of that, in terms of how it, mechanically it's weird, yeah. rather than the... Go for it. Yeah, well, well I, I wanted to, just before we move to that... Um, Go for it, yeah. The manner in which the, 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 the sort of... God damn it. <laughs> It's one of those things where I'm almost certain exactly what I wanted to talk about. I'm almost certain it was... Yes! 
got it back thank fuck so <laughs> when i was uh among all of the this is the thing hardcore amnesia fans you'll you'll know what i'm talking about when i say you played the game and then you started downloading the custom stories and you were blown away by some of the custom stories they were like people were working their asses off to make some great custom stories one of the ones that always gets referenced is the great work it's like this it's like a whole campaign that someone made and it's really fucking cool and it has its own really unique skills in it and this is this is another complaint that I have to mention. It's like an honorable mention complaint. There's no custom story mode option in the menu yet, and people are fucking baffled. Even PewDiePie mentions this in the beginning of his playthrough. He's like, "Where is it?" Like the community yeah. was obsessed with this shit, and they I think they said that it's coming or that they're definitely planning it. But it was just bizarre to release Amnesia Rebirth and not have custom modes already a thing. It's just like, oh okay, mm. uh. Because, like, that's what kept the game alive. Everybody was playing all the different mods. They were, they were really fucking cool. Um, but the way Amnesia worked, when a, when a bunch of people play it, and then they talk about it, they will describe, like, experiences and encounters that just don't match anyone else's, typically. Um, because one of the ones I remember telling my friends was it was in the um, storage, and uh, I was running back because I had gotten everything I needed, and you're actually fleeing... One of the monsters, it's like a set one that uh, spawns when you get the two rods at the end of storage. And um, you eventually kind of have to get past him. I don't know that he despawns if you wait long enough, but I'm pretty sure you just need to get past him eventually. And what happens to a lot of players is you'll try and get past him, he might notice you and you start sprinting. You're just like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And you find like a piece, there's like a litten area and then a, a bit of like a quake happens because the, the, the shadow's chasing you. If you keep running, you're like, ah, oh, I remember this bit. I came in this way. I'm almost to the exit. If you keep running, you'll run right into another gatherer that's just spawned in, this, in the center of the pathway. He's just chilling there. And, and it acts as like a big jump scare. And a lot of people would tell that story as being like a huge spook for them. One of the ones that got me was that I didn't necessarily do that straight away. That other one spotted me and I ran back and I ran into a corner and I stacked some boxes I found and I just looked down and crouched. And like, he walked into the room just looked around, made some noises, and I sort of looked up at the corner of my screen and looked back down and, like, eventually walked off. And I remember describing it as feeling as though it, it was just, that's what I would be doing in real life. It was, it was, it just felt so, like, 100%. And because I can believe that a lumbering creature that's got dimmed senses and just wants to hit the things it finds or whatever would have trouble spotting me in a really dark room when I've piled a bunch of things in a corner and you just can't quite yeah. spot me. It felt really real. All we've been doing in this fucking recording is talking about how each of the encounters fail like they just <laughs> don't work they confuse us or they're just like poorly implemented to the point of you accidentally complete them and it just saddens me is, is where i was going with this <laughs> like it just uh, uh, amnesia the, was cool to talk about this game's embarrassing to talk about this game is just disappointment after disappointment the only the only thing that this game does well is sort of where it starts to set things up that could be interesting that ultimately it doesn't really do anything with. Um, and that, I guess that's why this game could have been interesting. But if it was me, you could take like the skeleton of this concept um, and make it work into a really nifty game. But I would have like dropped all the baby shit. I would have dropped the whole love story. Just drop all of it that they spend so much time wasting with and um done something else with it um i would have given backstory to the other world i would have maybe you actually do find and have a short conversation with some <clears throat> with like the last survivor of the you know, the alien world who's like ah yes i was you know i've gone to earth many many times you know we harvested da, 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 da. i can i know i do know your language I, and so you, you meet up with him and he you, you could decide his fate perhaps after a while or something like that. But there, there's so much you could do that's so much more interesting. This game is nothing but disappointment after disappointment. Also, do you remember how we found Herbert's camp well into the place where they would have discovered all kinds of crazy fucking things and Daniel didn't Oh, yeah. Them? So for those of you who don't know, in Amnesia the Dark Descent, Daniel does to some degree, uh, he talks about his experience in Algeria at the camp, at the, at the archaeology expedition. And the way that he essentially describes it is just sort of just like old ruins, sort of. Yeah. The, mostly nondescript. Um, the most vivid his explanations get is when he's talking about like the orb itself and what it makes him see. Yeah. Um, but where you find so this game ties in the most 
with uh, the Dark Descent in that you find this camp that Daniel and Herbert and all of them had. The issue here is that it is full of insane shit. Like, it is like a stone's throw down the hall from the fucking portal teleporter. And Daniel, like, doesn't mention any of the insane shit that this camp is surrounded by. Um... And and so, like, when you find the camp, you don't think at first that it's the camp that Daniel found the orbits and stuff from, but it is. Um, As we talked I, about, like, could have just made the story. It opens with Daniel getting hurt and being pushed away back to London. And then you're like, well, what did he find? Let's go search it out. And then yeah, it, you, you know, play as a member of the ex uh, excavation team. You're you're who, some no name local who got hired to just carry yeah. a shovel around, and you're you're the protagonist of the story. And you watch all this unfold, and you see what happens in Algeria <clears throat> after Daniel leaves. Like, and, oh, and that's you know, you could end up getting transported to that horrible alien world, and we could spend the whole game there. As far as I'm I would have preferred that. I would have literally preferred you spent the whole game in the alien world. If they see. could have devoted all of their hours and time and effort to a story that was focused on the plight and the destruction and the cataclysm that happened on this alien world, I think that would have been so much more interesting. I can't believe that they made an amnesia game where it felt like a meme that we had amnesia. So it's like, I don't know, fuck it, we had amnesia. Like again, just to remind everyone, I don't know why our protagonist has the namesake of the game. Yeah, same. I I, I don't know. I don't remember a single note even. I'm trying to like Let imagine. It's like, up. did she take the potion to forget why she had the kid so that she might give up the kid to save her team? I don't know. Um, let me um let me look at the the wiki for Tazi and see. Um, Control F amnesia. <laughs> Let's see. Um, again, uh, so it's darkness, clay, Luke's drill. With the sacrifice of another crewmate, Tazi manages to escape the other world and return to the crash site of the Cassandra where it all began. That's all it says! Ta oh, no. That's all it fucking says! Okay, this is the last paragraph of her summary. Okay. Unaware of their fate, the crew prepare to return uh, prepare return to their world. Fuck. All right, come on, guys. <laughs> Unaware of their fate, the crew prepares to return to their world. I had to reword that. Before they leave, however, Hank begins suffering the symptoms of a harvester transformation, citing some darkness that clouded his vision. As he loses control of his body, he implores Tazi to run. With the sacrifice of, other, uh, of another crewmate, Tazi manages to escape the other world and return to the crash site of the Cassandra where it all began. But now she has no memory of what had happened from the crash until that moment, and this marks the start of the game. Tazi eventually discovers that she's pregnant with Salim's child and finds him dead in a cave. Hmm. Um, what do we do with that? <laughs> uh, so, um, I don't, um, yeah, I don't, it, it literally just says, but now she has no memory of what happened from the crash. <laughs> it has he manages to escape the other world and return to the crash site of the Cassandra where it all began. Cassandra's the plane. Yes. Uh, Why? I don't. How? <laughs> also, how? It, it said a sudden engine malfunction caused the plane to crash in the desert. So that is canonically what happened. They were just unlucky. Uh, surely not. <laughs> because it happens right with the flashes of the other world. Did they fly through a portal? But unportaled and then, then reportaled and unportaled? In the alien world then flashed back and crashed? Is that... But why... Why any of it Because I thought at first that they'd stumbled into some crazy pocket dimension or something. Why any of it rags? I don't... <laughs> uh, why is Tazi... <laughs> Forgetful. In the fucking... 
plain white. Um, kind of like a whole Reddit article at the moment, or threat. It's not an article. That was wrong. Uh, how does Charlie have amnesia? The only thing I've seen so far is uh, oh shit. What was it? Like uh, paraphrasing, it was basically. Oh, I think it's because of the transformation. What? Was, like she wanted her to forget that she was a ghoul? No, no. Like so someone had like a like a thread with a bunch of questions of the story, and I was just looking for the answers here. And like, because the only remember thing how? Is, in... Because what one of the questions is like, why does she have amnesia? And the only thing I, I've seen so far is like, I think Tazza's amnesia is caused by a transformation. What? I what? Think. Say that one more time. No, that, that's the only thing someone could come up with. As the, far the, as like, so the transformation like, from human to ghoul gave her amnesia. Yeah. The... But it didn't give anyone else amnesia. But it also, it gave her quite a lot of amnesia. <laughs> yeah, like she didn't even. So you know, remember how in the first game, Daniel gives amnesia to himself so that he will do what he tells his forgotful self to do well, in the note. Yeah, like like this he writes a note to himself. This is part of what I consider to be uh, a little thin on the Doctor Sen side, but again, I want to clarify that they wrote the story like as a last ditch thing to tie every sequence because it was first a horror game and then they were like we need a story to match all this so the idea is that once you once daniel has gone down his dark descent with with um, uh, alexander pushing him the whole way he's so distraught about what he's become because the last lives he takes is like an innocent family and he wants to take revenge on alexander and stop this whole process but um the idea is that he's so guilt-ridden that he can barely like operate and so he decides, if I erase all of this from my own head, and then tell myself, you have to kill Alexander, I should be able to do it, because I won't be crippled by the, the horrors of what I've done. That, to me, is good enough. I'm like, okay, I understand that, I see what he did, and yes, uh, it, it is kind of cool that we are a brand new player, and at the same time, that is kind of what he's experiencing in the game. He's like a new yeah. slate. Losing your memory is essentially the reset button for a person. And so we, we take what he says, he's like, I want you to kill him, and then you understand what exactly happened, then you can make one of the four choices, there's four endings in Amnesia the Dark Descent, and they're all very based on just what you want to do. In this game, you just have Amnesia. <laughs> yeah. I don't even Be know. Be free, Vire. <sighs> yeah, so... It's... As far as I can tell, nobody fucking knows why she has amnesia. That's great. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know how she has amnesia. I don't know how she got inside the plane and, like, what was her plan? What, how come she got, I, I, how come the doctor went through all of this, but he's totally fine? Oh, can we know okay? like, as well about the doctor? He shot and killed a ghoul, and then he takes another ghoul and hopes to get the baby out of her so that he can save as much as he can to give it to the person. And I've seen people defending this, by the way, so I want to be clear on how stupid this is. He's like, I'm going to restrain you with something you can easily break out of because ghouls have, like, super strength, and I'm also not going to execute you once you've given birth because I just hope that you like the fact that I'm kidnapping your child even though you have the ferocity to literally rip my head off. Yeah. It is bizarre how he just doesn't kill you. Um, and and one he... pistol shot apparently does the trick. But he doesn't have and... his gun as well? He just, he just doesn't have it? It's gone? Yeah, it just disappears. Um, he takes the kid and just like runs off instead of shooting you while Did you're you, helpless, um... which would solve all of his problems in yeah. and... the game. Oh, it's, it's fucking dumb. But um, did you do what I did when the game was like, you've broken out, go chase him? I was like... No, I don't think I will. No, because it's a scripted <laughs> sequence, and I can do whatever the fuck I exactly. want. Exactly. I was like, I'm gonna look around the room, and then I did, and then I looked at him, and he's just awkwardly shuffling at a this cart. thing. He's yeah. just like, oof, oof, and I was like, oh, game, you disappoint me. <laughs> like, <it's> like <laughs> oof, I just can't do it. Oof. And until until you activate the the scripted sequence, which is just you so oh, yeah, much. That you're so much better than this frictional like <laughs> yeah i guess we'll bring it up cuz we're it's a basically this game's a bitch fest um so we have uh there's an aspect of the game where you go through these so there's like little rifts that you can walk through but they're not portals right Th this is different than the portals but these are just like apparently random rifts that connect our world and the other world uh -huh. which are, again they're they're these are different from the portals these almost are like accidental 
connections yeah. that you can use this essentially this compass amulet to walk through you equip the compass you walk close to this rift it opens up and you walk through and put the compass away and it disappears um however in the chase sequence with um the doctor you follow him through a rift that leads you conveniently right to the base of the empress the god queen's tower um whereas they didn't seem to have much rhyme or reason before uh, but he walks in way before you get there. And mm -hmm. inexplicably, the rift remains totally open and only closes until you walk in. Lucky. Lucky Ooh. you that this one was unlike all the rest and in your favor. It's funny. Um, When that sequence was happening on my stream, I was like, oh, it's going to close right as I get there. It's going to be a tragic, like, no. And then I walked through it and I was like, oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this then. This also doesn't make sense, but all right. Yeah, that whole sequence of childhood. Though, you've just reminded me as well, that, um, this happened to Metal. This is kind of a funny story. So Metal played the game before I did, about a couple of hours or whatever. And if you remember early game rags, when you first discover these portals, you're like, there's like a point where there's three to open um, at once. And right. our gamer brains are like, ooh, well, whichever one I figure is the way way, I want to check one. those other two, you know? Just, yes. just see if there's some matches, see whatever. And so Metal checks one of them turns out it's a floor one and he falls through it and he can't check those other two now too bad wah, wah. Uh -oh. and so he's like i know i'll watch mauler play the game so when he <laughs> checks the other two i can see what i missed and there's mauler being like doodly doodly do i'll check this one first. Oh, i fell through the floor rip and the bell was like wow <laughs> <laughs> was it the same one or is it a scripted yeah, it's thing? the same one I oh. we both randomly decided to check this particular one first, and we both got cut off from the other options. Yeah. Ugh. Excellent I remember job. a couple of them being like worthless, where you yeah, open no, it the, up and it's just like a tiny little stone closet. This and is there's the thing. Yeah. If if it turned out those other two were literally dead ends and had nothing in them, I don't care. The fact that you didn't let me search annoys me. Yes. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, and well. also, of course, this is yet another point where you fall through the floor and yep. are uh, derailed from your path. I think that's at least three that I could remember. Um, I, honestly, man, I felt like saying there was seven. I, 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 maybe there was a lot less than that, and I just, it just I, felt I just, like there was I, can only, I, I remember three, but I'm almost certain there was more. Um, because I just feel like there was more aspects of, oh, let's just go over there, and then you just get derailed somehow. Can I give the game one compliment? Yes. That one scare. This one where he was he was hanging out on the little banister pole uh, uh what, do, what do you call them the the things that connect like um wooden uh pole i'm blanking on the actual name of this a thing a beam a wooden beam a beam yeah um, he was on the beam yeah the ghoul yeah, was on the that, beam as you were escaping uh, the fort i i i that cleverly i big brained decided that when he chased me out that he came out of a room that i needed something and i was like i'm going back actually no i'm gonna couch a criticism in there fuck it so when i <laughs> was being chased by him and i left the room and he was like banging on the door after the loading screen had been done i immediately was like you can't he's not actually there because i that's a loading screen like he's not yeah. there he can't be there and then tassi is like it stops banging and tassi goes i think it's gone now and I was like, like oh, well, um, shit, you're an idiot. Exactly. But, I, but oh God, it's such a fucking cognitive explosion. Like, on one hand, I want to go back in because I'm pretty sure there's a quest item in there, but that's going to have to brave the fact that there's a monster on the other end. On the other hand, my stupid fucking character just said, like, yeah, it's, no, it's safe now. And so, mm. it, like, that's an indirect message to me that I, ha I, I need to go back in and that I can go back in. And I'm just like, God damn it, game. Like, seriously. But either way, big brain me. I'm like, I'm going back in. I go to that room, and I pick something up that's clearly like a quest item. And I'm like, woohoo. And then as I'm heading out, I'm like, oh, they'll spawn him. They'll spawn him. And I was looking around everywhere. Couldn't, couldn't quite see where he is. And then I look up, and he's on that uh, little beam, and it freaked me out. And I was like, that was awesome. Good job. That's my one compliment for the game. Good job. Yeah. Unfortunately, the uh, the wiki I'm... clearly states that they can attack you whenever they want. No. Uh, and they try to attack you at all times. Um, no. Which is odd. As as spooky as that was, I couldn't get over the fact of why are you? Why is he not? Yeah. No, I completely agree anything. with you. They don't. They don't behave consistently. They're strange because you find ones that lumber around like the amnesia monsters, but then you find ones that seem to be fucking with you. Yeah. And then the you first find one ones is that talk to you. Fucking with you. <sighs> 
Um, to go back to where we, we were, uh, and I, I don't know if you want to do a rags or I can, but um, the, 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 the way in which Richard dies and the result of it, do you, do you want to do it or? Oh yeah, so uh, we talked earlier about, well here, it'll, 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 it'll all blend together, it'll, like, a, like a mush. I feel like we, we've been just picking at this whole game, and I feel like we're really, yeah. we've really dug deep now, and I'm pretty happy about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, there is a, where you find Richard, he's been captured by one of these harvester baddies. He's, uh, he, 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 he obviously doesn't want to be here. He's being, he's, he's chained up, and also you have the to. First, the first survivor you find in the game. Yeah, he is. He's the first living person you find, uh, essentially, yeah. Um, so you're like, oh my goodness, it's, it's a human person. I gotta save him. So you lock the ghoul in his closet and you turn, uh, for about 10 minutes, you have to turn this little wheel that slowly <laughs> lowers, forever. yeah, this slowly lowers the <laughs> chain. And then he like attacks you uh, cause he says, oh yeah, take her, not me. And he runs off because I guess that's his plan. Now you, now you don't decide this. This is all cutscene. Everything from that happens from this point on is cutscene. Cutscene. Begin. Um, you get upset at Richard that he <laughs> is abandoning you and that he wants the ghoul to take you and not him because he's running off. You <laughs> chase after him, catch him, and in a blurry mess of black screens and flashes, turns out uh, you regain control of your character and you have killed Richard. You, you have killed him. You, you banged his head against the floor. The ghoul is gone, by the way. Um, so you, you killed Richard. And you have successfully powered up a cell. Because you have done all of this somewhat in the vicinity of what appears to be some kind of an alien charging station. Where you take an empty cell canister. And Pop you it fill it full of Vitae to make it a charged cell. Which is the power source that... You use throughout the game to power yeah. alien technology. Do you know what comes to mind first, Rags? And I think this is because of the conversation we had earlier today. Do you know what comes to mind with... What? You have a what cell, you have a machine yeah. that's attached to the cell, mm -hmm. and then meters away was somebody, you know, getting killed and maybe screaming, and it got powered up. Monsters, Inc. comes to mind. Huh. <laughs> you, <laughs> you scream, <laughs> and it fills the tag. Um, yeah, so, uh, um... At, at, someone actually said that in my chat, I think. We were talking about Boss Sick earlier today, and it was just on my mind. I was just like, oh my god, it's just no, like... No, I understand the reference. <laughs> I'm sorry, chat person. <laughs> but, um, but the way this works is that apparently, if you just have someone... So, remember, Vitae, you don't really want to kill the person. No. Alexander's you want to harvest clear about them that. for the fear and the terror and the dread that their brain experiences because that produces Vitae, which can the, be harvested. The implication and, is that they're only going to be killed when the torturers go too far. And um, and I think Alexander has this... Which they specifically this... go into links about you don't want to go too far. Yeah, and, and I think Alexander says, like, in terms of the best ways to torture the human body, in one, uh, in one of the flashbacks, Daniel's like, you know, surely that would kill him, like, in a sense that you don't want to, and, and Alexander's like, ah, the human body can, you know, Very take quite resilient. the fucking beating, basically. And But he does say, like, once you've decided you do want to end the life, which I assume is at the point where you, you think this person you has been... harvested enough, and yeah. they're just actually mentally broken. They, they're just too broken to even be afraid. They just don't function. You can, you can end it. You've squeezed all the juice out of them that you can. Um, uh, then after that point, you kill them. But uh, essentially, yeah, you want to... And, and even in this game, before you get to this point, there is there are places where the aliens are talking about, like the maze. The whole point of the maze was that they they release harvesters and people inside, and the people get so afraid of the harvesters that they're trapped in the maze with that it makes them afraid. So that by the time the harvester gets them, they've been afraid long enough, and it creates more vitae. And they were saying one of the problems was that they need to adjust the maze because the prisoners get too afraid too quickly and they start to run and make noise and the harvester finds them that way um so this was the this is the one of those little bitty things about oh learning about how the aliens have found out how to mass produce vitae and things of that nature and how they do it mm -hmm. but um yeah but in this game uh, i guess if you just die close to the <laughs> machine it just 
fills it. It just, I don't know, it captures the death yeah. in the air and just spits it into a jar. Yeah, Remember gotta, there was a cool uh, scientific aspect of the Vitae that was really cool? I want to stress, like, the implication from the first game is that killing the subject is once it's, once you just give, like, it's over. It's like, okay, time for them to die, I guess. Yeah, you want to keep them alive as long as possible to harvest as much Vitae as you can from them. Remember, the whole point of the amnesiatic drug was to make prisoners forget about the torture so they don't get familiar enough with it. Oh, that it's a new it's... experience every time and it's horrifying. And that gives you the reason uh, <clears throat> Daniel had access to the amnesia potion. Yes. And in this one, again, I don't know where the amnesia comes from, but apparently they forgot how Vitae works. And, and, and when Richard dies from you because you went into a fit of rage, you just, you wake up and the cell is charged and he's dead. Yeah, like, it's almost like they're implying you just on autopilot fucking shoved him into a Harvested machine. Harvested and everything. Him. Yeah, like, it's I so guess. fucking weird. But he's not connected to anything. Nope. Like, he's not hooked up to a machine. You don't have any syringes in your hand. You, He's just dead on the floor and the cell's charged and you're like, oh, that was weird. Yeah, it's a, it's a really weird experience. And this is the thing, it's, it, it, you, I guess a viewer right now would be like, so you're saying that it contradicts the Dark Descent? I'd be like, well... Yes, but also just confuses the hell out of me about how Vita is fucking harvested. I don't get it. Yeah. Also, of the game, you can see them in like those little pots and, and everything, yeah. where it's like being tortured forever. Uh, but yeah, now when you when you say in the Dark Descent, that's all uh, they have to do the the memory wipe so they forget about everything. Uh, how effective can the whole harvesting thing be if they're just being tortured forever and ever in this little pod? Maybe the pod automatically supplies forget potions periodically. Yeah, maybe. Fuck it. <laughs> maybe. I, 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 maybe. Um, well, do they have any men- they do- I feel like they do mention it, right? They mention some stuff about oh. how they're- so, I remember one of the notes talks about hope, about how you can never make the prisoner feel hopeless. And, and so this is why they trap like memories and stuff. I feel is so that the, so that the people who are being contained always have that little glimmer of hope that they can escape, which is where a lot of the terror comes from. It's yeah. like a cycle of uh, like pain, hope, and fear, and stuff like that. Where say like, if 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 a prisoner gets hopeless of their situation, they'll just accept it and they won't fear as much. But when they but when you capture all of their good memories. And the because they have like some of the prison because I guess they they captured people from Earth some humans and they use those to power Vitae, um, and so they they had some like little uh, tablets that had records of people they captured of this is a person and they have a family and this is a person they don't have a family and they have some good memories yeah. and things like that and that was an important part of becoming a candidate for Vitae harvesting. Yeah, they even had like a likelihood of like strong extraction or or, or yield potential, you know. Yeah, it was very, and th this was kind of an interesting part of the game, um, you know, how they did it and explaining their process and the logic and stuff and how assembly line it sort of became with mm -hmm. the cages and things. Um, and how these people just became husks that were just purely there just so that they could be, have their fear harvested through torture. Really terrifying, but it sets up how much, how, how obvious it is that the right thing to do is to just destroy all of this. Was the implication that the aliens and Alexander separately realized that giving people amnesia was a good way to get them to retorture, or did Alexander know about it because his team had figured it out back in Alexander's homeworld? So, I don't know if Alexander's homeworld and the world in this is the same. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I this imagine was not a huge it, deal. I just I remember it yeah, bothering me. Yeah, it's not me. a huge deal. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be curious what the canonical answer is. Yeah. Um... Uh, let me, in fact, let me, Alexander von Bren. Well, while you're, um, you're looking it up, uh, another quick one I just want to mention is, um, you step in a bear trap in this game. Right. But another person matter. steps in a bear trap in this game. <laughs> neither yeah, you of you. you step in a bear trap and you're fine, by the yeah, way. Yeah, neither of you seem to be that affected by the bear trap, if I'm being completely honest. I guess because you ghouls, you can regenerate your leg. I don't fucking know. Yeah. You, your reaction to being snapped up by a bear trap and held upside down was incredibly underwhelming. 
yeah by the, <laughs> yeah. The, the the being hoisted up into the air you're like okay uh and then you you step in a fucking bear trap and you're just like it almost doesn't even register and of course this person is able to free you at the exact moment they're taken over and want to eat you yeah lucky because you arrive there and everyone else has been killed by her yep, by the I way just, yeah. how this one person has killed everybody when we establish a single gunshot will kill them I don't fucking know. And our character kicks them away all the time. Yeah. So lame. Uh, Another complaint I have, I know we mentioned it on the other stream, but I'm just going to bring it up here. A classic thing I mentioned with the grabbing and being in your face in the maze. It can't just be one example to compare it to Outlast, right? So when you're in the some kind of sluice gate factory place. There's lots of water and blood and flesh moving around. And uh, you have to jam a gear system with with a cage, and then you can move underneath a, a thing that's clearly, like, mechanically meant to, you know, squish things up. And you, you're moving through, and suddenly, Leon grabs you. It is Leon, right? Uh, yes. Um, he grabs you. And he's like, blah, 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 and, and it's a sudden jump scare, and he's in your face. And I was like, woohoo, amnesia is out last now. Yeah, Yay. Where did you come from? It doesn't even make any fucking sense. We would have heard him coming from miles away because you have to splish splash to get to me fast. So, like, don't lie to me, Gabe. And then you, like, do just, blah, 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 and then his arm comes off because <laughs> the thing <laughs> closes, I guess. And then he's like, I'll get you. He team rockets you twice. You can hear him in the in the distance. We're like, "I'm sorry, please come back, me." Do you remember when you turned the power on, Rags, in that place, and there was just a dude who was like, "Tasi, <laughs> yo." <laughs> oh yeah, that was weird. He just been so hanging weird. out there. Metal was like surprised at how like underwhelmed my reaction was. I told him, like, my brain was fried at that point. I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, like, what? I remember How staying is... there and listening to him. You were just like, oh yeah, okay. And just turned around and like, left. Had I been in that situation in real life, I would have just, like, my eyes would have just been like, I don't even know. Like, why? You're How like, did you what? end up like, there? Why are you, are you here? What? what? Have you been just, like, hanging out here? And the fact that you know me and you... Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. And I'm going up the stairs. I'm like, no, fuck you. all the ladder. Yeah. Anyway. I don't even know what's happening now. I guess I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna fuck this planet. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh. Um. And oh that, boy. And that is it for my. I, I wrote down like four new notes, and I'm done with all of them. So I'm I'm left with the big one. Yeah. Uh. Let me let me take a glance, but I. I, th I think it's everything I can think of. There's probably more, but I feel like we've done a pretty good job. <laughs> of getting yeah. through some of our issues, but we've got one big one left. So, uh, frictional yeah, no, games are really cool in that they were like, hey, you know this horror genre you got there for gaming? We're gonna, we're gonna try and reinvent it. We hear your <laughs> concerns, you see. We know that you're tired of overt gore and slashing and <laughs> blood splattering and people screaming and people being in your face and sudden loud noises and sudden flashes of things because you know what that's cheap horror anyone can design a thing so that it goes Bleh! that's just that's simple right so how about we make a game where we make it incredibly slow in terms of the beginning we set the atmosphere we make it nice and dark we give you control over light but it's a limited resource you better be careful we have these little dudes running around and if you sprint if you don't take your time, if you don't make sure you're looking around where you need to go, you don't know where your safe spaces are, you don't know where your lights are, you don't know how much you have, you can be in some serious trouble. And that's all, you you, you, can, you know where the enemy is, is around, and suddenly, sometimes, you can turn a corner and he's right there, and you can get spooked the fuck out. And Dark Descent earned itself a title of essentially being the scariest game on PC. Like, it was just like, people loved the shit out of it for how scary it was. Fast forward by ten years, and they've made they've made some decisions. We've covered mm -hmm. a few of them already. I'd say we've covered about fucking 10,000 of them already. But they decided they still, they'd make this little addition. So, mm. when you first play this game, I'm pretty sure they give you it in the intro before anything's really even happened. Oh, I guess I, I guess if we're doing this part, just this is a little... This this actually was because this is on the, on the wiki. So, for the Dark Descent. When your sanity gets low, right? How things sort of change? 
you know, yes. seems a little bit different. So this is this is Alexander von Brennenberg's uh, his portrait, right? There he is. He's looking oh, yeah, well. Yeah, you know, yeah. he is. But if you have low sanity, this is what the portrait looks like. Oh shit! Yeah, that's really cool. Um, to to add on to that, in amnesia, the you need your sanity high because it helps you operate, and you, you, and naturally that's kind of how it works in real life. The more scared you are, the harder it is to just do everything. It hampers you. And in amnesia, you'll you'll hear like sort of noises, like there's there's almost like a bug in your ear. Things will crawl across the screen, i.e., your eyes or face. You'll see things on the walls and the floor. You'll hear spooky noises. Things won't look right. And you'll get more and more scared, and then when you hit max, your character will go, Duh! and you'll fall to the ground and be shaking, because you, you are so afraid you are essentially crippled. We kind of mentioned this before. In this game, they thought, you know what? Fuck that system. It's just not good enough. You know, it's got so many problems, and it's cool now that we're ten years older, we can innovate. So, we're gonna have it so, so that, like, black gooey stuff appears around the sides, and it's encroaching upon your screen. Kind of like blood in Call of Duty, but black to to indicate you're losing sanity. It's like, all right. And I think, other than that, and other than the fail state we mentioned, which reaches when it's at maximum fear, we've only got one last thing to really describe. Uh, and again, like I said, I'm pretty sure it happens in the intro. It's a part of like, I want to—is it after the plane crash, but before you gain control? I don't know if you remember, Mel. I, uh, I think, think so, so, yeah. But they do this right. thing, and I think all three of us probably would have had almost the exact same reaction. Something flashes on screen, kind of like a spooky image, pretty bright, and there's a yeah, loud it's like noise. Yeah, the, the Empress's mask or some other nondescript yeah. image, yeah. And it's like a scream sound. And it, you know, it gives you a little jolt. Loud. You're like, ooh. Yeah. And, and I think the first instinct I would have in any normal setting is fuck you, but this was a frictional game, so I was like, there's gotta be something to this, because they're good at what they do. So I'm gonna give them a pass. And then it happened, like, again, a few seconds later, and it's like, whoa, okay, and then again. And then I think the game starts, and it was like, geez, not a great way to begin, but whatever. I'm sure there will be some context in which I can say, hey, those open it, that opening is more so just a, a way to jolt you into the game, or, or it's, there's, look, there'll be a reason, it's fine. But then you find in the game, let's say your, your sanity is 100 and it can go down to zero, as soon as you get to around 50, this shit happens. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps happening. It'll keep over happening. And over and over for the entire game. Until you raise above 50% again, or you go all the way down to zero and die. Uh, well, die, whatever. Um, and it's it's like the singularly most fucking stupid decision I think I've ever seen any developer make in terms of a horror mechanic. What the hell were you thinking? It's like... It's the... It's they a, had something that was so nifty and cool, and they totally threw that out in exchange for cheap-ass jump scares that turn... Because it only scares you for like the first three times it happens. So very, very, yeah. very quickly and very soon. Then it becomes a huge annoyance, and it is frustrating. No. And you start lighting things up just to make the loud noises and the annoying flashes go away. So Because it annoys you as a player. Part of why I wanted this one to be the last one is, think of everything we've been talking to you about in this whole stream, and then add that on top of it. Any of yeah. those sequences we were describing, any of those annoying mechanics, the puzzles, the darkness, the... the <laughs> different traversal ways, the fucking portals, all the enemies. Think about all those things we were trying to talk about, and in the meantime, you just have something going Bleh! every once in a while. Bleh! Yeah, and it takes up your screen, it flashes in front of your screen, it makes a loud noise, sometimes it could happen like a machine gun. It's just, just so fucking annoying. Yeah. And so, we all fucking hate it, and I only see a talentless fucking developer trying to scare a person because my god this is cheaper than anything i've seen in a horror game and that's saying something um it is literally a jump scare generator that has no context other than you're getting more afraid lol yeah is this is this number uh, is this metric below 50 oh okay it's scary it's spooks yeah. Spook, scary loud noises and um i guess that's a nice lead into 
A lot of people didn't like this. A lot yes. of people. And Why would you? Frictional Herd. A lot of people weren't liking it, and I guess, Mel, if you want to post some stuff the rags might be able to read out? Uh, I can repost it. Uh, if you scroll up oh, all yeah, the yeah, way. Uh, go right there yeah, 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 just repost it. Yeah, let me, I can, I'm, I'm at it. I got it. Oh, well, go. repost them so I can, I can put them on. <laughs> all right. Uh, there you go. This is the, this is their first update that they uh, released for the game as far as I know of. Oh, this is a second update because when the game launched, it didn't have an EXE file. <laughs> but you know what? Oh, mistakes happen. So before okay. reading this update, I do want to. Do we have a? Do you have the tweet, Metal? Tweet? Oh, I, yeah, no, yeah. I have, I've never seen the tweet. I think the tweet comes before this. Technically, let the tweet see. is me, them uh, trying let to. Let me search. Yeah, it would be the Frictional Games accounts. It's probably not too hard let to find. Let me go to. Let me go to your sir in search. I mean, the explanation what what it, what, what they say it is is in this as well oh well I, I... Won't, I won't be able to see the tweet and then i won't be able to see the the, the update because i feel like it's yeah, a good yeah. little um uh... bear with us <laughs> yeah i i want to find their words um i mean i've got their account on twitter i should be able to find it Missing Steam EXE. They've, they've posted a tweet that, that has a quote from Dual Shockers about the game, and it says, Incredibly strong atmosphere and sense of place. Sure. Uh, Incredibly strong sense of place? I, I don't know. I just see people, it's just all those uh, websites giving it high numbers. Okay, what? I found it. Let me link it to you. Dice to remove a Here it is. Oh, you found it? Cool. <clears throat> okay, so context, you got uh, someone saying, so, so Adrian says, I generally can't understand why you guys would add cheap jump scares. I always thought you were better than that. Toning them down is definitely a positive thing, but it still boggles me that they're present in the first place, which is precisely what I would say. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so this is what Frictional Games said in a reply. Please do check out the linked blog post. They were never intended as scares in the first place. They are supposed to signal to the player that they are reaching critical fear levels and hopefully instill a bit of panic in the process. Smiley face. Hoping the balance is a bit better now. Smiley face. So, fuck you is the first thing to say. Yeah. yeah. What a fuck. Actually, fuck you, Frictional. Never what a shitty decision. It's, it's and all the people. It scares. They're like, fucking serious. Like, come on. Yeah, I don't believe you when you say they're not intended as scares. Bullshit. Yeah, and these fucking four dipshits on Twitter afterwards. I love the flashes. <laughs> they give me a reason to panic and feel pressured about my fear getting too high versus Dark Descent where low sanity didn't feel as threatening. What I also fuck? like them. For me, they only occurred during particularly intense moments. Yeah, like, to be honest, like they'd make me jump a tiny bit. I don't mind that, though. Yeah, I actually love them. Hopefully you're not turned down too much. Fuck, Fuck all, all of you. Of you. <laughs> Fuck all of you. Fucking stop playing video games. Kill yourself. You, you're you're literally ruining everything by encouraging this bullshit. Yeah. If um, you just want to have spooky images flash in front of your screen, like, go fuck off. Yeah, you can make it for that yourself. That is such just cheap horseshit. Design that shit yourself. Make a YouTube video. Crank the volume fully. Put a picture that's really spooky and just repeat it over and over again and then play it to yourself and go to sleep. I don't know. What the fuck? Like, why Why would you ever celebrate this? And I just love the fact that they refer to them as uh, fear flashes. Fear flashes. Fear flashes. They're called fear. They're not, they're not jump scares, guys. They're fear flashes. Yeah, the things that just pop up are really loud and uh, always jump scares. They're not jump scares, they're fear flashes. Yeah, that was actually... I think there's another tweet I was thinking of. It's the one where they say that specifically to responding to somebody, I guess. The the term fear flashes is used. And what I liked was um, in the comments of the recent EFAP and I think on some of my... Um, the, 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 the archives of my streams, 
Someone said, like, um, fear flashes has the same energy as um, surprise mechanics. Is it, was it, do you remember how people tried to call, was it loot boxes they tried to call them surprise mechanics? Surprise mechanics. <laughs> They're not loot boxes, guys. They're surprise mechanics. It, just, just, fear, uh, fear flashes, same energy as surprise mechanics. So fucking true. And, and this is the thing. In isolation, I wouldn't be as angry. It's the fact that I can see frictional games attached to that statement. Mm. What the hell? They, um... This is, this is not... So this doesn't make sense. And so everybody, you know, that I've seen responding to a lot of our criticism is, is like, so, you know, what happened? I even, um... I sent a lot of this to, to Smiler and some other people, and some of the responses I'd be getting are like, oh, so is it like a different team? Is it a different writer, different creator? Different... Like, there has to be? Is the only way it can be explained? Like, what is the explanation? I'd like to know. In the same way that people did with DS2. They're like, what is the explanation? The people who made DS2 couldn't have been the people who made DS1. <laughs> there yeah. must be an explanation for this. And uh, mm. that shit makes me sad. It is... It is what a sad day for horror games. What a sad game for day for games. That to see a, a company that we used to be so insanely excited for just falter in such a substantial way. How incredibly disappointing. Yeah. Now I'm like that now I'm straight up worried. I don't I, I, for, I don't really care about their next game now. But like I I'm super worried about it for certain. I'm not excited anymore. Yeah, you'll they'll need to pull some shit in terms of like we're releasing a new game in two years from now. It's one we've been working on for seven years. Amnesia Rebirth was more of a thing we, we gave to a couple of our, you know, bonus teammates that kinda just are less talented people. <laughs> They're very explicit about it. Like Like we gave this shit to the newbies just to help them with learning things. Well, but of course all the media outlets love it. A lot they of them do. There's been I've seen a I've it. seen a decent amount of Love it. Middling Someone, to negative stuff, but yeah, there there is also a lot of them who say it's so great. It's just so it just the narrative is so amazing. It just reinvents the horror genre in bullshit like that. I did see someone link one that was like uh, frictional release their first dud, and it's like, yeah, I can agree with that sentiment. Yeah, this is a dud. Don't play it. It's a waste <laughs> of your time. Play the Dark Descent. Play Soma. Play anything else. Just don't play this game. Unless. You're desperate for some good old fashioned fear flashes. Fear flashes. Fuck. Oh, right. So I guess we should read that blog post, right? I guess so. Um, um that's from their Steam. Okay, yeah. Uh fear flashes are toned down and various bugs are fixed. This is update 1.04. Today we released a new patch for Amnesia Rebirth containing a few improvements worth pointing out. The change that will most likely have the biggest effect on the experience is the toning down of the fear flashes. So again, In fuck quotes. you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just... These flashes were never really meant to be scares in themselves, but oh. the main purpose is instead to clearly signal to the player that their fear is reaching critical levels. Because there's no other way to translate that to the player. Nope. Yeah, nope. If only they would have had like a, a previous thing that worked Imagine pretty your well. character yeah. just doubled over in amazing. fear. Just yeah, from I was about it. to say they've they've kind of done this before. Hi, I'm still here. Hello. Okay. <laughs> so it's um, like as I'm as I'm listening to like this go along, it's it's kind of like at first I was like, oh, they should play the uh, they should play Outlast too, that, so we can see which one's worse. Now that I've like listened to this for a while, I kind of feel like I already know the answer now. Oh no. The thing about it is like, Amnesia uh, Reloaded is like. There's so much to be disappointed with. And at least you had I'm high ready. expectations. Exactly, dude. But there was so much expectations and high hopes and, you know, everything going for him. And it all just kind of fell in its face. Whereas Outlast 2, I mean, hot take here. I know a lot of people like the first Outlast. Not very good. Uh, oh, so I'm pretty sure we're, we're all in the, the community that shits on it. I mean, if I, you... I started it, but I just got like, I, I only played, I didn't play very far, far before I was like, oh, it's this kind of game. Well, I'm going to go do something else. I was going to say like, a, much to it. People Trigger like... is the highlight. And then once he's done, that's it. 
game's not fun anymore. Oh yes, you can tell, even from map design, that once they'd done Traeger, they were like, right, time to end the design. It's like, no, we need more levels. Ugh. <laughs> uh, fine, three, we'll, we'll have them fucking f screw around with three valve handles while Fatty's walking around. How about <laughs> yeah. that? We've already done that like seven times. We'll just do it again, you fuck. And yeah, I was gonna just, say, I like, can't be bothered. people who are a fan of my stuff will probably have seen my series. I fucking tore that game to shreds because I wanted <laughs> Do you know why I did yeah. it? I wanted to have some decent arguments to show why Amnesia the Dark Descent was such a special game, which is pretty sad to think about right now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So with with all that in mind, it's like when you when it comes to talking about Outlast 2, I feel like that's only going to be like an hour long discussion at best because there really wasn't much going for it, the original Outlast and to have it followed up with a sequel, there's really there's just no expectation. The story is so flat. It's like trying to critique that old slender game. There's really not much to it. And so it's like listening to how Amnesia completely fell from grace. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ. It's like how uh, Game of Thrones season, uh, Game of Thrones episode <laughs> five, season eight came about. There was so much to talk about, but then it's like you come to talk about season or episode six. So like, I don't care anymore. Yeah. You know? So I feel like well, we've kind of reached a consensus already. And, if they, uh, um, this might be worse than Outlast 2. If they were like, uh, you know, five years from now, Amnesia Retribution's coming out, I will actually be angry. Hmm. Like, fucking drop it, okay? Yeah. Like, you've done enough. Yeah, you, you had a good thing, and just like everybody else in this fucking industry, you just try to keep redoing the thing. Oh yeah, I guess we should mention that. Um, so this is my fears fully realized. The thing I was talking to, and I think I, I feel like I had this conversation with so many different people, but I know rags and metal at least. My concern was, they made Amnesia, and then it sold 1.4 million copies, I believe, is if you just do a quick Google search. Outlast comes out. Outlast were explicit, the developers, that they were inspired, uh, at least in part, by Amnesia. And I know what it was. It was watching those fucking compilations of people getting spooked because they ran into a, a thing and PewDiePie and Markiplier would scream and run. And they were like, you know what? Let's make a game of, of just that. It's just that. Then it's just players have to move through small spaces and then we can lock them into a cutscene where a horrible person screams at their face. And we're going to get so many fucking reactions, yeah, dude. Yeah, we're just going to get and rid then, of everything except the... It just, it's only dessert. There's never anything else. It's just dessert all the time, ad nauseum. And then you have it's Outlast Let's Play Part 1 dash in all caps, the scariest game on earth, the scariest game I've ever played. I even remember feeling a little sad that um, I talked very fondly about Toll Biscuit's coverage of, of Amnesia when he did a little Let's Play for Halloween. It's really like, it's, it's simultaneously a cool sort of representation of how good the game is and wholesome because he's getting all spooked by it. Um, we did the same thing for Outlast, and he was getting utterly spooked by it as well, and I was like, oh, I was hoping, <laughs> like, you would, this, it's because Outlast, oh well, you know, but, but at the same time, it worked. They sold four million copies, they did amazingly, and then by the time they released the sequel, no one gave a shit, because you have to evolve, you can't just cheat. Um, and so then Soma comes out, and my god, they fucking knocked it out of the park again, and for completely different reasons. So cool. Unfortunately... And uh, many pe people know this story. I was just, I was just chilling out and being like, "Hey, hey, other friends that I know at the time in 2015, 16 ish on Twitch, including Metal Commandire, why is everybody not like Soma? I'm checking these reviews. Everyone's saying like, oh, it's fucking lame.' Blah blah blah. And I check reviews from. I did a stream with. I think it was Mr. Emi at the time. We watched a whole bunch of uh, Soma reviews. Could have been Smiler. A lot of them shitting on the game's story without even remotely coming close to, to referencing what happened in it. I'm just like, ah, I was like shit. Like Manor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was getting really annoyed. And then I was like, Joseph Anderson, Soma video, getting pretty popular too. Interesting. I will check it out. I can't remember timeline-wise exactly when this was. I'll have to check the upload date. But man, when I got done with his video, I was just like, Jesus fucking Christ, what have you done? Like, you've completely misrepresented the game. You've talked for ages about how it doesn't even count as horror. And and this is the one that's going to get viewed by everyone. And then there's loads of comments that are like, oh, thanks for this review. I was thinking of buying it, but I definitely won't now. And it's like, oh my god, no, no. 
-hmm. And so I made my series. And you could tell in that series I was a little bit bitter. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but I worked my ass off to try and explain why Soma was so fucking good. And then announces what is announced is Amnesia Rebirth's announced. And the first thought I had was like, Amnesia Rebirth? Why are you doing Amnesia sequel? No. <laughs> is it because Soma didn't sell as well as you wanted? And it because it made him money. I read the like, blog it was a posts successful game. where they would lament that people were not liking Soma that much and that they wanted Amnesia back when they should realize that this just not that's not what it is. It wasn't it wasn't labeled Amnesia 2. I don't know why you wanted Amnesia 2 when it's called Soma. And people were like, yeah, but Soma's not scary. And it's like, oh, but it's not it's not overt in your face I mean, terror it's not, horror. It's, not, it's, it's viscerally scary. Like the, the, they knew themselves what they'd built. They were like, "This is existential horror." The yeah, horror it's comes far in more haunting, understanding terrifying. the concepts and the ideas that are being translated through the events and story. That's supposed to scare you just by thinking about what's happening in the game. And they were like, "Damn!" And I was worried that they took that so far to heart that they were like, "I guess we should make an amnesia sequel. I guess we should have more jump scares. I guess we should have moments that are just filled." with things grabbing you and shaking you and lots of like bits of flesh and all these sequences that only amount to just oh next time you fall away next time you hear shouting oh jump scare jump scare jump scare jump scare jump scare jump scare this is great right machine gunning jump scares at your player this will get all the compilations and like why would i have any reason to assume that that's not exactly what happened yeah i think it probably is well they for for instance the the writer of dark descent and soma he left frictional um, they they have a new writer for this one. Shit writing. It garbage story. Um Dude, when the Wikipedia can't even tell do? us why the character had amnesia, I'm in serious doubt that this is a well written story. Yeah. So so what did the uh what did the previous guy move on to do? do I know? don't know. I'd have to yeah. Google and check. Um That dude's going places. Well, I mean, if you were the guy who wrote Soma, I would want to shake your hand. So yeah, yeah like, exactly. Actually, dude. if you watch this ever, like, thank you so much. Thank you, you so have, much for making Soma. You like, have made. I don't care what anybody fucking says. You have made wrong. the best horror game story in existence, and I say that with not a flinch. Oh yeah, you made a masterpiece. Mike you really did. Edberg is his name. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> Did I come through? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Mid okay. uh, let's see. What's he doing? Right. Uh, so mom needs you to duck descent. Well, yeah. 288 followers on Twitter. Mm -hmm. He hasn't posted from that account in three years. Maybe it's something else. Um, hmm. But he's on an IMDb. Um. So he wrote Amnesia of the Dark Descent, The Vivarium Transmissions, uh Mocking The Mockingbird is short. Yeah. Soma the video game. It, mm -hmm. His last credit is 2017, Need for Speed <sighs> Payback. Uh what the hell? Huh? What the okay. hell? Why why would more people Where want to hire him? Where did this guy go? How did he Wow. How did he end up there? <laughs> Amnesia, some of Avarium, some of Mockingbird, Transmissions, Serious, Death, Need for Speed, Payback, and that's that's it. Yeah, I would have stopped too. Um. So. Uh, Mikhail Slicelime Hedberg is a game developer at Mojang Studio since February first, twenty seventeen. Um, on May 1st, 2019, he announced he'll be working on Minecraft Java Edition. Um, um, uh, it's just an additional a Minecraft... indie for speed. No, is this, a, this has got to be a coincidence. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's just a coincidence, the name. Yeah, forget that. Oh, because apparently like he is a, he's a, a Twitch different streamer. guy with the same name? Or? He's, I, I guess, because... Um, it says he's a he's also a Minecraft focused YouTuber and Twitch streamer and a Minecraft, mm -hmm. um, it, and it doesn't mention anything about Soma or anything here. Um, well, this is a weird little mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what yeah, happened to this man? Well, this last where did, you, where, did, where is where can we find more of your genius? Apparently nowhere. 
is has been an additional writer at this Need for Speed, and that's that's where he disappears. Where what a fate for the guy who wrote Solo. <laughs> um, <laughs> come back, if I want to give gonna, you a hug. <laughs> if you were going to ask who's the best writer in the industry, I'd be like, in the industry, it's probably Mikhail Hedberg. He wrote Soma, and the, that's just the best thing ever. Yeah. I don't know where he went. That's insane. Yeah, it, it, it is. Please, please be fine. Please be like really well off. Yeah. Um, just to uh, rise, you you were at uh sometimes it's difficult on the on the update. If you wanna go carry it on, there's probably some more commentary we can provide on some of the statements. Yeah, in this thing. we could take a look here, see what's up. Uh, let's see. Um. Oh. Um. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Sometimes it's difficult for us as developers to fully compute how these things will affect the overall experience. And it's not until you start seeing them in gameplay sessions by YouTubers and streamers and hearing about them in feedback from players that you realize you've taken them a bit too far. Bullshit. Yeah. Uh, there's no. How did you. How did they play this and be like, yeah, yeah this is good? Well, how we do we have a good. whole team and, and, and you're able to convince them all it's like oh, it's not jump scares it's fear flashes like there must be someone who's like bullshit that's like that's oh jump scares and talk about. before the next part is read out i would like it stated that i'm pretty sure we've all not only like separately come to this conclusion but i'm pretty sure we agreed the game improves it simply improves if you completely erase them Yes. <laughs> like the oh yeah, it does. Undoubtedly, it yeah. absolutely with, improves. With that in mind, read read the next bit. Fixes and improve. Okay, we have therefore now toned down the audio and visuals of these flashes, as well as tweaked how and when they appear a bit. They are still an important aspect of the game and serve a purpose <laughs> that will purpose? hopefully strike a better balance from now on. Fuck off. Be explicit. What, what be explicit. What is this purpose they serve? Yeah, tell me. But it's let me guess. It's like it signals. You see, it signals the to the game. player that they're in danger. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. It is the laziest, cheapest. It's easy. You did it because it's easy. That's why you did it. Son, I am disappointed. <sighs> also, yes, that this might be the king for me in terms of the most disappointed I've ever been in a piece of media. And it's a very specific feeling, disappointment. Yeah, I think I, just, I said after I finished it on stream, I was like, I don't feel like I've just played a frick... A, not a, I don't feel the same like I felt when I finished Soma. Because when I finished Soma, it's like, man, that was fucking awesome. Oh yeah, I, I think I mentioned to you that once I'd finished Soma, it was on my mind for a long time, and I, my mind randomly yeah. finds its way to Soma every once in a while, thinking about it. Meanwhile, I was like, we do need to talk about Amnesia Rebirth relatively quick, because this shit's going to get flushed out of my mind real quick. Like, I'm not going to yeah. remember why this game sucks in maybe even a couple of weeks. And this was like, oh, I guess I checked the other endings out. Oh, they're all shit and boring. Um, we don't... Yeah, there's very clearly a correct ending. Like the others, you have to be batshit insane to argue that the other endings were the better ones. Yeah, I also, think I said it when we were talking about it. I was just like at the end, it's like, oh, I guess I'll leave the baby here, or I'll like, eat the baby, I guess. And I just, I, I didn't care. I, didn't... I don't care about the fucking baby. I don't fucking care about the baby. <laughs> I, I wasn't even convinced if... the baby was human. I, I mentioned this before. Yeah. I was like, is it some kind of weird creature? Is it gonna eat me? <laughs> I don't what, know. What trying to say? I wasn't really invested in what I do. I was just like, I guess I'll leave it here. I don't care. <laughs> like, uh, I like the I'll idea that otherwise, otherwise you could destroy her, run like to the teleporter, and then you have an option to just drop the baby before you get in the teleporter, <laughs> and you just do. <laughs> like, oh well. Just yeet it off the fucking tower. And also, we, we we don't need to read out the rest, but the one part that I really just do want to highlight is um. We're also working on an upcoming patch will focus be li in which focus will be lying on things like I don't I don't why does it say focus will be lying on things? So because you can go prone in this game. It makes you harder to spot, but you can't move. Yeah. I don't know I mean, what purpose it serves in this game though. 
I I, in fact, prone. I don't think I ever used it. I was about I to say, I don't think I've I ever went prone in the game. I think you have to use it when you go up from the cistern, when that guy moves uh, through the room from the one end to the other. Oh. Well, if I did use it, I forgot. Um, I mean, that's the only time I used it. I think I used it by accident. I well, used it no, I used it twice. I, I I checked for the key in the cage room. <laughs> but like, well, how, do you, sorry. how do you go? How do you go prone as a prego? Oh, don't even. Ugh. Don't just don't. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if it's just because I'm tired, but we are also working on an upcoming patch in which focus will be lying on things like colon. Does that sentence not fuck up? Is that not weird? You lie in your colon. Huh. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I like stuff like this. We've brought it up with um, shitty mobile games before, so this should sound familiar. Ability to skip memories by holding down a button. Now, normally, that's a good thing in terms of replaying a game, but this complaint has come in from first plays. I know this because I share the complaint, and <laughs> nobody... They never had to make this addition to the Dark Descent. The Dark Descent has memories that play. They can last as long as 20 seconds. Weird mm -hmm. how they never had to update it with an ability to skip those. I wonder oh. if it's because everyone found the fucking constant memory shit in this game really annoying. And they wanted to be able to skip them. Which is really funny to it. me. Yeah. Hey, do you want to skip like, parts of the story because you're annoyed by it? <laughs> because it's dumb. Because it's dumb and it basically makes no sense. And it's just, it's shitty. Our, we just hired a shitty writer, and you want to get past their shitty work? Like, yeah, I would. I would like to skip all of these things that ruin the pacing of the game and give me information that I don't care about. When I streamed uh, Doctor Tent on the sixth, um, for like, and that's like the uh, unironically like possibly the thirtieth time I fucking completed the game, didn't feel like skipping the flashbacks. Kind of interesting to think about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I feel like that's probably about it, unless unless you guys have got anything else. I mean, right now, I'd have to get a fear flash of something in the game that I didn't like, that's just <laughs> resurfacing in my memory. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. say that once um, more for the road, calling it a fear flash is like the least ballsiest thing I've ever seen. You're a coward. Yeah. You are a coward. It is absolutely designed to be a jump scare. It is a sudden flash of an image in front of your face that takes up the whole screen, accompanying with a loud, obnoxious noise, and it comes out of nowhere. Don't fucking try and tell me that wasn't a, it's not supposed to be a scare. Fuck you. Yeah. Don't treat me like an idiot. Rebranding jump scare. To, we're gonna. I hope we use this in future when it comes up in other things. When someone says like, "Oh, I found that jump scare annoying," we'll be like, "You mean the fear flash?" Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can. I, yeah, I want to mean the shit out of this because it's <laughs> pathetic. It is pathetic. It's insulting. And so. That's what we think of Amnesia Rebirth. Amnesia <laughs> yeah. Rebirth, shit. Fuck it. The more I talk, I used to think it was pretty mediocre. The more we talk about it, just the worse I used Yeah, to I'm happy to say, it. no, I think it's shit. Now that we've gone yeah. through everything we've gone through, I feel like I'm comfortable in saying it's shit. Guess there's another <laughs> hot take for y'all. I don't even know that. Total, the... complete regression. Hey, comments underneath this video. Tell us if this is a hot take, okay? Let us know. It's not. We already established it's not a hot take. It hey, doesn't matter what hey, saying. let them decide. <laughs> you mean. No. You big mean man. I'm sick of being gigging. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I said, any anything else? Uh, any other comments? Uh, no, I think we, we covered more than I even put on my list. Yeah. Thing. So, this, yeah, I, we're, this was supposed, this was supposed to, be to be like, like an hour or two. Time. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's it's so, worth pointing out because of the fact that Das Bullshit has been here the whole time. We're gonna go ahead and apologize to you. Uh, the intention here was to have a one-hour discussion. I have called it that several times in other setups for this. It is yeah. four and a half hours, and that's just because of the fact that we kept remembering more problems as we kept explaining problems. And uncovered more while we were along the right. And sharing right. stories and backing <laughs> forthing them. Yeah, it, it just it just happened. This was supposed to be the meme stream recording. It is now the amnesia discussion <laughs> and breakdown. Also starring Das Bullshit for commentary. <laughs> yeah, just kind of hanging around and being all like, Oh, you know, uh, uh, Outlast 2 is fucking shit. <laughs> like, um, that's all I can say. Because yeah. I haven't played it. <laughs> oh, man. So, of course, thank you for being here. But yeah. We're probably going to close this one out, and this will just be its own thing. And so, yeah. uh, for the people listening, 
thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. This would have been live if I knew it would have done this. There's no reason this is off. We did this offline. It wasn't supposed yeah. to be this way, okay? It was. This was. <laughs> I'll just call it a very natural conversation. Yeah. yeah, and to be honest, isn't that why y'all listen? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, us being just toxic for no reason. Yeah, yeah man. Get dabbed on. So, um, thank you for listening, and uh, EFAP. Well, enjoy a bonus EFAP episode, I guess. Hooray! <laughs> okay. Laters. Thanks, Toodly everyone. Bye-bye. Toodles! I think this key goes into that door. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Tassie! <laughs>